selection night. But you never thought I'd be here. Uh -huh. Trump versus Biden 2020. Let's do this. Welcome aboard. I do have a Zoom link for you if you want to get in. I may post that later on the feed. Or if you want it, DM me. But if you DM me on Facebook, it might pop up on my screen because I'm broadcasting my screen right now. So, careful. This post apparently is f fake news. Has anyone seen Craig's news live? Craig's news. That's triple fake news. I don't like posting fake news, so I got had. It happens. Not often. I usually try and verify my stuff, but I did not verify this one. And oh, look who's look look, look who's fact checking me. PolitiFact? Mm, no, thank you. Do we have anyone more reliable? Oh, factcheck.org? Mm, no. What do I trust to fact check my stuff? No one Facebook's got up there. I can tell you that much. So anyways, I guess this was fake news. My bad. Oh, or is it? Maybe... It's just big tech, you know, doing what they do best, which is tamping down real information while in search of fake news. Should probably see if I'm live. I think everything should be good. Anyways, I'm going to give you some uh, coverage, obviously. That's what the live stream's all about. I have Fox News on the ready. I can get to CNN when, with a moment's notice. So we'll do that. Polls are closed somewhere. Oh, okay. And Biden is already out to a quick lead is what I see. Did I see that? <laughs> How? How? <laughs> I... I have no idea how a man with four years to prepare a campaign that's basically run a pretty, well, I mean, not flawless, but a, a pretty strong campaign. Look at it this way. Joe wasn't even elected till like August. They didn't even know who their leader was going to be. And Trump's been campaigning for years. Anyways, more of that later as uh, the battlegrounds come in. This is Fox News. Black voters, like I, I might not, I might not even be able to watch this. <laughs> the stream might end abruptly. <laughs> anyway, okay, so that's fake news. My apologies for that. This is a troll. I'm a troll. I'm living and I'm fine. I'm one, and more are on the way. I'm two, doctor. Three's on the line. This is a video of Sir. Was he, was he a Sir? No, I don't know. Who is this guy? Sean Connery? Sean Connery a Sir? No. I don't know. He should be a Sir. Okay. Now, I didn't post this because Sean Connery's talking about bashing his woman around. When she gets out of line, when she won't let it go. I mean, I mean, it's part of it, obviously, in context. This was posted because the end edit was genius. Okay, and Sean Connery just died. And there was many people out there, you know, talking about what a great guy Sean Connery was. Now, I don't know Sean Connery. I've never looked into his personal life. I didn't know this clip existed, but it surfaced. And because I'm a social media whore... I can't not see it. It's there, and I'm on it. So once I get on it, 
I watch it to the end. And if you haven't seen this and you don't think it's funny, I don't care. <laughs> I am here purely for my own entertainment and enjoyment, period. Now, when I say here, I don't mean like in the physical sense. I mean on social media. Keep in mind, my social media account is actually not a human being. I know that's really difficult to, to kind of separate the two. But you understand that a Facebook profile or a Twitter profile is not a human being. <laughs> Get it? Like, why do I have to tell people this? Yes, it's controlled by me, who is a human being, and I put the words down. I'm responsible for everything I put out there, but do you honestly think I go around in my life speaking like I post? Like, I do think in social media posts. Who doesn't? If you're a whore, you're a whore. So, yeah, I admit to it. I think sometimes, as a form of self-expression, in tweets and Facebook posts, sue me. And I spent a lot of time on it. And I'm fucking hilarious. I'm not, I'm not saying that you have to find me hilarious. Hilarious? But I'm funny. There's like, that's not even, I don't think I'm funny. I'm funny, period. If you can't handle it, then that's up to you. Now, Sean Connery is with Baba Wawa. Uh, it appears I am live on the fake book. So we're streaming on Periscope at Jim Fannin because at Jim Fannin, Twitter we're going to talk about, is down. Uh, I'm on suspension, seven-day uh, timeout. Um, we'll hit that. I mean, we'll we'll talk about that. I don't want to say hit that because that, then, you know, you're going to take it out of context. So like I'm, I'm talking about, we'll hit that. If I say it anywhere around a woman's name, then you say, oh, you, you. Anyways, I'm not afraid. Um, we're broadcasting live now on Facebook, on Twatter. But no, like, oh, no, on Periscope. So my Adjim Fannin on Twitter is down, but my Adjim Fannin on Periscope is broadcasting live right now. It's just a little tricky to find, I guess, unless you have a Periscope account. And that's your thing. So Periscope, I'll get to you in a minute. Uh, we're also on YouTube at the Jim Fannin Show. I lost my third channel yesterday. About 200 videos, about 80 uh, subs, um, I don't know, yeah, hundreds of hours of content, live broadcasts, hundreds of hours of uh, labor, uh, but we knew it was coming, we, me and the frog in my pocket. I have, uh, I'm going to talk about the other account that I'm broadcasting from now, which is True Tube, T R E W. T U B E tube. T R E W is true. It's true. Um, so I'm on two strikes on that channel. So that one will be gone soon. And I've got two other backups that I'm looking to run straight into the ground uh, with my three strikes, three community guideline strikes. My old account, my first account, the one that was making me some money that had 6,000 subs and 3 million views, that thing never had a guideline strike ever. And they took the whole channel down. 800 videos, 10 years old. And a huge uh, portion of my life was up there, stored up there. Um, sucks. Oh, well, we're not crying about that every episode, are we? Yes, we are. Boo-hoo-hoo. Now we're on DLive and Twitch. LinkedIn, what is up? Why are you not giving me love? DLive, Facebook, Twitch, Periscope, and YouTube, what up? everyone thanks for checking us out if i click on view event and restream it'll open my periscope account and i can talk to you guys if you chirp in i don't normally i don't have a bot yet if somebody can help me out with a bot that that funnels all my comments into one stream that'd help and that would not suck T 
touch me up if you got the solution to that. In the meantime, let's get on the show. So, Sean Connery. Now, this is an old clip. And in regards to the content of the clip before what really made me pop, which is the edit at the ending. I'll blow it for you if you haven't seen it yet. Um, uh, Jonas, what up, yo? Are you still going off? 98 comments. This dude's been busy. This dude actually called for activism on my post, and that's why it blew up. So thank you very much. Yo, yo. What up, yo? So uh, thank you for that. Appreciate the traffic and the pub. Alerting the media. If John Law calls me and wants to do an interview, I'll be even more grateful. Thank you, John. I love you. What's up? Okay, so I want you to watch a couple things here. Nothing to do with Connery, more to do with Baba Wawa. Barbara Walters. Is that, um, is she still alive? Baba Wawa. I want you to see how dramatic and how, what is a way, I don't know. Let's let's just go into it. Okay, hang on a sec. I don't know how come I don't have any volume there. Oh, I don't have any volume here. What's going on? Oh, I got you turned down. Okay, let's do this. So I just want you to watch the mannerisms in this take. We'll start it from the beginning. I'll go full screen for you. I think I'm going to have decent audio here. Well, who knows? I am my own producer. You said... It's not the worst thing to slap a woman now and then. As I remember, you said you don't do it with a clenched fist. It's better to do it with an open hand. Mm. Oh, did you see that? Did you see those eyes? Watch. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, what the? Like, what is this? Like, what? The f okay, I'm a boy, okay? And I don't have mannerisms like this. Um, but what the fuck is that? This is what I find so cringe about it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't love that. I haven't changed I didn't my love opinion. That. You haven't? No, not at all. You think it's good to slap a woman? No, I don't think it's good. You I don't think it's bad? It must, I don't think it's that bad. I think that it depends entirely on the circumstances and if it merits it. Yeah. And what would merit it? Well, if you have tried everything else, and women are pretty good at this, that they can't leave it alone. <laughs> you don't want to have the, the, the last Everyone word. Everyone knows about that. The last word, but they're not happy with the last word. They want to say it again <laughs> and, and get into a really provocative situation. Okay, then, kind of a Neanderthal, I get it. All right, keep going. I think it's absolutely right. Wow. What would... <laughs> 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 oh my goodness okay so i can't Dad. watch i can't uh, watch thing. that okay i cannot watch the <laughs> the end of that without thinking like you got to be really ready for it because see the other stuff comes up the <clears throat> i'm sorry <laughs> the ending is all-time classic troll in context it's actually genius um, and that's what I fucking found so funny about this. This is what had me howling. And this is why I post things. We're going to go through a few of my posts. You're going to see that many of my posts are things that make me rage. They either make me rage or they make me laugh. I'm, as we already discussed, I'm hilarious. Okay. I have a good sense of humor <laughs> and I'm funny. I don't care if you think I'm funny. That's not important. Uh, and I'm not even trying to convince you of it. I'm just saying, matter of factly, I'm funny, okay? <laughs> this is funny. And I have, what? I have a wide, a wide, <laughs> like, I find a lot of ugly, stupid things funny. I should find more, more things funny because like you, with 98 rage, raging comments, I am easily driven to rage but this this is classic pay attention now i think it's absolutely right and what would <laughs> you said well you gotta what you gotta, uh, the worst thing you gotta to slap a woman now you gotta know that 
like the you hear the table fall and everything it's not just the edit of the smack which is which is pretty good um <laughs> but you yeah. hear the table no, rumbling not at all provocative situation then i think it's absolutely right oh, what would <laughs> i'm sorry man that is fucking like you hear where like she falls out of her chair or whatever i can't it's okay like if you don't find it funny okay but fucking yo-yo chap cheeks comes fucking hard at me and i'm fine i you know what i gave in today normally i am post and ghost i don't talk to you i don't answer your bullshit um if you say something funny you're more likely to get a response from me but other than that I'm posting ghost, but today, over the last couple days, I have been giving in to the trolls. See, I am a troll. I get that. But the idea of a good troll, in my opinion, I could be wrong, is that you never answer the trolls to troll you back. It's a game, social media. It's not like we're standing next to each other in the bar. <laughs> I don't do things to rage bait you when I'm sitting beside you having a beer. You get it? Oh, fuck, I can't even believe I need to explain this shit. I'm just venting. It doesn't matter. I'm not here for you. So, uh, yo, yo. So I'm going to give you a little uh, cruise of the comments. Okay, so uh, first he, he calls out Krista, which is a mutual friend, and saying, uh, watch this. I may be silly. While Jim, who thinks this is funny, is a sick fuck. So immediately, there's not, like, there's no, there's no opportunity for a conversation here because he's not really, he hasn't said anything. He hasn't said, you know what, I find this disrespectful and, um, you know, it looks bad on you if you, you know, why did you post this? Like, anything like that is a, you know, um, you know your opinion, but just calling me out. And calling me names, Krista. Watch this. I may be silly. The only thing he's really saying is, "Watch this." I may be a, a intellectual midget, or Jim. Oh, but Jim is definitely a sick fuck. Okay. So and then he's t like tagging CD, CD, well, whatever. Okay, CD. Like this guy's got a. Uh, uh, um. Oh, and John Law. John Law is with the Standard. Okay, Ashley Standish. I I don't know, Johannes, Yo Yo Chapman. Uh, why you are dragging people into this? But okay, uh, Aaron Visitine from the Viz Show. Carolyn Meyer. No idea who that is. Bunny Brant. Um, nice lady from Niagara Falls that supports the arts in just about every event that I see her at. Always dancing her ass off. Katie Webb, no idea who that is. Um, so, like, what's up, dude? I appreciate the traffic. It's all good for business. I only posted Scott Clarkson's name here because on another post he said, where can I find this? Because I posted a screenshot of of, of, of Yo-Yo coming at me. And, uh, I don't know, I guess I'm adding fuel to the fire hi jessica swirls i love your name jessica if we got married i'm such a beta male i'd take your name so i could be jimmy swirls anyone you remember jimmy swirls that was my gay porn name jimmy swirls mm -hmm. have you seen my gay porn it's hot that's out there. Oh, and uh, Sophie Roots. I'm not, I don't respect the Anon trolls. Uh, so when you came at me and said, well, you didn't come at me, but you said, looks like an entitled domineering misogynist in the dictionary. And all this picture of this guy. I didn't think you were talking about this guy, which is Sean Connery. I thought you were talking about this guy, which is Jim Vannon. So uh, I unnecessarily had a hair trigger there. My apologies. Some people did find it hilarious and those people support violence against women obviously um anyway 
98 comments. I don't know how many shares, but that was that was pr some pretty good action. Thank you very much, Joan Jonas. Yo, Johannes. Yo, oh, Johannes. Jojo, Johan, Johannes. Got it. Oh, you want to come into the Zoom chat? I'll put up a link if you want it. Um, oh my kid, nobody wants to come in. Actually, <clears throat> I did get a couple callers last time. This is where I'm at until tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. 7 a.m. tomorrow uh, at Jim Fannin is unlocked, but for the meantime, I'm here at Jim Fannin show and I'm angry. I'm pissed off. Black Lives MAGA? Now that's funny, uh, despite about what they got that going on here. Black Lives MAGA. Pretty cool. Um, so this is where you can find me on the Twitter. Uh, Gavin McInnes is going live in 20 minutes. I do believe he's here. Um, oh, he's live now. What do you know? Cool. So I'm going to flip. Well, maybe he's not live yet. I'll, I'll be going back and forth with this, and then we get, we'll get some Crowder in probably too. I know I'm kind of ripping off there, but it'd be good to check in and get their take. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Look at this. I mean, I shouldn't be watching early. It's too early. But I'm kind of of the school of thought that says that, man, well, I forget it. And Woody in the house. Okay, here we go. Here's your link on fake book, all right? If you click that bad boy, you get into my room. I think this is it. Yeah, you just click on that fucker right there, and you're in. Um, I'm oh, because I'm only putting it here on fake book. Um, yeah, thanks, Brad. Uh, I appreciate someone that sees the humor and something like that. That like that that edit is just fucking genius. And whatever, if you don't think it's funny, that's fine. But that doesn't make me a woman hater. You fucking intellectual midgets. All right, so uh, in the background, you got uh, Bill, what's his name, Hammer? Bill. Delayed four hours because of a water pipe burst in that room. Um, and they don't expect, as you say, Bill, that Fulton County will come.
on Florida, let's say he won Arizona, right? Joe Biden could win the presidency without winning Pennsylvania, without winning Michigan, without winning Wisconsin.
I should probably try broadcasting with my mic on. (laughs) 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 Wow, that was fun. How long did I have you turned off for? It's fucking hot up in here. Maybe I caught it on a Zoom. I probably did catch it on the Zoom. So my apologies. I totally, totally shit the bed there. I turned my mic off. Hmm. Well, we just keep going. It's like it didn't happen. Uh, So this I found interesting. Uh, This didn't make me rage. So out of the post so far, I think we've got a few that are funny a few that are uh, personal self-expression, and many that are rage, that are things that make me rage. Okay, so, and I continued the scrap. I can be canceled further, but not by this guy. And, And it is kind of hard to cancel me further because I've already been canceled. Like, as much as, like, I mean... My YouTube channels are gone. I guess I can get canceled from uh, Twitter or Facebook or whatever. So I couldn't be canceled further. But I'm not engaging in hate speech. I'm not calling for action. I'm not calling for people to bully anyone or get, fuck. I don't text anyone and go, hey, do you see that post over there? Can you go comment on that thing? But this guy has done exactly that. So I put this up here. And did he share it? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. (sighs) Maybe I was triggered, as was Jim's suggestion. Perhaps I'm out of line. Help me? Help me? Anyone? I called Jim Fan and a sick fuck for sharing a video of Sean Connery extolling the virtues of domestic violence as a way to deal with the problem is women. Was I out of line? I'm trying to see if if an apology is in order. Code for go over to Jim Fannin's page and smack the fuck out of him in the comments section, or you can just do it here. They did both. That's fine. I appreciate the action. He's got half as many comments as I did. Piece of shit this. Fucking. And I did. I responded to some. It's laughable. And I am such a troll hi Rachel (laughs) so because I posted a video of some dude being a dick and talking badly about disrespecting women does not mean I support it I think it's fucking funny as hell not the fact that he's having that conversation with Baba Waba but the fact of that edit at the end that's just absolute gold Oh, and I mean, we have to revisit the fake news over and over, right, Stephen? This I will address in another podcast. This quote is absolutely accurate. He he really, get this, when this article first came out, this fake news, a um, total one-sided um publication on May 5th that was rerun and rerun and I hate to put poor thing like every time someone commented on it Walter Senzik said something about it then Jim Bradley made a statement from the region and Wynn commented and every time they commented they put this at the top of the fucking feed again because nothing's going on in Niagara except Jim Fannin calling some elected politician that on the regular posted tweets including Jesus fucking Christ over and over as an atheist I thought it was disrespectful for anyone that has any kind of faith at all because I don't see her mocking Jews I don't see her making fun of fucking Muslims not fucking Muslims of Muslims so yeah I did a little rant and it's gold if you like comedy (laughs) or you understand my humor it's funny. I haven't watched it in a while, but we're going to watch it together one day, and I'm going to comment on it, and then I'm going to play you the interview. I'm going to play you a recording of this interview, and we're going to see what John Law, who's been fair to me in the past. I like John. He's always been a nice guy. He said he was going to treat me fairly. Mm, he didn't. 
And then get this, the link for this podcast was in the article. So if it's so hateful and so dangerous, why did you promote it and give me a thousand views? <laughs> then I saw this online. Somebody got a hold of the editor in chief, Grant LaFlash, and said, um, take the link out. You're promoting this misogynist pig. Guess what Grant LaFlash did? He took the link out. Too late. I already had a thousand views on BitChute. BitChute. Dude, I got hundreds. I got, I had a video with almost a million views on it on one of my YouTube channels. <laughs> BitChute is um, kind of a tough platform to get traffic on. I still got a thousand views on it. Now, most of the people that commented only read the article. They didn't watch the show. Anyways, Grant LaFlash, that fucking puppet cuck, he went and took the link out. He says, I'll talk to my uh, editor-in-chief, which is me, because I'm the big shit over here, and I'll get it done. And guess what? They took the link out. That's fine. I thought it was ridiculous they had the link in there in the first place if what I said was so hurtful and dangerous. Oh, fuck me. So, yeah. I have the interview recorded. So, one day, we'll listen to the show and we'll listen to the interview that I gave after it and see how none of what I said, a 20-minute interview with John Law, got... Uh, well, it, here's how it starts out. I'm really sorry to keep showing Laura's face like that because she doesn't need me to be giving her any more pub. I already did enough for this woman's campaign. If she ever wants to run again, she played the victim here saying, oh, I don't know if I'm ever going to run again because this is mean and this is degrading to women. This is misogynistic. And it's just the only thing. One, the biggest hurt. That's the only thing here. That's what's the, it's the maximum pain, she said. Okay, so here's the other thing. Um, let's see, where's my first quote? Oh, okay, that's her. Where's my first quote when I said I have a hard time? It should be right in the first quote. Well, maybe they changed the article again. Fannin, blah, blah, blah. Yep, all these guys are only trying to get to me, to hurt me. No, Laura, I've known you for 10 years. I was the first guy to have you on my radio show at 610 CKTB to say that you should be appointed, that there shouldn't be a general election. When somebody stepped down, it was the right move. I pimped you. I've been on your jock since day one, Laura. We hung around. We worked on multiple campaigns. Shit, I took you to my church. An atheist sat in the second row at church, at Central Community Church with me. Now, I don't know. What, were we fucking dating? I don't think so. Holy fuck. We were friends and very affectionate if you look back at my old text, which I have everything, I have my first text that I ever sent it on iPhone for crying out loud. I got so much data, it kills me. It's so fucking, it's it, it actually, uh, you should see the size of my legs. Dragging this data around with me has, my legs are like fucking watermelons. That's funny. Where's the thing about, oh fuck, this has been all rewritten. Where's the quote about me? Oh, no. See, this is the fucking follow-up. Oh, Niagara Women in Politics condemns. Okay, so this... See, this isn't even the original. Ah, oh, for fuck's sakes. Like, seriously? How many fucking stories did they run on this? No wonder I can't find it. Well, the letters to the enter editor were fucking classic. See? Oh, Bradley calls podcasters. There's another one. Okay, so... Women in politics, May 5th, May 3rd, May 30th. Yeah, let this way, it seemed like it went on for weeks. Maybe it was a week. I don't know. Okay, so here we go. This is the one I'm looking for. Another great picture of Laura. Oh, another great ad. 
Okay, here we go. Now we're in the right plates. Oh, we're in the right plates. Now see, let's just look at this. Okay. John, I get that you're trying to sell papers. I get it. You, you write in a way that's provocative. Another round of vicious online attacks has the St. Catharines Regional Council, Lori Epp, questioning why she ever ran for office. <laughs> the latest has a local podcast host, Jim Fannin, calling Epp a see you next Tuesday. Now, what I actually said was, you dumb fucking cunt, when I said, why do you hate Christians? By tweeting Jesus fucking Christ out. I didn't say that. I said, why do you hate Christians? We built your fucking society, you dumb fucking cunt. And then I went, oh, like, you know, like it was shocking. Like it flew out. Like I'm, I'm passionate. I let it fly. I was loose. It was midnight. I had a couple rippers. No excuses. I don't take it back. It's funny. Okay, so... Put it in context. At least put dumb fucking cunt. Because it means I was going somewhere with it. Was it just, ah, you cunt? Yeah, dumb fucking cunt. Has anyone seen Ricky Gervais? You dumb fucking cunt. <sighs> Recorded in late March, it was brought to Ip's attention this week by St. Catherine's City Councilor, Councilor Carrie Porter. It's a garbage video made by someone who has serious issues with women. Uh, no, Carrie, I don't. And actually, you know that. Shame on you. I don't have issues with women. Or maybe you don't know that. You don't know me that well. But I mean, I've been in your presence many times. Never disrespected you. Never said anything out of line. I won't sit back and watch displays of misogyny and male rage, whether they are insidious or hysterical like this guy who was triggered because a female politician dared to be competent and true to herself. No, I was pissed because your friend posted Jesus fucking Christ on Twitter. And she can't even spell Jesus right. Why am I going down this road? Well, because it was brought up in this post right here. Thank you, Stephen. I didn't know I was going down here today. Or right now. This is not while I'm out here. Here's, here's where I'll get to. Calling her a fucking bigot pig or no? I think it called feminists. Oh, maybe I did. I don't know. Who cares? Yes, I do hate feminists. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, where's my first quote? Okay. Garbage human. Uh, Fannin. Go. Female involvement. Damn Okay, here we go. The first quote is the first thing I said to John, uh, like, you know when, I don't know, when you're talking to a reporter, like you get the formalities out of the way and then you get rolling, that was this. So, I mean, anytime you're talking to a reporter, you got to be prepared that the, the mic is live and they're going to use everything that you say. This was kind of like a throwaway line at the beginning, like I'm the first guy to admit, this is, this is an accurate quote. First guy to admit to having an issue directing my hate in positive places. I have hate. I try to focus it where it'll, you know, I don't know. Is Can you have positive hate? I don't know. So this is like the first thing I said to John with the idea that, okay, you know, well, I didn't say, are we on record? <laughs> Obviously, you're always on record with a politician. Here's the bottom line. I have the 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 audio recording of the full interview I gave John Law, none of which made it into here. She played the victim. She initially said, you know what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to address this. Laura, you should have stuck with that, but then you wouldn't have created all this rage around you, would you? And then after saying, you know what? I'm not even going to dignify that with a comment. As soon as the media called, she's like, oh yeah, I'll suck this up. Like a fucking cat at the saucer lapping up the milk. So again, I didn't know I was going there, but I do have a plan to play that video, at least the clip from that video. 
show it to you in context, then play the full interview of me and John Law, and then compare it to this fucking garbage. This is garbage. This is fake news. Fake news. I'm not saying he made anything up. Some of the quotes are pretty bang on. So, okay, so... April 30th it breaks. Four days later, it gets revised, brought to the top of the heap again. The Two days after that, it comes back to the top of the heap again. And then May 7th, back to the top, well, in the Niagara letters. And then May 20, 22nd. So it's no wonder I got 30, 45 days, 40, 45, 40, 45. 40, 40, 40, 45, 45, inside joke. So it's no wonder I got the rage for 45 days, 40, 45, 45 days, 45, 40, 45. Anyway, uh, again, I didn't know I was going there, but this was on the river. It was, well, CBC, CH, CH didn't pick it up, but all like Niagara this week. I didn't, I don't know. People were posting on this shit on my wall, like, like crazy. Somebody actually came to my Jim Fannin show Facebook page and said, you came out of a cunt. That's harsh, <laughs> but funny. I mean, if you can't see the fucking humor in a woman coming to my wall, doing the same thing I did to another woman. Well, actually, no, I didn't call her mother. a <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fuck. I'm burning up. <laughs> what, what's going We're not even covering the election. What's going on over here? CNN's got, uh, Ooh, Hey, now. Florida goes to Trump. Hmm. It's too early. Look at this, though. Huh. You know what? I, I I wish I could say I didn't care, but I do. So, again, thank you, Yo-Yo, for the uh, shout-out and for the action. I have really enjoyed... Uh, I cannot be canceled, burger. I've enjoyed the, the mob that you sent me, dude. Oh, yeah, this two shares. Yeah, I don't need to... Sh it doesn't matter, 42 comments. Like, I mean, it's just, you know, everyone coming to his defense. I got in there, and this guy posted this, and that's why I went down that road. This is a good picture of me, actually. Oh, no, I guess he's talking about Sean Connery. I should be more careful that these people aren't talking to me and talking about him. Adrian Joseph is a friend of Yo-Yo's, I guess, too. Fuck that goof. Yeah, I never liked him. Kelly Abbott. Never heard of you. Abbott. Kelly Abbott. One less S. Oh, maybe she's talking again. Maybe she's, yeah, yeah, he's dead. So maybe she's not talking about him. Or talking about me. Anyway, so much for that. That was fun today. Yo-Yo, uh, I appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much. Look at these fucking... Whew. crazy on here all right so uh what else we got we got some uh cnn for you you come back out it was uh, looking at the 2016 total thinking it was this year's total because that's the way it always is in florida it's that close 10 million votes are about to be cast we're really close to 10 million votes and 131,000 separates them right now but deval county is still blue uh, for the democrats 51 to 47 that's the suburbs uh, Donald Trump makes it up in the rural areas. And then we're going to come across here. I just want to see where the margins are. One of the things you get with this point, Florida's returning so quickly, you're starting to figure out what's still out. Where can you find more votes? If you're going to make up 100,000, which is the lead right now, where can you get it? Or Orange County, growing, a lot of votes here. But about 93% of the estimate in. We'll see what the numbers are. We'll see what more votes come in. 383,000 here for Joe Biden right now. 329. So that's 50,000 votes. He's running ahead, running ahead of Hillary Clinton, 50,000 plus from four years ago. Um, the turnout's up everywhere, though. So the president's numbers are up, too. You're, in your, you're going county by county in the campaign war room. This is significant as you come across. Again, Hillsborough County, Tampa in the suburbs, Pinellas County, St. Pete in the suburbs along the coast. This is a 
This was blue. I mean, this was red four years ago. Very close. 49.2, 49.5 to 49.2. 2,000 votes. 2,000 votes there. Uh, 2,000 votes matter in a close state. And again, I want to do this again in reverse order this time. Palm Beach County, almost all counted. 56 for Joe Biden. Come back in time. 56 for Hillary Clinton. So you're matching it up. Might not be good enough. Hillary Clinton lost the state. Come back to 2020. You come down here. 66 percent. Second largest population center. Second largest county in terms of people in Florida. 66 Come back in time, 66. You're essentially matching what happened four years ago. The vote count, 553, 562. Turnout's up a little bit, but you're essentially matching the percentages there. And then you move down here, and this is the trouble sign. Again, we're not done. We're not done counting in Florida. Joe Biden can make it up somewhere else. The 54% Miami-Dade, 579 to 486. Thousand, if you look at it there, number one. This is your biggest county in Florida. This is where the most votes are away from more. But Hillary Clinton won this in a landslide. She walked out of here, 624 to 333. Hillary Clinton built up a huge lead in Miami-Dade, and she still lost the state. Uh, so Joe Biden is looking, they're looking at that in Biden campaign headquarters, wondering what's left. You'll see what else comes in. You can make it up. It's a big population center. A lot of votes can come in. You can change the math, but you're not going to get back to that percentage. Six, again, 63, 3, 63 percent there, 54 percent there. If Joe Biden loses Florida narrowly tonight, this will be why. But we're not done yet. We're not done counting yet. You come back out, although that lead now, 163,000. How many times am I going to turn my mic off? Okay, I'm going to try and not turn my mic off anymore. I d I'm not sure that I can. <laughs> if I leave my mic on for whatever reason, and I got this guy on as well, the audio, I get uh, an echo. So I'm trying to avoid that. But then when I come back live, I forget to put my show up, my mic on, and that's uh, that's super shitty. Now, what's up with Censored.TV? Oh, yeah, we got to get some Crowder on here, too. Crowder's going live. Oh, man, am I having a hard time signing into my accounts? I've got so many suspensions. They banned me from so many different... Uh, Let's check in with Crowder, see what he's up to. Um, here we go. Here's to another four years. You get $30 off. We really, we know that you have many choices tonight to watch this uh, uh, election. Well, he must be we just starting. So I got a Crowder stream for you. I got some censored.tv for you. Let's see what Gavin's up to. Oh, look at this. Oh, Milo's making an appearance. I love Milo. This evening that are expected to go for glorious broad emperor includes... I'll get his mic up. He can't hear it. Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, and Oklahoma. Come on, boys. Get the mic up. You can't hear him. Yeah, they got the music too loud. Ryan, come on, man. Ryan, down with the music. Up with fucking Milo's mic. Come on. Uh, you can't get it. Uh, no, so I got something else playing in the background here? Oh, yeah, maybe that. Oh, fucking idiot. I'm such a loser. Oh, I'm sorry, kids. PA, North Carolina, Arizona, and Florida. I really fucked that up. Now, in the battle states to watch, even the New York Times says that Florida, Trump is ahead. Georgia, Trump is ahead. Ohio, Biden does seem to be ahead by quite a considerable margin. Uh, Pennsylvania and Michigan, too close to call and almost no returns so far. And Wisconsin is a funny state because it has idiots in Madison who, my wife's from Madison, and I go there and I see people doing one-man protests. Yes, yes. Like a rally with a person in it. There is a bit of that. Also, uh, it's worth pointing out. Have you ever been to Madison? Uh, yes, I have. Um, it's, it's, it's worth when were you in Madison? Uh, I think I stayed there in between tour stops in 2017. I didn't have a speech there, but I think we stayed there in a in a um, a courtyard by Marriott. Wisconsin uh, polls don't close till 9 p.m., so we wouldn't be expecting results just yet. Uh, same in Arizona, Minnesota, and Nevada. Nothing uh, coming in just yet from those states. But um, Trump's winning. Nothing out of the ordinary, uh, and much to be confident about for the Trump supporter this evening. What do you think about this, Milo? Um, Is there a reason you're saying my name wrongly and differently every time? Yeah, it's... Like it's, we don't even know each It's other. antagonistic. Because uh, you sort of let somebody know that, they, that you don't care about them? 
All the cunts. I do that by not showing up for work and relentlessly okay. uh, being difficult on air with you. Yeah. <laughs> Milo. If you're trying to break me down, mine, it's I think working. Mine, I, think <laughs> I think I prefer waterboarding at this point. I just want the chair. Um, if, if Milo I is pretty funny. Voted you early. Could, you could be I mean, he's flam. All the cunts he's voted super early. flamboyant gay. But yeah, I, I like that. Off. They wanted this little sticker. I've I mean, it gets a little tiresome yeah. after a while. If you're watching a show, it does, it does, it, it does get a little much. But and it was literally eight hours. So today, the working class is finally saying, "Good, I can get in and get out on the final day of." They go in there, and what we're seeing is a blue wave, a blue collar wave of red votes. So if I was Biden, I'd be pooping my pants right now because uh, I'm on par with someone who hasn't had their blue collar votes come in yet that's exactly um what the numbers suggest and more importantly and more reliably i think it's exactly what the betting polls are suggesting those big bets for trump the 5ks the 9ks the, the 5 million dollars the 5 million dollars they're all coming in for trump right at the very last minute just like they did last time can you pull up that article i sent it to you ryan some british guy bet 5 million dollars that Trump is going to win, and it's the largest political... No, it's not in the normal emails. From now on, if I say I emailed you, I mean... I made a mistake that has nothing to a do British with A British gambler has reportedly staked $5 million on President Trump winning Tuesday's election, a wager believed to be the largest ever political bet. The former banker used private bookmakers registered on the Caribbean island of Curaçao for the bet odds at 37 to 20. You know so what? It, Actually, it, Milo's really strong at this. Payout, should Trump win. I don't know anything about Curacao. Where's Curacao? I know it's a drink. Um, so they've obviously named the drink after this island, but I never even, I never knew it was an island until today. You never heard to, of it. I bet it sucks. you got to be a real shithole to screw up tourism. I mean, everyone wants to go there. And it's the you Caribbean, fuck it up, so if you fuck it up, it means you literally Like how you can't. fuck up the Caribbean. Every rich person wants to go there. All they ask is that you exist. <laughs> have a hotel where the, you, my wife doesn't get raped, and you win. So have some police and a beach, and we're good ah, to go. Ah, well, the answer is that it is French. Ah. That's the answer, um, because it's, uh, it is an island in, oh, it's Lesser Antilles. Um, which means that it is just off the Venezuelan coast. Uh, Ooh, that sounds in the, dangerous. In the, excuse me, it's not French. I saw, I'm sorry. It's actually even worse than that. It oh, what happened? Dutch. Oh. Uh, the, poss possibly the reason Terrifying. it does not have a flourishing uh, tourism economy. It I worried about Venezuelans true. showing up in a raft and trying to rape everyone and take all their money. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, keep in mind, this is political commentary and hard old school comedy. Okay, there's going to be words that you might not want to hear. We're dealing with a very flamboyant and good looking gay man here in Milo. He takes his ribbing very well, and there's a lot Living of it. On an entire street. It borders on abuse sometimes. Sold houses. Which I love. Which had been sold to Venezuelans who had you know, extracted me. money. They prefer real estate to the stock. Oh, yeah, they can't do the stock market. So were the houses well kept? Did they mow the lawn? Well, they were immaculate because the uh, Residents Association was being paid every year. The lawns were perfect. The neighborhood was great. This is, we were, incidentally, um, one of the, the most other. censored men on the planet. Both, both of these guys, Milo and Gavin, are two of the most censored men on the planet. Money from, you know, Milo can't get an Uber. And, uh, He's so canceled. Destruction of their own I wonder if he can get Why Uber Eats. Uh, children, family issues. You got some bitch pregnant? Um, not me. Oh. That sounds juicy. <laughs> but a pregnancy wasn't Why does involved. Gavin look so short? Okay, so we're going to flip around. We're going to catch some of this as the results come in. We're going to catch some of this more than likely. Um, yeah. How come this isn't playing? Okay, so this is live. And pretty good production. This is Crowder. Baby. 
So this is Crowder. I'm not going to play too much of it because, well, Crowder's free, but I shouldn't really be ripping it off. Here's my Eagles. Oh, man, this is some good production, man. Steven Crowder has better productions than most networks do. And here he comes. This is the theme song, Gowan, Canada's own. Get ready for Crowder. Crowder's coming hard. This one's for all the marbles, which Joe Biden lost. Um, let me make sure. There go. He's a comedian. No, but I think we're good. <laughs> Yeah. High we production have value. We have my half Asian lawyer, Bill Richmond. How are you? Yo, kind of scripted. I'm mad I have to share a screen with him. <laughs> We're going to be wow. shooting, actually, Gerald Morgan later whoa, on tonight whoa, in this whoa. broadcast because we have a what? new sponsor, Spartan Armor, to test the bulletproof yeah, vest. We'll be right. shooting no. Gerald. No. That's not a joke. No. They were we'll shooting Gerald. No, that's they not going to happen. Armor, bulletproof. They're going to shoot. Legally, it's fine. It's no, yeah. no, this is no, not this is not happening. It doesn't matter if he was we inebriated when he signed it. Quarter Black Garrett is what? here. How are you? <laughs> Quarter Black. Good night. Wait, I don't Ready like it, but hopefully you'll QB get some Garrett, of the votes from Quarter William Black. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> okay, so we're going to bring you a little Crowder. Um, like I said, I'm not going to rip these guys off all night, but I think it'll be interesting to kind of, oh, Gavin's having a boozing session. There's nothing new. Nothing I at all. That was an energy drink that Hang was on. being sold by half Asian. I see. I got to yeah. flip around here. You had her on your show, too. Really? You said, uh, yes, uh, I wrote the profile. And I also had her on the show a couple times. Um, very brilliant. And Asian this is behind the paywall, so I really don't want to broadcast too much of this. But I think if I go back and forth, we'll be good. I don't see the ads on the internet. Christy Gnome is a dime. That's this girl in the middle here. Oh, you can't see me. Oh, yeah, you can see my cursor. Yeah, I use Brave. Which doesn't serve the ads. I have had blocks. Christy Gnome is fine. Sometimes, um... That's who, uh... Wow. Hi, Governor Christy. Um... Do you have ad blockers, Brian? Yep. Do you see Gateway Pundit? Pull up Gateway Pundit. You drowned in ads? I like how you turned the American flag into bacon, by the way. It looks <laughs> that, it, that's American bacon. <laughs> oh, okay. Good that's comeback. Good. I tried to double pretty, down on it. Pretty delicious. Okay. <laughs> article. Okay. So, I don't, okay, hey, hey, I don't care if you find it funny. I really, really don't. There's an ad. But I love it. I'm a subscriber. This is behind a paywall, so I'm not going to I'm not gonna rip that off all night. All right. Here's a link I've got on my Jim Fannin Show page, one of them that still exists on YouTube. There is an account called TrueTube, T-R-E-W. Also, if you're watching on Facebook, you can click the link and get into the show. It's in the Facebook comments. It's a Zoom link. If you click that Zoom link, you don't need to put your camera on. You can if you want. But if I go to you, you will be live on the show. So if you want to call... You can get in. You got it? Fake book. You're the only one with that link right now. <sighs> Touch me up. Okay, so Joe Biden, just the other day, panders to Philly fan. Now, Philly fan is not somebody you want to pander to. Philly fan is hard. And Philly fan takes their sports seriously. They boo Santa Claus. They threw snowballs at an injured Michael Irvin as he left the stadium on a stretcher. They're hard and beautiful. And that's why I'm an Eagles fan, one of the reasons. Because they are so hard and filthy and ruthless, ruthless fans. So now Joe's not speaking to them specifically. He's speaking to about 40 supporters at a uh, drive-in event or whatever. Trump's got 40,000 people at his events. Biden gets 40. And I don't know how one fucking person votes for the Democrats this time around. It's beyond me. And they're running neck and neck. Here's Joe Biden. Uh, the, the, The clip speaks for itself. Let's hit it. I was very happy to have the moniker of being known as Pennsylvania's third senator. 
I know Philadelphia well. I married a Philly girl, by the way. By the way, I love how he says that. It's uh, he really gets his uh. Girl, by the way. I married a Philly girl, by the way. I married a Philly girl, by the way. Uh, that's the best I've heard Joe sound. Uh, it's really out of character, but that's the best I've heard him sound in this whole campaign. Philadelphia, well. I married a Philly girl, by the way. It's the cadence, the tone, everything. It's pro. This is the best I've heard him sound. I married a Philly girl, by the way. If you will. I married a Philly girl, by the way. And by the way. He's, and by the way, he doesn't, he, he's looking down, but he doesn't know where to find the decal. By the way. He looks down to his right. Now, I haven't... I'm tearing this apart as we watch it. He looks down the 77-year-old man that's obviously suffering suffering um, mental decline in some capacity is looking down to his right for the logo of what he thinks is the Philadelphia Eagles. Bye. Oh, and then he gestures with his hand. Oh, here's the logo the over way, here. I don't need to look at it. I can feel it, not the Adidas logo, but the... Got my Eagles jacket on. Now, Eagles jacket would be green, midnight green. It would have, it wouldn't be black. It would have some green in it somewhere, even if it was all black, like some of their uniforms. It's still got midnight green in it. And that is not a Philadelphia Eagles logo. <laughs> Seriously, this is too... Oh, I'm not even showing you the fucking video. I'm a plug. Okay, let's do this over. Fuck, I'm so sad. I was very happy to have the moniker of being known as Pennsylvania's See the third logo? senator. I know Philadelphia well. See the logo? I married a Philly girl, by the way. By the way? He looks down. By the way, I got oh, my Eagles jacket on. Got my Eagles jacket on. He looks drunk. Boom. That is... A blue hen. Delaware fighting blue hens. That is the logo of a blue hen. That is not a Philadelphia Eagles jacket, Joe. I was very happy to have the moniker of being known as Pennsylvania's third senator. I know Philadelphia well. I married a Philly girl, by the way. By the way? And by the way, I got my Eagles jacket on. I'm drunk as shit. Okay, so Joe, y you are unable to run a country if you can't speak a full sentence. You don't know what gear you're wearing. You don't know what state, city, or, well, I guess he's got the country down. He knows where he is as far as the country goes, but he often forgets what city he's in. Frustrating. Look at this. I mean, I'm still calling a landslide. I'm still calling a Trump landslide. I am. It's too early to call. Let's see what Wolf is saying. Michigan, Georgia, and Virginia. We cannot make any projections in those states right now. Too early to call right now. But let's take a look at the vote in those states right now. In Florida right now, 90% of the vote is in in Florida. Trump is ahead uh, by about 226,000 votes, 50.5% to Biden's 48.4% in Florida. In Michigan right now, only 4% of the vote is in. Trump is ahead by 39,000 votes. 57.5% to 40.6%. In Georgia, the numbers are increasing. 22% of the estimated vote is in. Trump is ahead by an impressive 154,000 votes right now, 56.2% to 42.8%. In Virginia right now, 30% uh, of the vote is in. Trump is ahead, also impressive, 260,000 vote lead in Virginia uh, over Biden, 58.3% to 39.6%. Let's go back to John King at the magic wall. I'm really curious to see what we're seeing in the Commonwealth of Virginia. It's interesting that we have a lot of places on the map that at this moment... 
Gary Borden, how dare you talk about my mother? My mother. Your mom would be the best fact checker. Gary, meet me at the bike rack, bitch. It's throwdown time. That's funny, actually. Oh, well, and now I see you're saying uh, you're giving an, uh, an LOL. Well, so you don't want to fight, eh? Todd Jenkins, four more years, baby. I'm just, I'm just logged into Facebook here. Brad Davies, still looking for the part where you said it, it was funny. Um, I don't know what that means. I'll get back to it. Oh, the edit was funny, yeah. Funny as fuck. Thank you, Brad. I'm interested in the satanic cult and those dark vows, though. Yeah, Christ, uh, Krista is uh, hard on that whole satanic Hollywood thing. That's fine. I don't know anything about that, but there is some evidence. Here's the Zoom link. It's in the comments, bitches. If you want to fuck with me. Uh, yeah, sorry, Brad. I forgot to turn my mic back on. Sound? If I was listening to that, that would have been helpful. Or if I was watching this, it would have been helpful. But for you um, tankers on Fakebook, if you want to get in, you know the uh, you know the link is in the comments. Uh, we'll get back to CNN here. I am burning up. Ohio, you've, you've got, got to run it up in the cities. cities. This is the biggest one of all Cleveland, Cuyahoga County. 75% of the vote right there. You go back four years ago, again, 66%, overperforming Hillary Clinton. Lake County in 2016 went for Donald Trump. This is the suburbs to the northeast of Cleveland. Right now, right now, 61% of the vote in those suburbs going for Joe Biden. Remember what happened in 2018. In 2016, Donald Trump narrowly wins the suburbs. He's president. 2018, the suburbs revolt. Nancy Pelosi is speaker. Test tonight. Does that last? Does that accelerate? Does it stay the same? Lake County right now. We'll see. We're not at the finish line. Tells us that the suburban revolt and rejection of President Trump continues. Is it enough in Ohio? We don't know yet. But Lorain County again to the west of Cleveland. Joe Biden at 57% when you round up. You go back in time. Almost 10 points. Running almost 10 points ahead of Hillary Clinton. Again, look at the vote totals. Turnout's up everywhere. So this makes the math a little different this year. 66,000 just short of 67,000 there. Uh, Joe Biden running behind that right now, but we still have 60 percent of the vote. We're going to watch as it plays out. Again, you come back out to battleground Ohio. Why are we spending so much time on it? Joe Biden flips this state blue. Donald Trump has no path to re-election. If Joe Biden flips this state blue, Donald Trump has no path to re-election. That's why we're going to spend some time on this. And we're watching it right now about halfway through, though. About halfway through means things can change. So let's keep an eye on it. Let's come back out. You see Pennsylvania is blue. I just want to stop here very quickly to see... We don't have anything yet. So it's blue at the moment with early votes. We'll stay with this one. We're told, you know, Pennsylvania could be tomorrow, could be a couple days after that. We'll watch as it fills in. Joe Biden has a lead early on. It looks blue on the map. You're happy if you're a Democrat, but that's not, you know, we're not there yet. So you come down here. I said if Joe Biden wins Ohio, Donald Trump's path to re-election is blocked. If Joe Biden wins North Carolina... was just showing you
it, it'll be a reset and it'll be sort of a totally new referendum on what people want. But definitely from the left, giving putting up establishment, you know, sort of corporate Democrats up there, it doesn't seem to work. I mean, they have a ton of name recognition, but they just don't excite anyone. No. And it's just not a winning formula. If I may, as the inventor of Trump's cult of personality, it will never die. Thanks very much. Um, but just to bring you some <laughs> Okay, results. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm having a problem uh, remembering to turn my mic and the sound back on. Um, I'm not very good at this. And this is Rue in the background. This is the kangaroo. This is uh, Atheism is Unstoppable with Gavin McInnes on Censored.TV with Milo Yiannopoulos as more results come in. In Florida, with 88% of the expected vote coming in, Trump has 50.8% of the vote, and Biden just 48.3%. And the numbers continue to widen. With 25% of the vote in, in Georgia, which is another key state, Donald Trump is winning by 56.2%. Michigan, Trump is also winning, with 8% of the vote in, so we can't take it too seriously yet. Pennsylvania, Trump is getting completely shellacked, you know, as they say, but on a single-digit return, um, so we can't take that too seriously at this point. Yeah, also to add to the Philly or the Philadelphia numbers, the cities have come in, so Allentown and Philadelphia are already in, and Pittsburgh, and Pittsburgh went red, which is interesting. And what, what did, um, so, how is that going to reflect yeah. over the next few hours, do you think? What's going to happen, do you think? Yeah. Well, I think uh, the fun thing about this thing is it happens incrementally. So it's sort of like aging. You, you don't realize you're old until like one day you look in the mirror and you're like, holy shit. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's interesting watching the hate watching. The Young Turks numbers are growing right now. They might hit 100,000 viewers but it's like 90% hate watchers at this point because they're just <laughs> looking for the anger to take hold of them. But look, guys, it's not over yet. So before you celebrate, Gavin, have you made any bets? If Biden does win this, oh, are you going to yeah, get a tattoo I've made or five, something? I've made five major bets. Yeah. Anything humiliating? No, they're all just Trump's going to win. I take my... But based um, I, take, I take the people who buy my books and my donors very seriously. Um, and I'm also a bit strapped for cash at the moment. So I did the only thing I considered responsible and sensible, which is that I put my entire the entire balance of my checking account on a Trump victory this evening. Um, and I'm looking forward to uh, great successes um, and returns. Milo, maybe we could make take little Milo pauses when I do my interviews, and then you can come back. But, like then, a, but, but then people okay. might leave the live stream. Yeah. So. Well, well, I'm willing to risk that. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I got a few. I, I'm not a big better. A few hundred dollar bets. I, I have a friend who has five thousand dollar five. I have $1,000 bets on it, but I've got about, mm. I don't know, three or four hundred dollar ones floating around. What about you? Did you bet on this? I did not, but I mean, I, I'm i sort of beyond disenfranchised at this point, so I'm actually more concerned about the psychological state of the country moving forward because e either way, whoever wins or loses, we're dealing with multiple millions of people who are distraught and wrecked, and we need group therapy or trauma counseling or something because like I was talking to the friends earlier tonight and I said do you think someone's going to kill themselves tonight based off this yeah maybe I could see it happening I mean half the yeah. country half the country believes in the myth of racism and they believe uh -huh. that black people every time they get into their car and go somewhere uh, are likely to be killed it's a total uh, 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 what's the word Flip of the coin. Throw Spit the dice. It out, man. Well, Spit it out. If you want, yeah, yeah, if you want to look at this one way, this is really a, the battle. For Atheism is unstoppable. It's the guest on the Gavin McKenna's show. Totally behind that project. With Ryan Katsu, and Rivera, and Milo Yiannopoulos. This is the Rue. Here. This yeah. is a, a massive night in terms of history. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. Ops. This is a turning point. It's, it's unlike any other election. But wh one thing I, I might disagree with with you is you say, well, mm -hmm. if, you know, Trump wins, blah, 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 there'll be a reset in four years. I don't know. I think that he could drain the swamp to an irreparable point where the AOCs will never see the light of day again. Well, I think he can just stall and let the left kill itself in its current civil war. Right. Because yeah. the, the left should be two parties. I mean, it's a joke that it's one party. Right. And we know what happens when you split up a party. The other party just remains dominant and beats it to death. 
<laughs> yeah, well, we've seen so much infighting with these people at these rallies where BLM and Antifa mm -hmm. are fighting and even Antifa and Antifa disagreeing about this shit and attacking each other. They're just like rats. You put them in a cage and the rats start eating the rats. Gavin, I used to have a slight gambling problem back in the day when I was seeking for some adrenaline or meaning in my life. And I liked sports and it was exciting. You and mean fun, after you abandoned God I, and left a huge void in your in your being? <laughs> no, I, 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 I was... That's my was little laughing in the background. There was no amendment that said thou shalt not gamble, so I just assumed it was okay. <laughs> and I gambled, but somebody told me once, they said, you know what a gambler likes more than winning? He said it's losing. And it made me think, and then I realized, holy shit, that is true. Because when you lose, you feel alive, and it's done its job. And yeah. there's a certain shame cycle that goes on. So my theory is that a lot of people on the left, a lot of the grifters, a lot of the propagandists, they want Trump to win. They want this dude to be Voldemort because they make a lot of money. So they got literally millions of reasons. For that is a great Trump. point, man. Now, never gonna say and that. like I, I said earlier, when I had my mic turned off, apparently, I have an interview with Rue. It's called Atheism is Unstoppable. Uh, it should be on one of the channels that are, is left on YouTube. I thought it was a pretty good conversation. I haven't listened to it all. But he was engaging, and he's um, funny. We're just like, okay, here it comes, honey. Uh oh. We assume don't what is the violence against women. Um, don't, don't we assume too much that the left, because uh, their frontline activists are so outre and over the top and so insane, that that must be the psychology, that must be the the praxis, that much must be the um, uh, the pathology all the way to the top. When quite clear, Milo can go on for hours. I like Milo. He's my favorite homo. One of them. I got a few. Uh. Huh. Mike Sansano. Fuck off. He's chirping me already. Okay. We're going to switch to Crowder now. Give you a little taste. Of Donald that. Trump needs to run the bull, run the table. You know what I mean? Kind of like uh, an inside straight where someone is that an inside straight? Is that a poker thing or a flush? Is, is what is it? it? Inside straight? Yeah. I don't yeah. Know. Draw house. Draw I don't know. An inside I know that when I watch it on sitcom, someone goes full house and they go for the things. The person goes ah, 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 ah. and then they throw it on the cards and then they do this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's yes. what I, know. I, I think Trump might do this. Go. Ah, 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 ah. Or the kind of baby. <laughs> so let's take this scenario. <laughs> Donald Trump already has one Florida, Texas, Arizona, North Carolina, Georgia, Ohio, Iowa, which is not outside the realm of possibility. No. All right. They're saying Donald Trump needs to run the board. If he wins Michigan or Pennsylvania, he wins. Okay. What, how does it look for Biden? Let's give Biden Minnesota, which he's guaranteed to win. Well, he doesn't win enough with that. Let's give Biden Wisconsin. Well, that's not enough. Let's give Biden Michigan. That's not enough. Whoa. Biden needs to win mm all of the blue wall wow. so what do you think is more likely that donald trump wins either michigan or pennsylvania or a combination of wisconsin and another state or that biden wins minnesota wisconsin michigan pennsylvania he has to run the freaking board people i don't know why everyone else is acting as though donald trump only has one path biden only has one path and by the way even if we were to take arizona out of the equation biden still really only has one path one other thing that we need to take note of tonight if the main uh, main second congressional district does go to Donald Trump it's unlikely that surprisingly has a huge effect on tonight because it reduces the likelihood of a tie huh, so yeah, yeah. if we oh, see that main yeah. second congressional district is called for Donald Trump that even though it's one vote drastically increases Donald Trump's chances because he doesn't wow. need to win two states in a combination huh. he could win one of the Midwestern states oh. so this is me being nerdy this is me yeah. giving you my analysis but I'm just trying to tell you I don't know why the media wasn't talking about this I've been following early voting all along and this is assuming that all of these are correct that we're not seeing a significant amount of Democrats go Republican, when you look at the polls that we had uh, and they asked Democrats, how likely are you to support your candidate? It was in the 70-something percent with Joe Biden. It was in the 80 to 90-something percent with Donald Trump. So here's my question to you. With these, is it more likely that Trump wins either Michigan or Pennsylvania or that Biden wins Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania? And then let me ask you, is it more likely that a Rust Belt Democrat someone in any of the aforementioned states votes for Trump, or is it more likely that a Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin Republican votes for Biden? Mm. That is the important question right, to so ask we'll yourself, especially when you look CNN at states the where they've seen direct... Here.
Yo, Sam in the background right there. Right there. Farmers who are happy to trade deals. I think, based on all statistics that we have available to us, it is far more likely for Biden, Dem for Democrats, sorry, to become Trump voters, and we've seen this before, than any Republicans right to become Fuck Biden him. voters. So they already did. I want to confirm. They did call Florida. Now you can stop mirroring here, uh, my uh, my iPad, and we can oh, bring yeah, back up CNN. They did call Florida. Yeah. So Decision Desk HQ called Florida. Uh, AP hasn't called it yet, but it's, you know, it's New York Times has over 90 percent uh, reporting and over 95 percent chance. That All it right. Trump. So, so we actually know. can call Florida. And so this is time for you guys. Uh, we have President Trump here. Uh, Florida, thank you. We love you. Thank you for the electoral healing. It's Trump. It's Trump. It's Trump. So maybe you can see what I'm talking about now, production-wise. <laughs> like, Billy, what you see ain't got electoral healing, electoral healing, baby. Makes me feel so fine. When it just suits my mind. Oh, Florida. I just swung up on ya, and then I won ya, and hugged ya, and... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was mean. That was cruel, unusual punishment. <laughs> a riot. Like, how big of a riot is it gonna be? Give me a break. I thought this guy was... Well, he's got I've listened anger. to him for years. I thought he was wonderful. Oh, you've disappointed but me But did you tonight. hear what he just said, you've Milo, while you're ranting? Tonight. He yes, said, the He's question crazy. is, how big will the riots be? I think he has some pre-existing conditions coming in here. <laughs> Calm down, Milo. You're going to be okay. Okay, we got to go. Devin, thanks for your <laughs> fighting, fighting and your, and your insight. We're going to go check on the, the <laughs> totals. I, I missed that. Fuck. Gavin, that was it. awful, and I'm now officially homophobic. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> uh, how are we doing? Let's go to That's Fox News. That's good stuff right with there. Milo in the foreground. Fucking missed it. Well, I haven't been checking Fox. You got to give me a minute. Okay. Well, then let's let Fox check Fox. Uh, what I can do is give you an update. <laughs> no, Based... just let's let's look at this. Because when you just say it, people we are used are spoiled with graphics. We're not sitting here with little crib notes. Okay. Or you can okay, not be. Okay. Whatever. And the only way this is going to work is when you have an update, you send it to Ryan so he can put it behind you. Yeah. Um. Do you well, have maybe we should have figured this out before we went live. But do you yeah. want to just like figure out? Says the, the guy. Now? Who showed up at 7.59. Excuse me. Sorry, <laughs> Excuse me. I don't see how what time What's I going show on? up determines, like, whether or not there should have been a mic on the table. Is the TriCaster ready? not working? Or whether there the should have... the bottom. I mean... No, no, no. Just show the commercial. We have the number... The, he'll be on top of the commercial. <laughs> this Fox is what I paid the big bucks for. That 91 of the Electoral College votes are currently going to Joe Biden. That's only a very small increase based on Politico and the New York Times. But Fox News is also reporting that 73 of them are going for Trump. And in battleground states, the story is the same. Things are turning in favor of the God Emperor, but it is still, I'm afraid, far too early to call anything. Um, I will be back with you shortly with some interesting individual congressional races, but um, I'll just pause to note that Marjorie Taylor Greene, who has been maligned uh, and lied about uh, by the press as the QAnon far-right candidate. Um, I met her. She's fabulous. She, of course, has sailed to victory with over 80% of the vote. She's going to be a great addition to Congress. So those people mourning uh, Laura Luma's result in Florida 21 can at least be grateful that Marjorie Taylor Greene will be in Congress. Um, so it's looking pretty good for the Senate and pretty bad for the House. Is that what I'm seeing? Can you go back to the Fox screen? Get, get the censored TV logo out of there. It's covering up the fucking words. President, 9173. That's terrible. <laughs> Senate. It's uh, meaningless at this point. 4235. Um, at this early stage in voting, including House, the early votes, Hillary Clinton was way ahead of Trump by numbers much worse than this. So the important thing to bear in mind based on 2016 is that Hillary was winning by a lot more than this at this incredibly early stage in voting. So the numbers you're seeing in front of your screen really are tremendously meaningless, especially when you factor in the important battleground states that don't form part of this. Okay. 
himself, himself if, if you will, will, which is why this state is competitive right now. We just turn this off and come back to where we are is, is, about halfway through. Is Biden underperforming any place in Ohio? Well, let's bring it out and we'll take a look. You ask a question, I'll try to get you an answer. Is Biden underperforming anywhere? The answer to that is no. Uh, at the moment, the answer to that is no. And again, that was, right, remember back, and Joe Biden said this today when he was talking to reporters, at the beginning of the primaries, everybody said, you're not the guy, you're not the fit, you're not what we want, you're not in touch with the movement of the Democratic Party, the progressive wing of the Democratic Party. Joe Biden's message was, I can win these guys. Joe Biden's message was, I can do better than Hillary Clinton here and here and here. Toledo, Akron, Youngstown. If a Democrat is doing better than Donald Trump in those places, Democrats are expected to win them. The question is the margins. Yeah. That, that's how you win. And, and Biden is ahead by 300,000 right. votes right now in Ohio. Let's. Those numbers will swing a little bit, too, with the combination of the voting. Early votes came in first. We're waiting to see. We knew a lot of this early. Joe Biden's early lead was because of the early vote, right? The question is, the president was rallying there all week long. The vice president went there as well. Can you turn out today, on Election Day, the Trump army to overcome the early voting? Well, 51, rounded up, it's 52. Those are a lot of important places. And it's, again, when you see Winston-Salem, Charlotte, Raleigh, those are where the Democratic votes are. Cities surrounded by suburbs. The farther out in the suburbs you can go, that's what Democrats are trying to do. Uh, and so if you're Joe Biden, especially again down here along the coast, you're looking for places that flip. New Hanover County, you're along the coast. Wilmington, 52-47. Four years ago, it was the other way, 50-46. to 46. Uh, You're flipping counties because you're overperforming. These are suburban voters. This, again... Are, folks, I don't know if you've ever been outside. So that's the second one in number four. There's two links in number four with Rand Paul. We've had about an hour to get to the second one. Yeah, Senator Rand Paul says he was attacked by an angry mom after leaving the White House. Like, what did these people think is going to happen? That's my that's my point in a nutshell. When these people left this luncheon, they're all well-known politicians. They're walking through fucking D.C. Go back and play the video, dinkwad.
lots of clicks in here. Is it loading? What's going on? I'm trying to tweet. Not loading. Okay. I'll just pop in to say while the uh, technical snafus are being resolved, <laughs> which is common to all national networks this year in this election, very con heavily contested and a lot of data floating around. Just to say, um, which I did just send to Ryan and hopefully he'll be able to produce in a moment, Florida, Georgia, North Carolina. These are three places the whole country is watching. And what does the New York Times have to say about these places. Florida is a swing to Trump of plus three. Georgia, plus three. North Carolina, plus 1.3. And the New York Times assesses that this evening there is an over 95% chance that Trump has won Florida, over an 82% chance that Trump has won Georgia, and over 79% oh, chance... Ryan, why are you pulling up what he Tr sent you? I texted it I to him about time. five minutes ago, but whatever. Um, there's an 82% chance that Trump has won Georgia and a 79% chance that Trump has won North Carolina, which the New York Times in its typical uh, ginger fashion uh, suggests <laughs> that it is merely leaning Trump. The New York Times, of course, you will recall, still reeling from its embarrassment at predicting last election in 2016, uh, over 95% likelihood that Hillary Clinton would win. Already this early, with barely any of the results in, the New York Times is conceding major battleground states. So I'm sorry, I only Trump. got Georgia 82, North Carolina 79. What was Florida? Um, well, if it were behind me, um, I'd be able to point to the speedometer, odometer style graphs the New York Times has produced. But I'll tell you again, with 91% reported in Florida, there is a swing to Trump of plus three and the win probability is very likely Trump over 95% likely um, no that's not it over 95% likely that Donald Trump will win Florida according percent. Almost, Almost a third, third of the vote is in Georgia. Georgia. Trump, Trump has a relatively comfortable lead, 248,000 vote lead, over Biden, 57.2 percent to 41.8 percent. In Virginia, more than a third of the vote is in. Trump has a nearly 300,000 vote lead. In Virginia, over Biden, 57.7 percent to 40.2 percent. You give him one fake His university and he holds it court. Goes on. <laughs> religious world. I thought we had an Uh, Yamaka, can you guys hear me? <laughs> wait, is that wait, is that uh, Phil Jackson? Hold on a second. I think Jeremy is. Stick around with us. We have another good treat for our Daily Warren. Wire viewers right now, and that is that we are joined by and also joining because of the magic of the internet. It's a cross stream. I don't know who gets to take credit for it, but you know, as long as it's me talking, I'm going to take credit for it. We're being joined currently by our good friend Stephen Crowder, who is yeah. also live all night the way that we are. Look at yes, him, that we are live. Can you fan. hear me now? I can hear you. Well, I, I, tried you to, I tried to call in, and then Dennis Prager over there was holding court for some reason. Like he's, he's, got, he's got a university or something like that. That's Phil Jackson. Dennis, we got stuff to do, too. <sighs> um, well, listen, I want to know what you guys expect tonight. I went through why I think it's far more likely for Trump to win than uh, not, and how Biden actually needs to run. The only person who needs to run the board tonight is Biden. Biden needs to win Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. He needs to win all of them if Trump holds on to North Carolina, Georgia, yeah. Arizona, which I think he will. And I sort of contrasted this with the, uh, the, the, the modeled party votes that we saw in states, and it was accurate. Would we say, guys, to to the letter with Florida yeah, thus far. Cool, yeah. And I think we'll see it in Ohio. So what are you guys expecting? What's the feeling uh, over there between the two Gentile? well, I guess one Gentile and two and a half Jews? <laughs> <laughs> so, as you know, actually, Dennis and I together add up to two Jews. I'm like half, and Dennis is like a Jew and a half. <laughs> 
you know, the the uh, I think that the feeling. Wait, are you guys just uh, going to avoid the incredible discomfort that Andrew Clavin converted from Judaism? <laughs> oh, they just yeah, we just ignore that. We okay, all right. That's until, all right. until they need the magic healing. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how it all comes out. You should watch later. Andrew <laughs> handle snakes. It is remarkable. <laughs> By the way, Cla Clavin will be the first person to find out whether he was right or wrong. In this <laughs> <laughs> and you'll, you'll get a note. You're going to get a note. <laughs> so let's, uh, so uh, I think that the feeling in this room right now... At least his note will include a tip. Go ahead. <laughs> Cautious optimism, I think, is, is, the, is the feeling in this room, at least for me. Cautious optimism. Uh, right now, they're saying that North Carolina looks like it's, it's trending Trump. Georgia's trending Trump. Texas is going to stick Trump, which means the next state that we're really going to find out about are Pennsylvania and Ohio. And, yeah. uh, and they're... These are all too close. These are all too close for comfort. So I think no, uh, I don't want to get over. No, no, Ohio no, is not okay. too close for comfort. Ohio is not a so swing Stephen, state. Stephen, you spend more time than we do in the Rust Belt. I mean, you have yeah. uh, you have a lot of roots in Michigan and spend a lot of time there and, and were with their governor routinely. <laughs> roots. Uh, <could, laughs> yes. Tell us, tell us what you're thinking about those states. Why isn't Ohio a swing state? What are you saying that we're missing? Well, Ohio is not a swing state because if you look at the early voting, um, and I had this up before, uh, actually Donald Trump won Ohio by, I believe it was eight points last go around, but actually uh, Democrats outnumbered Republicans in 2016, which means there was a huge portion of Democrats who voted for Trump, registered Democrats. And even now with the early voting, without any of today's voting in, we're already seeing Republicans with uh, a, a pretty wide margin in Ohio versus Biden. So if you believe that Democrats will come out today and vote outvote Republicans three to one, then maybe. Otherwise, I don't even think it's close. Now, outside of that, Michigan, there's about a four-point spread when you look at the uh, the modeled party no uh, model. But again, Donald Trump won that where he was down about four points. Again, so that would mean that if he's down four points, he could be up seven, really, in Michigan, because a lot of Democrats will vote for Donald Trump. Now, I don't know that Donald Trump will be uh, victorious in Michigan or Pennsylvania. I don't think we'll know Pennsylvania until we look in every single ditch and find a few extra million uh, ballot boxes. <laughs> yes. Right. But I will, here's the question, right? Logically speaking, if Donald Trump hangs on to North Carolina and Georgia, which everyone was saying was a swing state, and I said, uh, I'm very, very confident in Florida and Ohio long before Georgia and North Carolina. So if those go Trump, mm. I am. I mean, I, I will. I will eat this bag of coffee. Black Rifle, wonderful sponsor. <laughs> if Ohio goes to Biden, and I also would be surprised to see Arizona go to Biden. So when people say that, guess what? Trump just needs to win either Pennsylvania or Michigan. If that map that I just laid out for you remains true, guess what? Biden needs to win Minnesota, not enough. Wisconsin, not enough. Add Michigan, not enough. Pennsylvania, now he gets over it. What do we think is more likely? That Donald Trump keeps the states that we've all agreed upon here and wins either one Michigan or Pennsylvania, or that Biden runs the entire blue wall? I think the former is more likely, and uh, Michigan could go either way. But I don't think Ohio is too close for comfort, Ben. I don't want to say that you're a defeatist, but come on, there's no way Ohio is going for for Biden I'd be I, very surprised I'm still I'm still getting over Ben Shapiro being cautiously optimistic that's what, <laughs> that's what, that's what party time you know that's, uh, cautiously, uh, cautiously optimistic for Ben is still very yeah. negative <laughs> <laughs> Stephen I, I have a question for you that transcends the political yes are you actually are you strapped right now yes what are you wearing? Uh, this is a wonderful. Uh, actually, this is I'm going classic. This is a 357 Magnum uh, Smith uh, uh, Smith and Wesson model 686. It's an old revolver that uh, carries seven shots, a 357 Magnum, and some moon clips in here. So we have many guns in this office. We don't live in California. Yeah. I don't know if you're in Nashville. Are you investigating yet. a Are you investigating a murder? <laughs> like what, what exactly is going on over there? Well, you know what? I will tell you this. I wore it once for open carry, and I came home, and my wife just got very comfortable. So. <laughs> Good enough for me. I continue yeah, wearing yeah, it. Logic. My I wife likes suspenders, logic. but who am I, Larry King? So I just wear the open carry, and my wife likes it. She's like, I really like it, and it, I, I enjoy it, and uh, it makes me look tougher than anyone else on this stream, which is good, which is really all it's, I was aiming listen, for. If you didn't look tougher Low than the people dude. on this stream, you'd be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, and I rarely pay well, Dennis you. Dennis Prager's a big guy. Right? He's like six foot five, so you know. Well, yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to wrestle with Dennis, that's for sure. But I, I rarely give you compliments on the account of I hate you and all, yeah, and I got yeah, to see yeah, if you yeah. waterboarded that time. That was, you don't even need a gun. You're a freaking giant who practices Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I think that 
you're going to take good care of yourself. Well, um, thank you very yes. much. Uh, but but that being said, in the street, if it, <laughs> I've always avoided physical altercations. And I will say this to anyone who tells you this out there. If it does come down to a physical mm -hmm. altercation, I'll take a gun. Just like the whole Gracie family who created the UFC. They're like, in the street? What, are you out your mind? I'm going to go bang, bang, shoot, you're dead. So, uh, yeah, it's it's nice to roll around the mats Basically. and drunk uncle jujitsu, But otherwise, they're getting some uh, 357 or my wall through. The, the real reason that he knows Brazilian jiu-jitsu is just because that's how he gets to know people and greets them. That's Literally, true. the first time he came over to my house, he put me in a headlock and put me in a sleep room. <laughs> wow, that is some good shit right there. <sighs> wow, some good stuff. So, yeah, welcome aboard. Edit, let's come back to 2020. And look, where else are you looking? Uh, you look down here, Hamilton County is Cincinnati. Again, Joe Biden running it up, 69, about halfway there again. So when you're halfway, you're looking at it, and you're placing a marker. You say, that's, that's where you want to be. That's actually outside where you want to be. Let's go back and look. 52% then. Sway to, to get behind the guy that looks like about? he's winning. At 9 o'clock on the day of. Well, 200 million people in America haven't voted yet. Back to my boy, Center.tv. Um, Gavin McInnes, Ryan Katsu's Rivera. Atheism was unstoppable, was, is unstoppable, was on. Just, just to bear in mind, and I know a lot more people have voted than this, and but the Milo confirmed results in the country of 330 million people only amount to 40 million. Um, and there's a, there, there is a... I thought about 130 million people vote every year. I well, mean, every I'm election. saying so far right? what has come in, right? Yep. 200, if, if 130 million people in this country vote every year, that means 200 million don't. Is it worth taking the chance of voter suppression? getting those people in uh, who would not normally vote to swing behind Biden, mail it tomorrow on the basis that some Democrat attorney general might be able to convince their state Supreme Court to accept the votes, which they probably will do. They'll probably be, and they'll probably be successful in that endeavor. Is it worth suppressing the Trump victory as long as possible tonight? Yes, of course it is. And that's why every media organization is doing it. He's not, he kind of talks like it's this, like in Britain, you know that thing where they have the Speaker of the House where one side talks first and the Honorable Lady will, and then they do like they say something at Thatcher or whatever, mm -hmm. and then she comes back on and then they, they have their thing. But he has the same sort of like slam dunk thing at the end when he sits down. Have you ever like uh, worked that, in Parliament? That's why the bop -a -dup -a -dup -a -dup -dup, and then sit down. No, but I, I think the Honorable Lady will understand that we're living in a time where that's no longer possible. Right. It's like he knows where he's going to stop talking. I never do. Nailed it. I know when I, I'm done talking when I I the words stop. I think stop. it's called being correct and knowing you're correct. Ooh, I think it's called a nine-hour answer I still don't really <laughs> understand. I was, like, starting to think about my laundry about a third of the way through. That. I'm not responsible for your lack of education. Well, you are, actually. If, if not, your audience I'm not responsible. Is, is drifting I off. Am not, well, I don't think they are. I think it's just you. Yeah. I think that you do a great disservice to your audience in assuming that they are as dumb as you. <laughs> <laughs> as bored. As bored. <laughs> he's ready at... It's eight for him now. He's ready at nine. Why? So he's an hour behind. Who is that? What does that mean, Cup, ready? Cupper cab. What is a ready? Cupper cab. cab. He better have a hell of a fucking set. So I he's, just, I would he's just ready like at our pay, ten, I guess. I'd like to pay tribute to you for the extraordinary act of Christian charity and generosity... Um, uh, the, by hiring the, you and giving you well, infinite not, money? Not, not me, and certainly not infinite, but um, in, in reviving Copper Cab's career because he was one of the most iconic internet phenomena of my um, uh, naissance on the internet, and I just want to pay tribute to you and thank you for that. You're welcome. Copper Cab sucks. Uh, I don't know. I can't watch the guy. You got B Squad. You've got Sof. You've got... Well, Jim Goad is, Jim Goad is, he's gold. Goad is God. Check Beef Squad, man. You gotta check Beef Squad. Give your money to these guys. Censor.tv. It's 10 bucks a month. And it's, it's worth every penny. Check it. <sighs> CNN. It's getting interesting. Very interesting indeed. Uh, we have two more projections right now. I right, take a look at this. CNN now projects that Joe Biden will win the state of Connecticut. Uh, he beats Trump 
in Connecticut. He wins Connecticut seven electoral votes. Trump, on the other hand, wins South Dakota. He beats Biden in South Dakota, three electoral votes in South Dakota. Trump is the winner there. Let's take a look at the Electoral College map where it stands right now. Biden has 80 electo electoral college votes. Trump has 51. You need 270 to be elected president of the United States. Uh, let's uh, go back to John King. John, I'm really anxious to take a look at Georgia right now, see where things stand in Georgia. Uh, update our viewers. So we're looking at Georgia 2020 right here. A healthy lead for the president right now, 322,000 votes, 58 to 40. A little more than a third of the estimated vote in. Democrats thought this was a state where they could be competitive. There are two Senate races at play here. One could be settled tonight, one likely to go to a runoff. We'll see how those play out as well. But that's what makes this state even more important. You have a presidential race. The balance of power in the Senate could also hinge on those two races. Let's stay on Arizona. I wanted to go out on a quick <laughs> note. I get that you guys know. Arizona, just everyone say Trump or Biden, and then I got to let you yeah, go. Trump, Trump. I'll say Trump. I'll say yeah. Trump in Arizona. Okay. Arizona, yeah. All right. The question is the Senate race in Arizona. Yeah, that's yeah, a good point. All right. Thank you, guys. DailyWire.com. Where is your stream uh, for people to watch it? DailyWire.com. Thank okay. you, Stephen, and thanks to all of our friends at The Blaze. Absolutely. We may check in with you later. All right. Be well, gentlemen. We will see you. We must go. Uh, okay, we are back here. Is there anything new since that has happened, uh, Reg Let's the see. Bandit? Let's see what's going on at CNN yeah, really so quickly. We've, we've got some Florida information. Oh, Florida information. Is it about Even the uh, colored? Whoa. <laughs> oh, red, red versus blue, guys. Yeah, those, those colors. Uh, what are we seeing in Florida now? We were uh, seeing it was 93% uh, reporting and uh, still looked like a 2, 2.5% two lead. Uh, so, okay. Uh, yeah. Still filling in. I think that's in the bag. I, I, yeah. I actually thought you were saying Florida on the CNN because it's. I, th I think it's a done deal at this point. Yeah. The We had a few calls that not, not necessarily surprising. Biden uh, takes New York and <laughs> New figure. Mexico and Trump, as they've called Nebraska, Louisiana, Wyoming, South Dakota, and North Wait, Dakota. President Trump yeah. outperforming 2016 by 5% in, in those Georgia. those specific counties, uh, yeah, in Georgia. So in Georgia counties, right now... Let me ask you this. Has most wow. of it... Is Atlanta... Are they counting Atlanta right now? Is Atlanta... Are those counties being counted by a significant amount, or are they mm -hmm. not in by a bunch? Because if those counties are already in by a significant amount... Uh, and Trump is ahead, that's a really bad sign because yeah, he wins the rural and the suburban Georgia vote pretty handily. It just comes down to about what Atlanta and one other yeah. one or two other major counties. Yeah, know. it looks like there's still a lot more to go in Atlanta there with the numbers that they're showing. But yep. the the fact that he's doing so well in Georgia, and I you know, you made fun of me a minute ago, Virginia. Look at the numbers in Virginia right now. Right. Trump is way ahead. I know there's still a little bit to go there, but I'm I'm kind of shocked by that one. I, I mentioned yeah. it a second ago thinking, huh, that was pretty surprising. Yeah. Right. They took it down. Over here. When it comes Kyle back County. up in a minute, Reg, what, uh, can you dig in and find out what's in. going on That's there? That's good for we Joe Biden. If you're winning huge Democrat by that margin out there order. in the suburbs, you come back there, with, with, much uh, more competitive. Uh, again, Georgia suburbs, here? No, I'm talking, I moved on to Virginia. Virginia, Virginia. Yeah, that's still a little bit of a mystery to me. I'm assuming that they must not be reporting so many Democrat districts. Otherwise, that call would not make sense. I know there's some similar stuff that if it holds up that's significant you're overperforming clinton there but we're very preliminary when it comes to georgia so we want to wait and see how that plays out i just want to pull out the map again just to see what else has changed texas has gone red remember earlier we had texas blue for a while um starting to fill in some counties. it goes on on both sides martin luther king jfk so we're going pretty far back no. Okay. Wow. Peter survived serious injury thanks to a malfunctioning switchblade. The Almeida County Sheriff's Office said Tuesday the attempted stabbing was preceded by Fazell making disparaging remarks about the Republican Party, according to the Sheriff's Office. Okay, uh, Milo, take it away. Well, just a quick update, ladies and gentlemen, on the Senate and the House. And that update, update is to say not much of an update. Not much has happened uh, in terms of swings, gains, um, all those other kinds of vaguely sexual terms you'll hear this evening. Uh, 43 Democrats and 37 Republicans have secured their Senate seat. Um, only a net plus one. Uh, for the Democrats tonight. Way too early to say uh, what's going on there because uh, so many of the Republican races haven't been called yet. So we can't really say anything meaningful about that. Um, in the House, uh, 39 Democrats have been called and 56 Republicans. The Republicans do lead, but again, there's no clear winner in terms of gains 
or uh, what might turn into the eventual control of those houses. A lot of interesting individual races for Senate and for Congress, not all of them, of course, up this year. Uh, but uh, some interesting things going on. Now, in most of the estimates that I'm seeing online, Joe Biden is beginning to widen his lead in terms of the overall electoral votes. Uh, some of those uh, estimates are now including states like Florida. Uh, Fox News, for instance, is reporting that Joe Biden has 129 electoral votes uh, to Donald Trump's 94 uh, Reuters, which is notoriously conservative about the races that it grants, it doesn't want to give anybody a race until it's really, really sure, has Biden on 89 and Trump on 54. Some of these numbers, this is that, this is that moment, by the way, 9.20 in the evening, is precisely the moment that in, in 2016 we were all freaking the fuck out. That's Sorry, the 89-54 is for the Senate or for the presidency? No, we're back to the presidency now. That's why I said Biden and Trump rather than uh, Republican and uh, uh, Democrat and Republican for the Senate. Uh, try to keep up because the listeners are. Uh, Politico, <laughs> Politico um, which is relatively aggressive about calling races, is 122 for Biden and 94 for Trump. But this at 9.20 p.m., this is exactly the moment in which some of the faithful, some of the deplorables lost hope in 2016, and they were wrong to do so. Uh, Everything's still to play for. Lots of big races not called yet. That's all for now, Gavin. Thank you. Oh, you've, you've spoken, spoken to, to him frequently, frequently during the COVID number? crisis. Governor DeWine was on our air earlier today saying he thought the president would squeak it out. There's still time. There's time. There's time to squeak it out. But that would be, that would be the ultimate statement right there. I just want to check in on Virginia again. Uh, because if you're in the Trump campaign headquarters, which is in northern Virginia, you're looking at this and you're thinking, can that be real? Uh, I suspect, you know, this is a state... When I started doing this, it was a Republican state. Then it became a purple state. It's considered a blue state now. Again, we're waiting. This is the biggest dump of votes right here. And we've seen this in previous campaigns, including the presidential election in 2016, Senate races in Virginia, governor's races in Virginia, the Republican candidate gets ahead. And then in northern Virginia and down here, the Democratic vote comes in late. But we'll watch. It's interesting to watch. North Carolina's interesting. Maybe Virginia's interesting as well. That's why we count them. We'll go through. We're up to 80 percent here, 79 percent. Again, we're waiting for more of that election day, right? This is why the president did all these rallies late, waiting for the election day surge. But if you're in the Trump campaign headquarters, let me come back out to the map. You're happy? The red's down here. North Carolina blue, Ohio blue at this hour. Makes you nervous, Wolf. All right, there's much more ahead. As more uh, polling places close at the top of the hour, two more important battleground states. I have no idea. Now, Stephen, I, I think we're seeing your predictions about early voting um, come to fruition again. Now, North Carolina is 79% reporting. Can you punch this in at all? Can you punch this in from your screen, or do we have to? Uh, no, I can't, I, this is just going by New York Times. I can't, I'm just on the iPads here. But uh, North Carolina is 79% reporting, and their Trump is up by 1.6 points. But the thing is that 97% of the votes that uh, were counted are early votes, right? And that's, oh, wow. that's it, that, that they, those were 97% of them have already been counted, right? So the early vote is in. So the early so, vote is yeah, in, yeah. and Trump so already that, has a lead. So wow. Trump has a lead. So they're basically, you know, New York Times, uh, their little needle is 90% Trump. Okay. Uh, for so, North so, Carolina? Now, is, yeah. that, is yeah. everything you're talking about, is that all available on the New York Times page? Because if so, I might just bring it up here on my own yeah, yeah, screen yeah. so I can look. Yeah, that'd be good. If you now, CNN, at, see, uh, I, CNN is behind, yeah. but I would like for people to be able to see what it is that we are seeing as well, not just CNN. Guys, do we have yeah. that ability? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And by yeah. the way, CNN has the ability to do that we as just, well, but CNN is, yeah. we looks like yeah. they're slow playing all of these wins for Trump or moving. In right, Trump's because I'd like to hear, as you, as you present this to us, I'd like to, to be able to show it because we're not going to get it from CNN. Right now, CNN is more for, for some guffaws. <laughs> yeah, let me just... They're good for the left. So, yeah, what I've been saying, folks, is when you look at this early vote, they need to have a significant lead. Significant Huge. lead. And we're seeing that again with Florida. Keep in mind, in Florida, people go, oh, they were up by, I think, 115,000 votes in Florida. Yeah. They were up by 115,000 votes, Democrats, before same-day voting. It was called here before 9 o'clock. What was it? It was called basically at 8.30. 
Florida yeah. was called the, the moment the show started. They only yeah. needed that much of the same day voting, and they yeah. they saw it was going to be a complete and total blowout. Hmm. And now in, I, I don't see how North Carolina goes to Biden again, unless for some reason I don't know Acorn throws a few sandwiches at some hobos <laughs> wow. and they get them yeah. over there to the polling stations. But uh, I, yeah. I don't see the way uh, that Biden was. There's just care. a lack of attention, I think, along yeah. along the lines of qualitatively listening to what the real voters on the ground are talking about. And, and so many folks who are, you know, they just don't know who to talk to about what, what their vote is going to be. It's, it's right. certainly uh, something fun and great to do to talk about supporting Biden. And only really at the very last minute do you see any kind of celebrities coming out predominantly minorities coming out <laughs> yeah, in support exactly. of Trump, which is just, yeah. you know, throwing, you know, certain groups into a tizzy. And and it's very what, what I would say is I had a, a good friend of mine today mentioned, he said, and he's a progressive a Democrat, voted for Biden already early, one of the early votes. And he said, look, what's going to happen at the end of this if Trump ends up winning is that Democrats have to take a very deep look about their tactics of persuasion mm -hmm. and where right. they are in the ivory tower. Mm -hmm. And and look, I want to say it's going to make the country better well but it's not their tactics you, I mean, how much lipstick can you put on bad policies to make it look good, right? It's not the person. It's not the tactics. That was a weird it's, analogy. I was going to say the pig. I, mean, I don't I know. You were going to go with me. I was going to go lipstick, lipstick on a pig. pig. You said on bad policies. I, 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 I veered when I shouldn't have veered. Yeah, that doesn't make but, any sense. So it really comes down to the policies. The policies are just Can bad. you also uh, yeah. kill two birds and get stoned, Gerald? You. He just I abandoned think. the metaphor. <laughs> it was, it was, it was like, I self-correct. Yeah. You self-corrected and didn't sniff a lady. I... I you know, veered from pigs. Yeah, I know, but those are words. Uh, well, that's true. <laughs> Mine was an action. <laughs> yeah, but look, I don't think that their policies are are the things that people are, are liking right now. I don't think it's their messaging. I don't think it's their tactics. I don't think it's Joe Biden doing campaign rallies. I think they just have really bad policies for the country, and it's turning people off. At the very least, it's not energizing even their own base of people right. that want something other than Donald Trump. It doesn't even look like they're willing to get out and go to the polls to vote. It just looks right. like they're going to stay mm -hmm. home and be like, ah, uh, well, it's Biden. Uh, I don't know. I mean, they did twice. They picked Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden back to back. Well, I know, but you're just saying it's election night. What else? Okay. Enough of that. Check it out. 54.4% to 44.3% in New Hampshire. We have five oh more gosh. races we want to update you on right now. Let's start off in Florida right now. 93% of the vote is in. Trump has a pretty comfortable lead of, of more than 327,000 votes. 51% to Biden's 48% in Florida. 29 electoral votes at stake in Florida. Take a look at that. Uh, let's move on to Michigan right now. 18% of the estimated vote is in. Trump is ahead by about 213,000 votes. 59.2% to 38.5% in Michigan. Still relatively early in Michigan. In Virginia, 41% of the vote is in. Trump has a lead, a very impressive lead of 332,000 votes right now in the state of Virginia, 57.7% to 40.4% in Virginia, 13 electoral votes at stake. In Georgia, more than a third of the vote is in, 39%. Trump is ahead by uh, more than 300,000 votes in Georgia right now, 56.9% to Biden's 42%. In Wisconsin, only 3% of the vote is in very, very early in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, Trump is up by about 11,000 votes, 54.3% to 44.1%. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, balance of power, what's going on in the U.S. Congress. Dana Bash is looking very closely at the U.S. Senate. That's right, Wolf. We have eight projections to make in U.S. Senate races, starting with the Commonwealth of Kentucky, and that is the Senate Majority Leader, Mitch McConnell, CNN can project that he Go for Biden. I just don't see that happening. So according to the New York Times, we're looking at Georgia, North Carolina for Trump, then Ohio. I'm telling you, my little needle is going yeah. kind of like a, like a, if it's a, if it's a 
kind of like Hunter Biden's crack compass. It's just going <laughs> true north. <laughs> I think that uh, Ohio's going to go for Trump. Then at that point, ooh boy. Yeah. Well, and ooh, ooh, boy. ooh boy. What does Biden tough. need? All of the above, or if he somehow wins Arizona. But again, based on what we're seeing, what's the pattern we're seeing? The Hispanic vote and the black vote, black particularly vote too, the Hispanic yeah. vote, uh, as you see it in Texas, as you see it in Florida. Well, this is also oh, Arizona. They were thinking would become more of a swing state. It might become increasingly out of reach because mm. this is where I disagree with identitarians. Uh, Republicans do not need they do not need to win a majority of Hispanic voters. They just need to mitigate the losses. Yeah. They were having their clocks cleaned for a very long time. You know what? If you're starting to get 30, 40 percent of the Hispanic vote and there are more Hispanic people in Arizona, guess what? That actually improves your chances. Yeah. It's actually better to have the Hispanic vote there than to have zero Hispanics in Arizona because then you're left yeah. with rich uh, white liberals and you're left with working class conservatives. It actually helps. I would wager that if you go above a certain percentage, for example, uh, white uh, Americans with bachelor's degrees, particularly if it's in social studies or creative studies that the margin is so much higher of them voting liberal that it's counterbalanced by hispanic americans even if it's not a majority for trump but it still balances out the maybe 70 80 percent going for biden that you see with single white females uh with degrees in german poetry so it's a good thing and i will tell you this people should people should should, should 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 heed this right now from Donald Trump. This is the way to restructure the Republican Party. And it's amazing because Donald Trump has done it while governing as the most conservative president, certainly in our lifetime. I know, I will not name names, but I know that many people here did not, uh, many people in our office voted a straight Republican ticket and maybe didn't vote Donald Trump in 2016. I don't think there's a single person here who didn't vote for Donald Trump in 2016. I don't know. I believe in a secret ballot. But that's because... Not because we thought Trump was a dick. It's because up until 2016, Donald Trump gave more to Democrats. Up until 2016, Texas, people California thought that Donald Trump was going to be a So that's why battlegrounds like Florida, Texas this year, Ohio, that's why they're so important because they're big chunks. You want to, you know, that's the big, the best way to get there is to build big. Pennsylvania, the biggest of the blue wall states. So if you're looking at this map right now, there's, there are no surprises so far on this map. Again, if you come over here, I just want to pull out one second. That's They're voting overwhelmingly. Donald Trump did not have to go to the center, unlike Joe. I'm not going to ban fracking, man, Biden. So this is also yeah. something that's really important. <laughs> Think about this for a second. A vote for Trump is a, is a very clear vote on policy. You know, he just changed the, uh, the the visas, the lottery visas right now. That's a great thing, by the way. We can talk about that a little bit more later on. Um, we know where Donald Trump lines up with Supreme Court justices. We know where he lines up with life. Yeah. We know where he lines up with taxes. We know where he lines up with reopening businesses. With Joe Biden, he's tried to be moderate. You can vote for him because, well, you're for him banning fracking, or you can vote for Biden because you think he won't really ban fracking. You can vote for Biden because you think maybe... With the media, and they did not
Um, that seems like it's a very tight race, and there was a lot of prospect for John James. Uh, and as you look at it here, again, this is not, this is only 19. They're not reporting all the numbers with that. I can see if I can yeah. dig in a little bit. The other one that I'm really, uh, uh, they got to pick it up, is Texas. Joe Biden has a 0.6% lead with uh, over 70% reporting. So I'm oh. hoping that mm. that we're going to see a uh, a widening of that. Well, yeah. that'll depend we on which counties assumed, we know. It's, it's although it hasn't been just called, a that there would be they, they uh, a Republican pickup in Alabama where Doug Jones would lose his seat there. Uh, in Michigan, you... My question is about the question. How genuine is the question? Like I did ABC News and they, they canned it because it went too well for us. But she, when she was saying like, what are you gonna do after if Trump loses? I have this Trump button. So I said, I'm gonna push that and it's gonna unleash the Kraken and the Proud Boys will come out of the sewers. But was she saying that because she genuinely wanted to know what Proud Boys were planning? Or was she saying that just to get it out there in the ether so when people say Antifa are violent, other people will say, well, Proud Boys are violent too, and it'll kind of just obfuscate the whole thing and make it a muddy gray mess that... Uh... Yeah, they're projecting. I mean, they're projecting. They know their side is going to be the one that's doing it, and they're trying to throw our name into it to associate us with it. So when people start writing on their side, they could go, well, maybe some of... Uh, the Proud Boys dress up as left-wing agitators and actually sparked a lot of this stuff, and they're doing it to make us look bad. I mean, that's what they've done before. They're going to do it again. I'm not surprised. Um, it's a tactic they use, um, but it is what it is. We know what we're going to do. But listen, we're listen, gonna you're saying it's a tactic they use, and that makes sense with Antifa. That makes a sense with Soros. But the, yeah, but the media, media is doing the exact same them. thing. They all back them. They give them a, they, they're a scapegoat for them. So the media are in the exact same category as Antifa and all the Soros people because they're using the exact same tactics. They're being disingenuous and they're asking questions that they know the answer to, like, why do you beat your wife? It's that kind of a question. Well, there's a website called, what is it, Exposed Sunlight or something like that, and they released all these leaked Zoom conference calls of people within the Trump administration who are still Obama holdovers working with people like Antifa talking about how they're going to have a coup oh, yeah, if yeah. Trump wins and beats Biden. Um, these people are all working together. I mean, they're all collectively together passing out disinformation to the media. The media puts that out to the dumbed-down public. The dumbed-down public believes it, um, which then empowers and emboldens Antifa to continue what they're doing because they end up having their back. The media never calls Antifa. Tifa bath so they get emboldened even more and then that's when you have the police feeling like hey why should I be here then you see the attacks on him you see the uh, you know murder attempts and things like that the left is corrupt this is a battle literally of good versus evil if yeah. Biden wins you will see America fall it's it so we've heard that saying if America ever this... falls it won't be from a foreign entity it will be from within and this is that pivotal moment right now so this is the most important American election since when this is the most important fucking day in America's history. Really? American yes, Revolution, opinion, Civil I think, War. I think that if this goes south and Biden wins, you're going to see the people like the AOCs getting thrown into uh, cabinet positions. You're going to see Bernie Sanders. You're going to see the Elizabeth Warrens. You're yeah, going to see these Marxist people coming into positions and they're going to strip. And who do you think they're going to go after? You know, we've seen Trump talk about, oh, we're going to make the Antifa a terrorist organization. But a tweet doesn't count, motherfucker. You got to fucking do it. What, what is the left going to do? They're going to come straight for us. They're going to come for the Proud Boys. They're going to label us a domestic terrorist organization. They're going to do that shit in the first fucking week. I promise you that. Yeah. And then they're going to go after anybody that's right wing. You're going to see cell phone services getting shut down. You're going to see internet getting shutting, uh, shut down. You're going to see the inability to communicate with your fellow conservatives. It's going to be 1981. It's going to be shit. This is a this is a worst case scenario, worse than fucking Hillary Clinton. I almost wish that this was up against Hillary <laughs> and not who we have right now because they the left has gotten even more radical since she lost, and that's fucking scary. Yeah. And don't you think of Joe Biden as just this irrelevant vessel, this He's puppet? Just a puppet. Like he doesn't really exist. It's weekend at Bernie's. So yes. at least Hillary existed. This guy is just. It's sort of like uh, uh, Justin Trudeau. He's anyone's dog for a bone. You just make his hands over there, you make him sign something, and then you push him out of the room.
Yeah, exactly. He's an easy sell because he worked with Obama. He's an easy sell for the dumbed down public on the left, which I'll submit they most of these people are. Um, but that's why I, don't you think when you say Kamala dumbed down Harris public coming out and they introduce her as the next president of the United States? This is a Harris administration working with Joe Biden, and they've said this numerous times. It's not a gaffe. They've planned that. That's part of the propaganda. That's part of what they're doing is getting people to program and understand that this is going to be a Harris administration, not a Joe Biden administration. Yes, yes. And when you say the dumbed down American public, let's be honest, it's disproportionately female. Yeah, I mean, well, it's not just <laughs> that the, the female population is more dumbed down. They're just, they just, they think with emotions instead of facts. Yes. They go, well, I don't like Trump because he's not nice. He grabs well, pussies. Who gives a flying fuck if someone's nice? Do you care about what he's doing? Do you care about the fact that he's created a great economy, that he's made our military strong, that he's actually helping veterans? I can tell you as a veteran, this is the first president that's done something that's actually helped me. I'm going to go from a low percent rating to almost 100 percent rating right now. Wait, what does that mean? To the other guys, 2,900. That matters, right? That margin matters when you do it here, and then you do it here, and then you do it here, and then you do it here. That's how it adds up. And so, again, you'd rather be leading than trailing, but you're watching those leads shrink as Election Day vote comes in, and you're trying to figure out... Is it enough to hold, or do we have trouble? Let's go back to David Chalian. David, uh, take a look at Ohio right now. How much of the vote is very close? Only a 13,000-vote lead for Biden in Ohio right now. How much is the early vote as opposed to the today vote? Yeah, you're noting Joe Biden's very, very close lead over Donald Trump. That's with 64% of the vote in. But let me show you that right now, of that vote that's in, 41% of it is early vote. That, that's helping Joe Biden. But unlike North Carolina, we expect the early vote share to grow here in Ohio. At the end of the night, we think we estimated it should be about 53% of the overall vote. So there's the potential as more, as more early vote comes in, Joe Biden could potentially pad that lead. It's something to watch. Obviously, those rural counties can help Trump uh, as well. Jake? Thanks, David. Uh, we're looking at the race having tightened up uh, quite a bit from what uh, some uh, pundits were projecting, and right now it really does look like uh, uh, President Trump has has narrowed or even broken even in, in Florida mm -hmm. and North Carolina and Georgia. So really, it is all coming down to what we said months and months ago, the blue wall of Pennsylvania, yep. Wisconsin, and Michigan, the states uh, that Hillary Clinton thought she had in the bag that Donald Trump tore down, Joe Biden trying to bring, build it back up. That's right. And, you know, look, those states that you just talked about, it is, it is not over. Uh, we are still watching them. But the whole uh, M.O. of the Biden campaign from the beginning was to rebuild. the map as much as they might have hoped that they would. Mm -hmm. uh, the states that he, they thought that he had a good chance, maybe because of turnout, maybe because of demographics, are tight, which is fine, but it's election day, and you have to actually win the state in order for it to matter. <laughs> maybe not. So, you know, we don't know what's going to happen yet, Back but uh, this is a map like that, Fox as you just said, too, is probably just going to come down to what we always thought it would come Fox down to. I haven't gone to Fox all That night. blue wall up there. Mm -hmm. uh, that Biden really, really at this point must hold on to in All, order to get to. Change. Although the Biden people, we should say, have not conceded any Florida no. or Georgia or North Carolina, and they feel very good. Uh, they, they still feel good about North Carolina. They still feel very, um, very positive about Arizona and the Blue Wall. But it's just not going to be as some Democrats were hoping for. Uh, that they, they thought it was going to be an, ear an early landslide, no. which was yeah. really always a pipe dream. Yeah, I mean, th there is no landslide that we're looking at, N no way, uh, given the numbers that we've seen, particularly when you start at the night in Florida when it's as tight as Florida tends to be. Tweet, tweet like a twigger. Um, what's this? Crowder? This people. is a map that, as you just said, is probably just going to come down to what we always thought it would come down to, 
that blue wall up there. Mm -hmm. uh, that Thanks, lady. Really, really hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on to. Go screw yourself. Right. You never said it was going to come <laughs> down to that blue wall. You said Donald Trump's going to lose North Carolina. Donald Trump yeah. looks like he's going to lose Georgia. Certainly Arizona. You didn't even have. If you were to actually look at the 270 <laughs> to win or RCP map, they weren't even listed as toss-ups. You had Arizona listed as blue. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think Dana we'll Bash actually, rolling them back. when they when they scrolled out, actually, I think she's tuned into the stream to try and get new advice. Is she tuned into the stream? Uh, yeah, she might be. Let me see. What, what, so Florida, they had, again, they had Biden at plus nine. There were, set, there were polls within yeah. the last week. Quinnipiac, right? Quinnipiac. 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 Fuck you. Whoa. Had him up whoa, by whoa. five. Yeah. Let's go to North Carolina. Let's see what's going on here. Um, hold on a second. You know what? I guess if I go RCP map, are we still able to mirror wow. my thing? Yeah, if you just yeah, mirror, just mirror. mirror. Is it not? Mirroring? Okay, you By know the way, what? Donald Trump in, in Florida, like 370,000 votes. Ahead. Okay, don't bring it up yet. I'll tell you when to bring it up oh, because right now there's Keeps fat going. people porn. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, oh no. no. It was for a skit. Wow. Right. Actually, because <laughs> I could I tried I could to Apple you. TV you play it sketch. out in the control room. Uh, uh, <laughs> they can't get away. Studio. All right, so here, let's go right now. This I want to make sure this is 2020 because sometimes they can. No, is that 2016? That's 2020. 2020, okay. yeah. So they were saying, now they're saying, like, oh, it's going to come down to that blue wall. Really? Well, let's look at Georgia. Georgia, okay, you have Trump at plus one now, but that's only because of the last, literally from the 29th to today. Before that, you had Biden plus two, plus four. The only one that had Trump ahead was Emerson and WSCB Landmark. You had Biden plus two, plus seven from Quinnipiac. Remember wow. when Quinnipiac was thought of as the gold standard oh, of the polls? The poll, yeah. It was always Quinnipiac. It was Reuters. It was Monmouth. Uh, and then you have uh, people. So for some reason, WSB TV landmark, I assume that's a local poll. Yeah. Uh, Atlanta Journal, again, just like we see. Now you have uh, Quinnipiac up plus three. Right, you have Biden, uh, you have him all the way up plus eight for a while. This is, and by the way, they are definitely massaging these numbers because yeah. we did not see these kinds of numbers favoring Trump when we were looking at them. Let's try some Fox News channel. I haven't, oh, what the? Would lose by like 20 points. <laughs> so uh, for actually, Republicans who are excited about Virginia race. or Democrats who may be despairing, Right? When you have this massive increase in all of these votes, it's going to make these, these numbers screwy. Right? It's going to make things look different. What we do mostly in our work is compare this year to that year, this year to that year. How does it look now versus how did it look then? Because There are incremental changes in demography and incremental changes in turnout. It comes down to this blue wall, but you didn't say it came down to the blue wall. You said that Donald Trump had to run the board and get an inside street. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And now you're going, oh, uh, Donald Trump, it's really going to come down to the place that Donald Trump surprised you by winning last time. It could go any way. I'm not saying that Donald Trump is going to win, but even the editorializing yeah. here makes me want to open up this uh, 102 waterfowl. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Hey, delicious. Delicious. Right. Now, can I take an opportunity you? Huge-ass bottle. It That's is large. I do want to take a quick opportunity. My understanding is that I think Ilhan Omar has won re-election and if anything that very yeah. much solidifies that Gerald's map was made by someone with zero brain cells because he chose <laughs> Minnesota right. to go Trump I think he's wrong I can never go full Jesse Ventura <laughs> Il Ilhan Omar has, has won re-election Ilhan oh, Omar oh, boo. Boo. this district is mine better in the bow tie but I still like him nonetheless what? Chris good evening to you I, I, I will tell you at the moment this is Ohio for our viewers Biden vote uh, could help Joe Biden overtake Donald Trump's lead in Virginia. Specifically, we see almost no early vote in some of the really heavy Democratic counties of Fairfax and Alexandria. Well, all right. That, thanks very much. Uh, we've got two more projections right now. I right, take a look at this. CNN now projects that Donald Trump will win the state of South Carolina. He's the winner in South Carolina, will win its nine electoral votes. CNN also projects Donald Trump will win in Alabama. Uh, will win its nine electoral votes in the state of Alabama as well. Here's where the Electoral College map stands right now. It's close. Biden now has 89 Electoral College 
votes. Trump has 72 electoral college votes, 270, of course, needed to win the presidency. We're getting deeper into the night and another round of results. We're counting down to the top of the hour, 10 p.m. Eastern. That's when polls will close in Iowa, Montana, Nevada, and Utah. Together, those states have 21 electoral votes. Every vote is vital to get to the winning total of 270. Iowa and Nevada are the battlegrounds to watch in the next hour. Joe Biden looking to hold on to Nevada for the Democrats, while the president is hoping to hold on to Iowa after winning it handily four years ago. Let's get a key race alert right now. Let's start with Ohio, a critical battle, battleground state right now, 64% of the estimated voted in. Look at how close it is in Ohio right now. Only a 13,000 vote lead for Biden over Trump in Ohio, 49.5% uh, for Biden. Look at that, how close it is in North Carolina. 82% of the vote is in. Biden does have a 60, almost a 65,000 vote lead over Trump, 50.1% over there. Uh, in Pennsylvania, only 16% of the vote is in. They're taking their time counting the votes in Pennsylvania. Biden has a 73,000 vote lead over Trump. 52.5%, as you can see. In Wisconsin right now, 19% of the vote is in. Uh, Biden's lead is narrow, only 22,000 vote lead, 50.7% to 47.4% in Wisconsin. In Minnesota right now, a quarter of the vote is in. Uh, Biden has an impressive nearly 300,000 vote lead in Minnesota, 66.1% he's got there. In New Hampshire right now, 22% of the vote is in. Biden's lead has increased a bit to nearly 20,000, 54.3% to 44.4 percent. Let's take a look at three more states right now. Let's actually five more states right now. Florida right now, 93 percent of the vote is in. Trump has a pretty comfortable lead, 379,000 vote lead over Biden uh, in Florida. In Michigan right now, 20 percent of the vote is in. Trump has an impressive 224,000 vote lead over Biden right now in Michigan. Uh, right there in Georgia, almost half of the vote is in. Trump has a pretty impressive lead there as well. Nearly a three, more than 364,000 vote lead over Biden in Georgia. 16 electoral votes there in Texas. 76% of the estimated vote is in. Uh, Trump has a lead of 170,000 votes over Biden in the state of Texas. A huge prize. 38 electoral votes in Virginia. 45% of the estimated vote is in. And look at this. Trump still has a pretty impressive lead of uh, more than 311,000 votes in Virginia. 56.4% to 41.7%. Let's go back to John King at the Magic Wall. Uh, so remind us, big picture, where we are right now in this race to 270. Well, you're getting the building blocks, right? The building blocks are the solids, the states that you depend on. The Democrats depend on certain states. The Republicans depend on certain states. And the way this map is filling in right now, uh, nothing here is a surprise. So both campaigns doing the building blocks to try to get you in a contention. To get to 270, you got to pass 100 first. We're getting close. 89 for Joe Biden, 72 uh, for the president of the United States. And again, everything we see filled in, all these reds, we had them solid Trump coming in. All these blues, we had them Biden coming in. So we don't have any surprises right now as we look at the map. The question is, where are we going? And I'm going to ask you, Brian, again, just to swing around. Uh, we'll do a little choreography here. Uh, Texas red at the moment. We haven't called that one. Donald Trump has to hold it. Uh, Virginia red at the moment. That would be a shock. That would be a Clinton state that was taken away. But again, we're waiting for Democratic votes there. We're very early on. The map is going to be different tonight as we go through these different scenarios of mail-in votes in person early, election day, different states counting them in different order. So it's going to be different as we go through. But you just mentioned... Uh, Joe Biden opening a lead in Minnesota and opening a lead in New Hampshire. Come back over here, and I'll show you why that's important. Hillary Clinton won both of those states, so people would say, no big deal. The Trump campaign understands. It understands. We'll go back to his map. It understands if we come back to the 306-232. This was four years ago. The Trump campaign fully understands that, you know, Joe Biden is more competitive here than...
is tanked. I'm sorry. I'm really having a hard time with the mics tonight. It's a lot to manage here. Milo is wasted on wine. No. No. I don't think I have. Hang up. I just messaged. No. You. No, we're not. Uh, I'm not calling no. No, I'm just saying I'm not going to participate in a conversation with somebody who's running fucking. No. Ryan. Hold up. What yeah. the fuck is going on here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. Here. Sorry, sir. Could you please hang up on that dreadful human being? He's hung up on, sir. What the fuck is going on? You gotta just get a Milo's little taking over the show. Of Kevin. I won't talk. Look at his eyes. He's no, okay. drunk as shit. Him, as long as you're not to him. I belong to you now. <laughs> For allegiance. Do you really mean that? Yes. Do you mean? You, okay. So you're gonna like tell him to go over there when he comes back? When he asks me stuff. to do something in the future, ever again, I'm going to be like, ask Milo if that's okay. Okay, but that has to start now. You have to promise. When he comes out, it starts now. Well, it's not like a pinky swear, but... I'm... No, no, give it, give it to me. Right now. But what happens if right I break now. it? Right now. I don't want to lose my job. Right now. I just realized what I said. Right fucking now. Okay, we got to we okay. gotta get out of here. Milo's drunk. They were having some... Yeah, they should, CNN's we got some good coverage. Ago. We're oh, early here. With Joe Biden pulling out to a rally in Minnesota. Up. It's one of those states. Each campaign looks at the last guy's map and says, what can I do to try to change it? The Trump campaign wanted Minnesota. They wanted New Hampshire. The Biden lead early on. We'll see if it changes. This one here, these are the fascinating. They're just... This is, this is why we do this, Wolf. This is why it's exciting and fun. Uh, 13,000 votes now in Ohio. 64% for some time. So we're waiting. We're waiting for more votes to be counted. And again, we should all appreciate the challenge of these election officials all across the country. Democrats, Republicans, small county, big cities. Uh, it's a huge challenge. Turnout is up. You have the mix of voting, mail-in voting, in-person early. But right now, 49.5 to 49.2 in a state, the president must win. Joe Biden does not need this. He leads right now by just shy of 14,000 votes, 13,461. He does not need this, but he would like it. Just want to check to see where we are in the percentages. David Chalian talked a little bit about this earlier. We have to watch which vote is which, but 55% still. You have a lot of votes to count here in a deep blue county, Cuyahoga County, Cleveland, and the surrounding areas. If you're a Democrat, you think we'll do okay there. 58% uh, here, so more votes to be counted in Summit County. You're running well ahead. If you're in the Biden campaign quarters, you say, okay, we got a ways to go here. Just want to move over here. About half of the votes counted. I'm just following the blue to see what's left to come in. So if you're Joe Biden, the question is, do you hold these margins? Or when more election day vote comes in, this is a place the president ran pretty strong four years ago, does he get the election day turnout to bring it back? That is the dynamic of the night in state after state after state, and we're going to have to watch it. But Ohio is a great battleground state. It's been a while. It was not a battleground last time. The president won it quite comfortably. North Carolina, you look at the margin now, 29,000 votes. It was above 100,000. It was close to 125,000 not that long ago. Uh, it is down, but 84% right now, 49.7 to 49.1. Just want to go back four years ago. This was a three-point race, if you round up there, uh, four years ago. Just look how close this is. And again, we're missing some counties. We're missing completely. See how many votes are here four years ago. 13, there's about a 1,000 vote difference there, a little more than that, a little less than that four years ago. So you're looking to see what's missing in these counties and the main place. New face of the progressive uh, Democrat Party. No, the real face of the, Dem of the Democrat Party is Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib. And the things that we've learned about Ilhan Omar, the fact that she married her, excuse me, married her brother to commit immigration fraud, the fact that she um, was never eligible to run for Congress in the first place, well, election. And the Democrat Party you see this. Care, that she you have a huge margin, 83%. You think you're going to build, right? Because you've been running it up all night. You have more votes to come in. The challenge this year is the mail-in, in-person early election day vote. They're different, right? We know Republicans were more likely to come out today. Democrats were more likely. Americans, for lack of a better word, but a Cuban American outlook. Uh, how different would it be from a Mexican American outlook, or let's say uh, um, a South American, let's say like a Chilean American outlook, or else like a Cuban American versus a Mexican American outlook? How different are they? Should should they be in the same category? Which is what pollsters do. Uh, politically wise, like uh, an ideology <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah, who do you who's that there with you, Lil Wheezy? Uh, we, we got some friends, one of my training partners and my father's here. You guys met my father. Oh, okay. Well, I, I haven't met your father. Did he enjoy the cigars that we sent? 
Oh, he loves the cigar. I think he's smoking one right now. Hey. Oh, yeah. Hey. 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 There we go. Hey, your father looks young. Yeah, man. He, he ain't doing too bad for himself. <laughs> <laughs> he, he also looks very white. <laughs> <laughs> Little light skin, yeah. You got to stay <laughs> I was I was expecting to turn the camera to turn over and have like a Jorge, uh, no sorry no Jorge have a, a little bit of a Yoel Romero like I love cigar I have cigar for you. <laughs> um, okay, so Cuban Americans versus Mexican Americans because you're all put in the same right the same category Latinos. Big big difference you know um, big difference on the on the policy on the politics on on how the taxes go like a lot of these south american and, and central american countries they don't mind having these crazy high taxes um right off rip the cubans will tell you they're conservatives as hell with their money you know they're, they don't they don't want to play these games where we're going to give more money to the government for what to, to rely on what we've already seen what what that does in places like cuba and venezuela that they promise health care for everybody and fix nobody so it, it, it's harder to convince a cuban to swallow that pill that yeah. the more you pay taxes it's gonna be better for you. Right off rip, they're already like a little hesitant, you know. Um, and and always against anything socialist. If they're socializing too much stuff, they already start to get very wary. Yeah. Uh, my father's just one example, but all my aunts and uncles are, are always talking to me about this on on how it scares them and why it scares them so much. You know? You, know, you know what's interesting is that you brought that up. I think that's the main difference. So when I did this video yesterday uh, or was uploaded yesterday where I asked people about Donald Trump being a racist, there was a Mexican lady who said, well, he hates Mexicans. And she said to me, she, and we might upload this interview separately. Audio Wade was there. She said, you know, in Mexico, uh, the government, they can arrest you if you speak out. And I said, well, that's terrible. She said, especially if you're wealthy. I said, what do you mean? She said, because then they can take more money from you. So they try to vilify the wealthy. And I said, oh, do you see that happening here? She said, well, that's a really good point. I said, so do you understand, like, the difference between uh, a massive socialized government? She said, Mexico is not socialist. So here's the big difference. They see Mexico as a corrupt, crappy country, but the government tries to claim that it's not socialist. Whereas I think with Cuban Americans, it's been very clear, hey, why are things so bad? Your government keeps saying socialism. So you guys were fleeing, meaning Cuban Americans, your father there, fleeing an actual government that persecuted you for speaking out against socialism. Current Mexicans are just fleeing a crappy economy. And so I don't think there's as much of a resistance to socialism because they don't connect those dots. Do you think that may be a part of it? That, that's one good way to put it. It, it. It's actually a lot of the Mexicans will say their government is corrupt. They don't have faith in the system. Uh, the politicians are all bought out, but they're not. Um, they're not against socialism as hard as we go. You know, I mean, you ask any Cuban, and it, it, it's like the worst thing you could call them. You know, is, is a communist or dictator or anything like that. You know, so if you come to Miami, you want to piss off the Cuban. That, that's what you say. You know. Okay. Well, I'm going to do that when I get my concealed carry permit, and I just feel like I want to go down. And it'll be not suicide by cop fire. It'll be suicide by Cubans, and I'll just go. So All right, let's get back. Get back to CNN, see what they got. 47.9 in the national vote, but that's not how we pick presidents. Uh, we look at 2020 right here. Look what has just happened in the last few minutes. Ohio is red. Uh, the president ahead right now, if you look at the vote there, 70% there, 128,000 lead. A big shift. A big shift there as more votes come in in the state of Ohio, 50.8 to 47. The night requires a little bit of patience on our part and on your part as well. Uh, they're counting votes in different ways, and so we're going to see some swings, and sometimes they're going to happen quickly when new votes come in. Uh, the president of the United States now leading in a state he must win, Battleground, Ohio, 50.8 to 47.9. 70% still a ways to go, and as David Chalian noted earlier, uh, we're waiting for some early vote here. We're waiting for states to count their votes. Some are doing it in a different order, early voting mail-in voting and today voting we'll see how it plays out just want to check to see if the margins are changing at all as we play through this uh, this is a big shift this is a very big shift on the map president trump ohio goes back to red for now we're not done we have a ways to go 30 percent of the count there you're looking at pennsylvania right now if you're looking at this map right now let me just pull it back out a second if you're a democrat sitting at home right now you're looking at this map and you say oh my it's happening again pennsylvania michigan wisconsin if you're a republican you're saying that's what we needed here's the thing Slow down. We have a long way to go in all of these states. No offense to anybody, but we're 21 percent right here. We know Pennsylvania has some issues. Some of the mail-in votes won't even be counted until tomorrow. Uh, it's worth looking at. These are all real votes. The question is, we don't have context yet because we're so early in these states. So just be careful. Don't look at the map at this hour and make any judgments because we're in the middle chapters here in some states in the early chapters. Again, the president has a lead in Michigan right now. Last time we were here, 
He was leading in Wayne County. We knew that wasn't going to happen. Joe Biden is ahead now, but that's a tiny, tiny vote count. There's a long way to go in these states. That's what makes them interesting. They're going to flip back and forth a little bit. Let's move over to Wisconsin and look. And again, the president has a narrow lead here, a 51 if you want to round that up, to 48 if you round that up. But again, 30 percent of the vote, a long way to go. So when you pull it out like this, people look at it at home and you can, wow, uh, we're not done. We have a long way to go in a lot of places, including Virginia is red right now. If the president can keep Virginia red, the president's going to be reelected. Um, but we don't know this yet still. 53 to 45, that's actually gotten closer in recent times. And again, you come back up here. This is where elections in Virginia are won and lost. Northern Virginia is what has changed Virginia from a purple state to a blue state. And we're waiting still. We only have 28 percent of the vote. Fairfax County, it's the largest vote center in the state. It is Democratic, overwhelmingly so. So we'll see when votes come in here. Let's move down here. Look at this. Look at North Carolina. This was over 100,000 at one point. I think it was over 120,000 at one point. It is now 5,000, oh, 2,000 as you speak. More votes come in. That's the magic. That is the magic of live data reporting and the counting votes. 2,000 votes ahead, 49.4 to 49.4 in Battleground, North Carolina. Joe Biden doesn't need it, but if he gets it, he blocks the president's path to reelection, most likely. This state, remember, and again, this is, this is a textbook example of what we've asked throughout the night. Patience on our part, patience on your part. Votes, early votes came in. Joe Biden built an early lead. Now we're getting Election Day votes in. North Carolina, tight. Let's take a look at Arizona. The votes coming in uh, relatively quickly in Arizona. I think nearly a quarter of the vote is in, in Arizona. And so you see it blue right now. Not since Bill Clinton has Arizona ended the night. We're not at the end of the night, but not since Bill Clinton, with the help of Ross Perot, has Arizona gone blue. And so you look at it now, and you see the whole, you see the entire state. You see the familiar cities, Flagstaff, Sedona, Yuma, Tucson. Let's be honest, this comes down to Maricopa County and Phoenix, one of the fastest growing areas in America. 60% or more of the vote comes right out of here, 77% uh, of it in. Uh, again, we'll figure out what's missing from that. But Joe Biden at 54%, the president at 40, 44, so a 10 point race, a little under 10 point race. Let's just go back and look at it. Excuse me, get that to click in. Again, so Donald Trump wins Arizona four years ago wins Maricopa County. This is the biggest basket of votes. Phoenix and the fast-growing suburbs. Uh, four years later, from 2016 to 2020, this is one of the fastest-growing states. You get out of Phoenix, you get down here, Goodyear and the like, fast-growing suburbs. Again, the suburbs have revolted against this president. There's an important Senate race in this state as well. Let's come back to 2020 and look at the map that Maricopa County is blue, is a source of joy in the Biden campaign right now. They have to keep it that way. Let's just look down here. Pima County, again, 64 if you round that up to 35. 80% of the vote in, you go back here, 54. So 10 point, you're, by 10 percentage points, you're overperforming Hillary Clinton. Just want to see how the turnout is here. 224,000 four years ago, already 260,000. Again, one of the gifts of this election, no matter who wins, is turnout is up everywhere. Uh, that's a good thing. Uh, we, want, we want that to happen every time. But again, you see the split right there. Joe Biden overperforming Hillary Clinton there. You've got some rural areas here to fill in in the state. If you go back in time, you can see what happens here. The states, but this is it. This, this is it. Maricopa County, Phoenix, the suburbs around it. Again, traditionally Republican territory, increasingly because of demographics and because of the suburban revolt against the president of the United States. Maricopa County, if that holds up, that's the ball game in Arizona. But we have a ways to go there. The biggest piece of the state, Joe Biden doing what he has to do otherwise. And again, Wolf, we talked about this before. Both campaigns look at the last guy's map. So you look at the Trump map from 2016. If you're Joe Biden, priority one, hold every Clinton state then look for things to flip. If you can flip Arizona, you're chipping away at the president. You've, so the, the main priority for the Biden campaign is that blue wall. Let's come back out and look. This is the main priority. Flip these guys back. Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin. If you do that, that's all you have to do if you're Joe Biden. That's all you have to do. But your backup plan, get something else, right? North Carolina is your hope. That one's getting close. If you can't get these, you go over here as well. You look at North Carolina right there. That's 13 1,300 votes. Basically a tie right now. That's, that's basically a tie. Again, if you, if you end it that way, you win. A win is a win. Uh, but we got a ways to go, 86%. Uh, this, is why, this, is, this is why they're so much fun. Uh, let's just come back out here and see if anything's updated. No, nope, still at 70% here. Got to give these states credit. In the challenge they face, many of these states are reporting pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, in the challenge they face with this, all the different kinds of voting this year, it's a good thing to see. Just want to check. He wants to... I want to go back to Arizona here. I was going to check the upper Midwest, but as you see, 70% of the vote in here. And again, let's just see. Let's just see here, 70%. So four years ago, conser more conservative part of the state, 51. This is where we are now, 51 to 46. Let's just go back, 48. So the president actually doing fine here, right? 
do, do, doing better, at least so far, right there. 26,000 votes now, 25,000. So the president doing better here, running up some votes here. The problem for the president, when you look at it this way, though, and come back to 2020, is that's great. That's what you want to do. You want to do better everywhere you can. The issue is way more people live here, way more people. And so you get 798,000, 77% in. Let's compare that to Secretary Clinton four years ago. She had 702,000 to end the night. Uh, we're not done yet. And you had, she was at 45 with the president at 49. Joe Biden, 54%. This is, that's game changing. If you can keep that there, we're still counting in Arizona. And again, that would be a flip. If I can walk over here, I just want to show you the significance. Um, there's some flipping and flopping here in the last few minutes. I don't know if, Reg, you can look at Where that. Virginia might be in play? N that some There was some question about how the numbers, they were calling it for Biden, but now the Trump's numbers are huge again. Oh. I don't know if there's some kind of technical slip up, but... Uh, <laughs> so I mean, make my <laughs> deal. Nightmares. This is crazy. So here's the deal with Virginia. The thing about Virginia is that the... Um, mail-in votes do not even start being uh, counted until 7 p.m. Uh, and then they're counted till 11. So the results uh -huh. that you have early on are mm. the in-person day of. And so I think that's why they tried to call it so early. They thought, well, right. you know, uh, we can call this, but let's look at the lead here because Trump... It could be that he's getting enough of a leave. You know, if you go over to CNN, right? They have not called Virginia no. for Biden. Uh -huh. And by the and way, that's so, what fifty minutes that they have left to count. Right. So it's ten eleven. And Arizona time. right now, Arizona doesn't look very good for Donald Trump, but I don't know Super what they're early. counting first. Uh, I think that no, I think they have eight. They're saying eighty percent. Oh, good lord, yeah. Of Arizona. Yeah, yeah eighty. That's yeah. high. Mm, yeah, it's, I mean, 80, mm -hmm. hold on a second, but 80% in and a 10-point spread, an 11-point spread, huh. something tells me that they and haven't counted some call. serious counties there. Yeah, they're yeah. saying if it's yeah, too early to call that spread. That must mean, do we know which counties have not been, people in Arizona let us know because that's one yeah. of those things that seems weird, mm -hmm. kind of like the last go-around with Florida, where Florida, I remember, looked really bad. Yeah. Uh, when we were doing the live broadcast, right. and then yeah. the panhandle came through. I think we were on the line with Anthony Cumia when that happened, and we said, oh, wow, that's changing. So I know they just counted Maricopa County, which is uh, where they expected Biden to do the best, and I don't yeah. know if this is 80% of all Arizona votes. No, 72% in now. It's okay, all right. So maybe Was that 80% for county. Maricopa County? Can you let us know and fill us in there, Reg, in Arizona? Because yeah, sure. I tell you what, it's one of those things, if it were close— and it was 70% in, you'd go, okay, that's bad. But yeah. if it's a 10-point spread, that tells me that the overwhelming Trump counties have not been counted. I, I would think so, yeah, because I don't yeah. think it's going to be nearly that big of a spread at the end of the day. Even, well, Arizona hasn't had that, that big of a spread points. for Republican or Democrat, right. I don't know, ever in yeah. modern election mm -hmm. history. So um, the fact that they're saying too early to call, too early to call difference, 218,000. Now, they also may be counting the early voting in Arizona, depending on the state. Again, this is why this matters. They may be calling the states... Uh, Sorry, they may be counting the mail-in votes first or right. the same-day votes first. Which state was it that counted the mail-in votes first? I think it was North Carolina, right, mm -hmm. where they counted the mail votes first pretty quickly, and Trump was ahead by 1.5, and now they're going to same-day voting. So Yeah, generally they count the day the, the, the mail-in votes early. The, the Pennsylvania right. and I think uh, Michigan are the, are the flip, which seems sort of backwards to me. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Arizona, you can bring it up, you know, the—, the, the uh, a little bit lower down there, you'll see that Phoenix and Tuscan, uh, you know, Tucson. these... Tucson. Yeah, sorry. What is it with you guys in pronunciation? Well, he goes... <laughs> I can really see it here. He eats a California pizza kitchen. But, but, Tuscan, uh, <laughs> Tuscan, uh, Tuscan chicken uh, sandwich flatbread. Yeah, I would assume those more uh, rural areas out there, the less densely the populated, Tucson, are going to be more red. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's tough to see with Arizona. Well, Arizona could still go. Uh, Arizona could go to Joe Biden. That could be a surprise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And if that's the case, then uh, well, we have then we have uh, a race in hands. I would expect if if Biden wins Arizona, for it to go back to about fifty fifty. Hmm. Yeah. And then I think that if Trump wins North Carolina and Georgia, I would expect the betting odds to probably go back to maybe sixty forty. And there's mm -hmm. been a little flip flop. So depending on yeah. what uh, particular site that you're looking at for the Vegas odds, there was a little blip there around eight. 
15 Eastern where it flipped to being pro-Trump and then or Trump being favored then it went back for about an hour then it went uh, then went to Trump again and has been kind of solidly Trump now solidly Trump being that it's you know they're saying that the odds are in his favor but it's clear that those are shifting on 10 to 15 minute intervals depending yeah. on how these are coming in mm. and there's a lot there's a lot still out there that you know that we just don't know about yeah we don't know about uh no new updates as far as I understand it so no. I'm going to take this minute to do do we have like a, a two and a half minute break two and a half minute yes, break sir. two yeah. and a half minute break again the promo code is Crowder election stream uh enjoy these commercial sketches and I will be back in two minutes once my bladder has been cleared and uh we will uh, have more for you stay with us not the other guys because they lie Are you ready, kids? Yes, yes, over 50%. Yeah. I can't hear vote. you. Right there. Let's go back to Arizona and see if we've racked it up at all. Up to 73% 73 now. 210,000 votes ahead. Again, 54 to 45 if you round it up. 49 to 45. Four years ago, Joe Biden. Maricopa County is the difference right now. And again, the city of Phoenix, the suburbs around it. If you go to Arizona, you were there 10 years ago and five years ago and five weeks ago. You just know the change that's happening. This is one of the fastest changing places in America. It's growing out here in the suburbs. 800,000 votes, just shy of that for Joe Biden right now. I just want to go back and look at the math. Hillary Clinton got 700,000 votes plus 702,000, 703 if you round up Maricopa County four years ago. Again, turnout is up everywhere. Joe Biden's already surpassed that, 77% of the vote. That's a fascinating state. And that fascinating. One of the questions about American politics is what's changing? Are they, are they, is it just a Trump change? Is there, is it, if this finishes tonight, blue? There are a few, it, a few counties that haven't even reported. Yes, yet. they've got nothing in some of these counties here, Apache County out here. Again, there's not a ton of votes out here. But if you just bring it up, you know, 17,000, 8,000. So Maricopa is 60% or more of the vote, depending yeah. on the turnout. Uh, but it matters. If it, gets, if it gets close, it certainly matters. Uh, and so that's one of the, you know, you, gotta, you look at it. Every vote counts. I don't mean to discount anybody's vote. Uh, every vote counts. But in terms of the swing of the state... Uh, this is going to determine most of it, and you're at 77 percent. But to your point, uh, if, when you get this higher, if it's close and you get this higher, that's when, you're, that's when you're looking around. And that has been part of the marvel of Donald Trump's winning is that in places like that, even when he gets beat in the cities, not so much in Arizona, but in some of these other places, again, look at all the red in the middle of the map, right? Not a ton of people live here, but the president runs it up, gets his 6,000 votes here, you know, gets his... 14,000 votes here, and you go on and on and on, and that's how he does it. Uh, in these smaller counties, turnout is high, he runs it up, and so far, that's come down here. I just want to look one more time. That has stayed exactly the same, 25,482. South Carolina was blue for a little bit early on. You see that one going back to its DNA, the conservative state there. Georgia, not as competitive at the moment. Again, 52%, though. So, again, you're in this night where you have three different kinds of voting, different states, sometimes within a state, different counties reporting them in different order. Uh, the, the, de the Democrats were hoping right here uh, to have a closer state. But look, Fulton County, still, again, a third of the vote. This is it. This is by far. And so you move around these counties here. You have Cobb here. You move Fulton here. You come out here. It's very slow, 1% here. You know, so we have the, this, is, this is the bulk of the vote in the state. Now, Georgia potentially here. could become a lot more competitive because a lot yes. of the major Democratic counties have not reported yet. Right. Very low. Very low percentage here all around the Atlanta metro area. And again, you, uh, these, are small, these are the smaller Places ones here, but still eight controversy. as a county. So you're looking... Was sort of a man of color who similarly was simply a white liberal. And in that way, specifically, she's the ultimate heir to Obama and she's the perfect continuity candidate for a Democrat party that wants to forget that, that Trump ever happened and just continue as though Obama had done what he always said he was going to do, which was fundamentally transform the country. I think Obama is worse than a, uh, a rich white male. He's his mother. He's a woman. He's a white woman. Look at the way he plays basketball. Look at the way he rides a bike. He's his mom. Well, if you look at the sexual politics of his marriage, it seems to me to be relatively obvious that he's not the husband in that relationship. Do you, you think she's way? a dude? Do you think she has a dick? I don't think she has a penis, but I think in all other ways, in all significant and meaningful ways, she's quite obviously the dominant partner, <laughs> you let's know, say. Right? If 
I don't think she has a dick either, but it's a common belief in the far, far right. Uh, if she had a dick, right, and we had a tranny in the White House and Barack Obama was sucking on his boyfriend's cock in America, in the White House, yes. I kind of got to respect that Tory, but it's that becoming Rocky Horror Picture Show. So here's a question for you, right? Hillary Clinton, 51 to 44 when you round up the president there, 52 to 44 if you round up Secretary Clinton as well. Uh, right now, Donald Trump doing a little better. So let's see what happens there. See if Michigan, again, we're early, very early in the count here, but that's what you're watching, right? Democrats can win Michigan. Joe Biden has to, let me move it up a little bit. Joe Biden has to run it up in Detroit the show yeah okay, uh, the stream is uh, did you already get the <laughs> the numbers black are pretty rifle? decent yeah but just make sure i mean tell people your favorite coffee from a black rifle and, and give us that promo code one okay. more time just toss it soon but, uh, yeah okay hold on a second i'll just toss this on the couch just don't lose it because i need Trump. it so i can breathe that has democrats scratching their heads why do we lose those voters and who are those voters well in macomb county they work in the auto industry or they work in related industries like that blue collar workers people who work with their hands this has been a problem for the democrats joe biden said he could get them back so we'll see. We've got a long way to go there, so you don't want to jump to any conclusions. But it's also important if you just pull Michigan up again and you go back to 2016, you don't see a ton of blue here, but you come back to 2012, this is the difference, right? Can Joe Biden, can the guy who was number two to Barack Obama on the ticket win back some of these areas that Barack Obama won when he carried these states, many of them quite convincingly? You see that this is Mitt Romney's birth state. I know he moved to Massachusetts, now he's in Utah, but this is where he was born, and, and Barack Obama beat him by 10 points. So the question is, can Joe Biden get those counties back? We're very early in the count in Michigan right now, a long way to go. And so, again, if you're looking at the map from home, you say, if you're a Republican, you say, wow. If you're a Democrat, you say, uh-oh. But we're not done. We've got a long way to go. We certainly do. Let's go check in with uh, Jake, Dana, and Abby. Thanks, Wolf. Uh, so we need to caution our viewers out there. It's early. Whether you're <laughs> rooting for Trump or you're rooting for Biden, it's early. We're mm -hmm. still counting the votes. I don't know if this is 2016 or 2018. You might remember in 2018, uh, things looked really bad for Democrats or mm -hmm. uncertain early on. But then, you know, after not just midnight struck, but a couple days, mm -hmm. you saw that actually it had been a really great night for Democrats. On the other hand, it could be 2016 with things breaking right. for President Trump. We don't know. Everyone needs to just take a deep breath out. Which is hard. We had, I mean, look, yeah. this is this is a nation that is that is on edge, so it's understandable. But as you said, and as we have been telegraphing as we've approached tonight, it could take a while, and it is bearing out. And what I'm hearing from... About uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Donald Trump is also up in Michigan. It's only thirty five percent of the vote. No, it, doesn't mean, it depends big. on which county. True. Yeah. Also, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is what I would like Wayne to see. Wayne County's in for a pretty big number. Oh, Wayne County's already not in. Not all of it. No, no, no. Not all. Wait, wait, wait. wait hold county. on a second. If whoa, whoa, a good whoa, whoa, amount whoa. of Wayne County is I think in, Trump is ahead. Thirty something percent, forty something. Oh my God, that's a disaster. But check me on that because I saw that's a disaster. Bottom. Oh, folks. If you want to bring up political break, I would believe that. Say, oh boy, that's a really big nightmare. I'll do my Southern preacher voice. Oh my God, that's a really big nightmare. And now. I'll do my gay voice because I'm having Oh, look, look, look. If you look at Wayne County, you look at the way they gerrymander, it looks like a big penis. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> If true? somebody did that, that would actually be funny. If they it's... gerrymandered into like a penis district, that'd be hilarious. I think that's factually accurate. Yeah, that's <laughs> probably that's pretty accurate. Yeah, wow. it's pretty true. His golf thing was pretty funny. One of my on. favorite is Artie Lang uh, and Gilbert Godfrey. They said uh, <laughs> uh, when Robert Williams uh, killed himself, he used a nanus nanus. Ooh. Oh. oh. Boo. My <laughs> boo. <Lord. laughs> Come on, too so. So uh, anyway, you know what? Dark. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna watch. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, which is what yeah. I said. We're seeing you the think it's dark at the time, out. and we right. still don't know about Florida. We still don't know about Georgia. We still don't know about North Carolina. And as we have also been saying, even if you were to give those states all of them to President Trump, and we're not, we're still waiting for a lot of outstanding vote. Mm -hmm. It really does come up to the three states up north: Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, and also Arizona. Uh, those are the states that the Biden campaign has focused most mm -hmm. on, uh, and we still don't know what's going on there. Yeah, and, you know, I, one of the things that you heard a lot from the Trump folks leading up to today is that they knew their job was just to get their people out uh, and just to get them to the polls and, and ignore, ignore all of the public polling that we've all been talking about and looking at. And, you know, I do think that when you look at the Sun Belt, where we knew that there was elevated turnout, the president is still very competitive in those states, mm -hmm. the places that he had to hold on to, Georgia, 
North Carolina, Florida. He had to keep those states, and he's competitive there. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because his people showed up today. It, it, that's exactly right. He needed, it, it, this was a turnout election. It wasn't a persuasion election, meaning there weren't a lot of people out there going, hmm, do I vote for Joe Biden or do I vote for Donald Trump? Pretty much everybody made up their mind. The question is whether or not they were going to get out and vote. And the Trump campaign has a, an, in, in cooperation with the RNC, which has been working on its, you know, vote, what they call their voter vault since 2004, they have a really stellar operation. And they actually built it in recent years, uh, modeled after Barack Obama's operation, mm -hmm. because his was, was so good, that campaign's was so good when it came to data, and they've updated it more and more. Um, the Democrats even will admit, and we were talking about this before, that they're a little bit slower on that, but they were relying on some of that, but, but a lot of enthusiasm. And I would add that uh, for Democrats, the task was even more difficult because they they chose for a lot of you, we, they would say really good reasons not to be on the ground knocking mm -hmm. on doors in the way that you might have seen leading up to yeah, a normal pandemic, cycle because right. of the pandemic. Right. So it, it, I mean, there's no. When I talk to Democrats, everyone acknowledges that is a scenario that nobody anticipated, uh, put them at a little bit at a disadvantage, but. We may see some of that play out uh, in the places where the president was able to get his people out. Maybe he didn't change any minds, but as long as he got... Vinegar or something? Like... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was just trying to tell you to give her the speaker there, Audio Wade, because she uh, could... Yes. Carolyn, you are a dog trainer. Yes, I you're, am. A, you're a brilliant dog trainer. Thank you. From what I, I understand, <laughs> uh, I was very scared when I brought Betty to you, and you said that uh, you thought, can I, I can walk over to her, right? Right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. walk around. All right, so we have Betty right now. Can I say hi to Betty as she yeah. comes back? Hey, Betty. Hey, I haven't seen you in Oh, you're going to bite my nose? Okay. Hello, Betty. I want to see if you get excited, but. She's still not going for the toilet paper. I don't know if <laughs> that's, an, that's amazing. Yeah, that's, you're going to wow. terrible. We can see Whoa, it. Betty. Hey, th this right. is not the same dog. I don't she, want to do yeah. any direction. This is crazy. Well, she, yeah, she uh, ate insane. toilet paper for 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was 30 minutes. <laughs> and you saw that, yeah. and you said, I as did. entertaining as it was, yeah. it was uh, a very irresponsible dog ownership. I would rather not continue to see that after her extensive training. <laughs> On a scale yeah. from here, we can kneel down here. Sit, Betty. On a scale from 1 to 10, how difficult would you rate Betty? I, when she came to you? It's probably a seven or an eight. Probably sure, a seven or like an a eight. A solid seven or an eight. What would a ten be? Yeah. Oh, like a so, like a Malamute or a Great Pyrenees. Like dogs that just have no desire oftentimes to work for the human. Okay. Other than what they're bred to do. So livestock guarding, pulling, that kind of thing. And how long did it take you to train? Because no one here believes this. No. For her to no, not no, this, this is toilet. Yeah, yeah. This, this is crazy. And you can keep the scene in there in the lower third so people know it's still an election. <laughs> yeah. 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 Black it's still a president being um, elected. How long did it take you to get her to this point where she's, I mean, she's not even, she's kind of sniffing it, but she's yeah. not that interested. Um, You know, it probably took a couple, three weeks of, of, consistent work on obedience and to develop a relationship with her and all of that before we started the bigger, the big ticket items that were a bigger draw for her previously. Um, but I'd say by the end of the first, you know, four to six weeks, she was with me. Um, we've done enough. And she just farted. You smell that, that, correct? Uh, it could, you know, <laughs> and, yes. Betty, sit. Don't blame your dog. Thank you. Good girl. For sit. What, she keeps trying to shake. You yeah, taught her how to shake. Been shake. on waving. Wave. Say hi. Say hi. Can you say hi, Betty? Say no, no. Oh, no, she only knows that now. She on. now you're, you're connected to her. You're not going to listen to me. Um, what would what advice would you give to people at home who have a terror like Betty, who you know their their choice was either someone like you, or uh, the trash on Tuesday? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Is finding a professional to work with that'll help give you guidance on how to give corrections, consequences, right. create inhibitions. But then a lot of it's structure, learning how to live with the dog and meet its needs on a regular basis. <laughs> trash on Tuesday. Um, oh, Crowder's like, fucking beautiful. Uh, all right, okay. back to CNN. 0.7 percent to 43.4 percent in Pennsylvania. Almost a third of the vote is in. Trump is ahead by 179,000 votes. 53.4 percent to 45.2 percent in Wisconsin. A third of the vote is in. It's very, very close. Uh, Trump is ahead by some 20,000 votes. 50 percent to 48.3 percent in Georgia right now. More than half of the vote is in. Trump has a pretty comfortable lead in Georgia uh, of 348,000 votes. Uh, right now, 55.4%. We have a projection right now. Take a look at this. CNN projects that uh, Joe Biden will win in New Mexico right now. Uh, take a look at that. Uh, Joe Biden wins in New Mexico. Uh, there he is, uh, the winner in New Mexico. Uh, that's five electoral votes in New Mexico. So let's see where the electoral college map stands right now. Right now, with that win in New Mexico, 
Biden has 94 electoral votes. Trump has 72 electoral votes. The all-important race to 270 needed to win. 94 to 72 right now. 270 being the magic number. You're elected president if you get 270 votes. What are you seeing? Well, you're seeing a map right now that is going to make Democrats nervous, and so which is why we need to emphasize the point that when you see red Pennsylvania, red Michigan, and red Wisconsin, we are very, 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 very early in the count there. However, if you look at this map right now, the name of the game, if you're Joe Biden, is takeaway because Donald Trump's the incumbent president who won last time. And so we're not done yet. We're not done yet by any means, but you look at North Carolina, the president's stretching a lead out here, 89%. It's a modest lead, 42,423, about 49.8 to 49. Joe Biden had a lead early on. Donald Trump's election day surge puts him back in the lead. Can he hold it? We'll watch that as we play it out. But Republicans feel good about that. We're coming down to Florida now. And you look here, a 5.6 million for the president, 5.2. Higher turnout in Florida, a very competitive race. Again, we have to wait. We're going to count some things here. But Democrats are not happy, particularly with down here in Miami-Dade, 53 percent. You Normally, you look, you see 53, 46. You think that's great. But that's way below where Hillary Clinton was four years ago. So you're looking at this map here. The plus side for the Democrats is out here in Arizona, where Joe Biden right now, 75 percent of the vote, 54 if you round up to 45. That's a big shift from four years ago when the president won at 49, 45, a four-point race. You see the president, Joe Biden, the Democrat, above 50 there. So let's just put this into context. Number one, this was the name of the game in 2016. We're not done. We're not done. We're not done. Some of these states could go on into tomorrow. But as you look at this map, Many Democrats say it does raise the scenario many of them are worried about. An hour or two from now, is the president going to come out and say, I win, uh, if he's still leading in those states? We're not done. That's not how we count. These states will decide who wins their elections, and we have a lot of votes to count. But the question is, the name of the game, Well, if I'm going to switch maps here, is this is where we are right now, 94 to 72. There are no surprises on this map so far. Everything we see filled in is the way we thought it would go coming into the night. There are also, though, if you think about out here, where we haven't counted votes yet because it's still early in the night. People are still voting. There's not, not, we don't think there are any more surprises out that way, if you will. Nevada was the one Clinton state. The Trump campaign made a run. We'll see. But we expect that to stay Democratic, which is why things get interesting now. Again, we haven't called some of these close states, but this is the calculation in both of the campaign war rooms. This is where Donald Trump started. Joe Biden has to look at this map and say, what do I take away to get him below 270 and to get me to 270? So... Joe Biden wanted Florida. Not yet. We'll see. We'll keep counting. Doesn't look that way. Wanted North Carolina. Donald Trump has a lead right now. We'll see. We'll get to the finish line. Georgia, we got a lot of votes out. The, the Democrats had these targets of opportunity. Can we get these states that are, can we get a surge? We'll watch Georgia. We're still missing a lot of Democratic votes. Texas is filling in red. Again, we haven't called it. We have a ways to go, but it's filling in red right now. So, so far, so far, you look like you're getting that, right? We're not done. We're not done in Arizona yet either. But as you project it out, so okay, now you got the president at 295. If you're not going to get Ohio, haven't called it yet. We're waiting. There's a possibility some votes out, North Carolina or Florida. Where do you go? Well, then we come back. Number one, let's just assume for the sake of argument, Joe Biden gets the congressional district here. Hard to see if there is a Trump election day surge. The president went out here and did a rally, but the Democrats are pretty confident they're going to pick up the one in the second district of Nebraska. So let's do that for the hypothetical. We'll watch as it plays out. Then you're at 293 to 245. So then we come down to where we ended four years ago, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin, right? And so Joe Biden... Skype on my one, computer, and then are you logged two. into Compound Media? I can be. We shouldn't be promoting the competition here. This is a bad move. You mean Mom Pound Kedia? <laughs> it's a great network. <laughs> it is, and I feel bad by muxing up the name. Um, okay, so I'm telling them that I'm ready... So we're going to be on a little bit of delay here. So what I'm going to do is... Yeah, that doesn't matter. As long as they see the graphics, you know what I mean? When right now, if you look over here, again, we're early. Democrats get... This is where Democrats get nervous because they remember 2016. We cannot emphasize enough. We're nowhere close to the finish line in any of those states. Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan. We need to count votes, and some of those counts could take until tomorrow. But... We talked earlier about Joe Biden having the more, more menu options. Some of those menu options appear to be closing. We're not done yet, but that we still have, you know, that we can't take Florida away. Still red over there. North Carolina, we'll see on Georgia. 
Joe Biden had many menu options coming into the night. That list is narrowing, which is why you get into tense time. I want to check in with David Chelly and those taking a very close look at the vote in Pennsylvania right now. What are you seeing over there? Yeah, just exactly what John was talking about. I know it's red on the map right now, but we got to make sure we uh, count the votes here. So what you see is you see Donald Trump leading Joe Biden in Pennsylvania with 32 percent of the vote in right now. Let's look at what we know about the early vote. Of that vote that's in, only 18 percent of it currently is early vote. And we know that Joe Biden is doing much better in the early vote. We expect that 18 percent to go all the way up to 45 percent. So there's a ton more early votes still uh, to be counted here, and that could benefit uh, Joe Biden in Pennsylvania. We just have to wait to see uh, that early absentee mail vote uh, come in and be counted. Well, very interesting. Uh, we're watching all these states, and this is a, a, a night like none other because of all the early voting, a record number of early voting that we've seen in some states taking a lot longer to count that early vote. Right. Look, the battleground states are always complicated to begin with. Remember Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin four years ago. Remember Florida four years ago. Even North Carolina for a while we were looking at it. And then it's based out. So they're always complicated anyway. They're all the more complicated this time and all the more difficult, especially for partisans who want to, you know, who, who want their guy to win. Right. And so let's just talk about what David was talking about. We come down here, you know, Philadelphia County, Philadelphia City and the counties around it. This is by far, it's 12 percent or more, depending on turnout, of the vote in Pennsylvania, 22 percent. So when, you, when I pull this back out and you see the state red, okay, again, you always want to be leading. At any point in the race, you'd like to be leading, but it's just, it's not contextual in the sense that we have nothing here. Let's just come over here to Montgomery County, 16 percent. Joe Biden at 89 percent. The, the suburban caller around Philadelphia is the name of the game. Democrats have to run up a huge lead. You come over here. Uh, uh, we have uh, Gavin McInnes. She's so underwear. Okay, so this is the crossover, it looks like, with Compound Media. It's Anthea, Anthony Cumia. Pat Dixon on the right is a co uh, comedian uh, from New York City. Pat Dixon. Gavin, Gavin's old uh, crew. Why is this not coming in? Gavin, hello, my friend. How are you doing? Very good. Uh, we're feeling very Anthony confident Cumia on the right. about a Trump victory. What's your take uh, so far? Uh, I made the mistake of celebrating a little early, and now I'm trying to report on it, and I'm so shit-faced. <laughs> <laughs> I love this guy. Hard to I got believe. Milo here, and he's like, well, what's actually happening is USA Today has reported this. Oh, man, what the fuck? It's what, 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 you can't like pick a better life. day to get fucked up because of all this going on. What made you think you should celebrate so early? Uh, I was a little nervous at first, and then we saw the, um, the uh, mybookie.com betting line now on Trump is insanely uh, low or high. What would you Dude, call that? It flipped. It literally it flipped. flipped. Like, Trump was, a, he, Trump was an underdog uh, at tip-off, we'll call it. Yeah, yeah. And then, then, you know, 150 electoral votes in, and suddenly he's a huge favorite. I bet a thousand, I bet a thousand dollars on Trump, and the odds said that if I won, I would win 1,300. Yeah, 100. So, I get that much money. Now, if you bet a thousand dollars, you'd get back what? Now you would have to risk 800 just oh. to win 100. Stand by for CNN projection. Come on. What are they going to project? Can't project shit for a little bit. All right. Back to the crossover, the sensor TV with Kumia's group at Compound Media. The line. It's a huge lower, but I mean, it's still just like it's minus 350 right yeah. now. He's right favored. now. He's favored like crazy. You should know. That's Pat Dixon on the right. I've got an interview up with him on iTunes and YouTube. You can check it out. He's hilarious. He's a comedian from New York City. He does the New York City Crime Report. Pat Dixon. Good guy. Funny. Funny as hell. Thank you. Wait a minute. Don't actually drive around a Honda Civic. killed that method, I would never own a Honda. The ambitious, shitty comedians, they see the lawn signs everywhere, and they they always tell you they're actually better than betting. But also... These fucking rallies, yeah. like you, you see a Trump rally and it's a sea of M and M's, 
And then you see a Biden rally, oh. and it's four people. Oh, what the piss, man? I don't think this is me. Because they're bad for COVID? Uh -huh. They're super spreader rallies. It's and a you great Obama for... impression, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it was that good. I didn't think it was, I didn't get it. It was that. The, I didn't see it. The, the, uh, when, when Obama spoke uh, and said that, that is such a cover for no one will show up to see us, so we'll say we don't want you to come see us mm. uh, because it's very dangerous. Meanwhile, they, they would jerk off if they had a, a tenth of the people that show up at a Trump rally. They just Look at these Trans Lives Matter rallies. The Brooklyn Museum had 200,000 people. Was that a super spreading event? Or did it not matter oh. when they were doing it? Spreading their They're assholes. Yes. Yeah, so Super spread. spread your <laughs> tranny asshole. Oh, no. <laughs> That's a real no. clip. I get it. That's See, this yeah, is why yeah, I watch these guys. It's nasty yeah. shit. Love these guys. Anyway, it's not appropriate, especially if the kids are still up. Um, I'm having a hard time with Fox, too. What's up with my bandwidth? Let's uh, get back to CNN. They were on commercial for a while. Okay, CNN actually hasn't got bad coverage tonight. CNN projection uh, and another but five electoral votes. They're like serious low-key panic. John, take a fucking downer, dude. Two of them uh, are still based on a congressional district, three out of five in Nebraska. So there, here's where the, the, the electoral college map stands right now. Very, very close. Look at this. Biden has 98 electoral college uh, votes. Uh, Trump has 95. You need 270 to win the presidency. 98 to 95. Look at how close it is right now. Actually, we have a key race alert right now. Let's check in some of the numbers. Coming in from Michigan, 37% of the vote is in. Trump still maintains a 235,000 vote lead in Michigan, 54.8% to 43.4%. 37 of the vote is, percent of the vote is in. 33% of the vote is in Pennsylvania. Trump has a 236 thousand vote lead in Pennsylvania 54.3% uh, to 44.3% 37% of the vote is in in Wisconsin it's close 25,000 vote lead for uh, Trump over Biden, 50.1% to 48.2%. In Georgia, 58% of the vote is in. Trump has, uh, looks like a pretty comfortable lead of 387,000 votes, 55.7% to 43.1% uh, in uh, those states. Let's take a look at some more states right now. In Arizona, right now, 75% of the vote is in. Biden looks like he has a relatively comfortable 208,000 vote lead over Trump, 53.1%. 0.7% to 45% in Minnesota. 37% of the vote is in. Uh, Biden there has a, looks like a pretty comfortable, nearly 300,000 vote lead over Trump. 60.7% to 37.2%. In Iowa right now, a quarter of the vote is in. Biden has a 76,000 vote lead over Trump, 57.4% to 41%. Let's go back to John King at the magic wall. So uh, let's take a look at the electoral college map right now. Uh, no surprises at all so far. 98 for Biden, 95 for Trump. All right, and so now you're getting into the battleground states as we flip it out. But again, you need the building blocks to get to 270. First, you've got to get to 100. Both candidates right knocking on the door of 100 right now. But the key point is no surprises. So in the states so far, uh, the Trump campaign hoped to flip New Hampshire. That hasn't happened. Uh, there's nothing on here just yet. The Biden campaign hoped to flip. These were all pretty reliably red states. Um, everything is coming in as you would like, right? Colorado, New Mexico... Uh, Utah. Uh, the question is, will there be any surprises, right? So at the moment, you're looking at this map, both campaigns, this is their basic building blocks. So the question is, when you come back here, and again, you start to look at this map, what is it that Joe Biden hoped to change? He thought it was possible. Thought it was possible he could flip Florida. We're still waiting on a lot of votes in Georgia, but a comfortable lead for the president right now. North Carolina, a narrow lead for the president, but the president has overtaken. The whole challenge was, would there be an election day surge? We'll see if it holds up. Same thing has happened here. Early lead for Joe Biden. This is the anomaly of 2020. Mail-in votes counted. Democrats build an early lead. Election day vote gets counted. Republicans come back. We saw it here. We saw it here. The question is, does it hold up? We're not done yet. Uh, Joe Biden thought it might be possible to flip here in a big wave election. Democrats had their hopes up that this was a statement election. Again, we're not done with Texas yet. We're still counting votes there. Uh, but we don't see it yet. We don't see it yet. So then you're back to, okay, if you don't, if there's not a big map-changing, game-changing election, 
What does it come down to? Well, then we get back to here. Um, and we're, not, we're nowhere close, nowhere close in Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin to counting. So right now, right now, if you're looking at the map and you're thinking, what might Joe Biden flip? Right now, this is, you know, we're not done with it yet, but there, that gets the president down some. But then to get him down more, we'll see. If you can mount a comeback in Florida, that changes everything. If you can mount a comeback in North Carolina, that changes everything. But if you're looking at the numbers right now, you're back into this calculation up here, Wolf. And, you, you know, if for Joe Biden, the blue wall was why Hillary Clinton lost. And if Joe Biden's going to win, he's going to change some of those. Uh, David Chellian's getting some insight into what's going on in Michigan right now. What do you see? This is the state of play in Michigan. You see Donald Trump's lead here, 1.1 million to Joe Biden's 907,000. 37% of the estimated vote is in in Michigan right now. But, but here's what we know about the early vote, okay? Of that 37% that's in, 17% of that current vote is early vote. We expect the share of the early vote to go up. We expect at the end of the night, 55% of the overall vote in Michigan to be early vote. And we know that Joe Biden is doing much better in the early vote. We also know we have almost no early vote in Wayne County, Detroit, big Democratic area, very, very little early vote in Macomb, uh, no early vote at all in Kent. Uh, those two have been sort of battleground counties. Uh, so as that share of the early vote goes up, the Biden campaign is hoping uh, he can start to have room here to overtake uh, that lead that Donald Trump currently holds in Michigan. Well, very interesting indeed, uh, John. Let's take a closer look at Michigan right now. That's a key battleground state. Trump won it very narrowly four years ago. The Democrats are hoping to win it this time. It's made, but let me start with your point. Trump won it very narrowly four years ago. You see that big lead right there. Uh, even if the president wins Michigan, we have no expectation it would be by such a large margin. That's why, again, you look at certain things and you realize this is an election like no other. We're counting votes in different sequences, uh, so we have to be careful as we go. Uh, if you're the Republicans, your Trump campaign, you're looking at the map, you think it's great. Uh, but remember, let's come in here. As David noted, uh, Wayne County, uh, about 28 percent. This is Detroit and the suburbs around it by far about 18% you know, of the vote, 18% in a high turnout election. It could be a little higher than that, 147,000 right there. Let's just go back in time, you know, 519,000. Oh, it's former Auburn football coach yeah, Tommy Cooper. Yeah. Doug Jones. Jones. I never senator. liked that. I never liked him. Fuck Doug Jones. <laughs> you have a problem with a fucking senator in fucking yeah, Alabama? I do. I do. Hey, ho, ho, ho. 143,000 votes. So we just need to slow down and let them count the votes in Michigan. And again, there's a possibility we don't get them all tonight. Uh, so you walk out through and you walk, just look at the map here. You come back to 2016 and you see over here, for example, Hillary Clinton won along the border here. It's a smaller county, but you just come back and look in 2020. Uh, the president's leading there right now, but again, 43% of the vote in. Just want to move around a little bit and see what the votes are. You come to Kent County, David mentioned this. This is Grand Rapids. It's red right now. Uh, Democrats think they can do some business here. We'll come back into 2016. You see it was 48 to 45. This is another one of those suburban battlegrounds we're looking at. The president won the suburbs narrowly four years ago. This is a textbook case of that, 48 to 45. Democrats think this time it will be different. In the vote so far, about half counted, uh, 54 to 43. So we'll see. This one stays red throughout the night. That bodes well for the president in Michigan. But we have a long way to go. And it's the same story when you shift over here to Wisconsin, about 40 percent in. But I just want to come down to look at the major thing here. Milwaukee, you see Joe Biden with fewer than 100,000 votes. That tells us, Wolf, a lot of counting still to do. We all just need to be patient, relax, get through it. We certainly will. Uh, we've got some more projections right now. All right, let's take a look at this. CNN projects that uh, Joe Biden will win the state of Illinois, will win 20 electoral votes in the state of Illinois, beats uh, Trump in Illinois. Trump beats Biden in Missouri, 10 electoral votes in Missouri. Uh, Trump wins in Missouri. Let's take a look at the electoral college map right now. Uh, 
And here's where it stands on, on the road to 270 needed to win. Biden now has 118. Trump has 105. 118 to 105, 270, the magic number. The president, presidential race is moving to the west right now. We're counting down to 11 p.m. Eastern and the biggest electoral prize of the night. We're talking about California. The polls are about to close there, as well as in Idaho, Oregon, and Washington State. Those states have 78, 78 electoral votes of the 270 needed to win. Joe Biden is counting on blue California to push him closer to 270. Let's get a key race alert right now. Let's start off in Michigan right now. 38% of the estimated vote is in in Michigan. Uh, Trump still maintains his 240,000 vote lead over Biden, 54.7% to 43.4%. Lots of votes outstanding, though, in Michigan. In Pennsylvania, 37% of the estimated vote is in. Trump has 344,000 vote lead over Biden, 55.9% to 42.7%. In Wisconsin, 40% of the estimated vote is in. Trump has a narrow lead, 21,000 vote lead over Biden, 49.9% to 48.4%. In Georgia, 59% of the estimated vote is in. Trump seems to have a pretty comfortable 372,000 vote lead over Biden, 55.4% to 43.4%. Let's take a look at some more states. We're getting some more key race alerts in Arizona right now. 75% of the vote is in, and Biden has a 208,000 vote lead over Trump in Arizona, 53.7% to 45%. In Minnesota, 38% of the vote is in. Biden seems to have a pretty comfortable 290, almost 291,000 vote lead over Trump in Minnesota. In Iowa right now, 42% of the estimated vote is in. Uh, Biden has a 112,000 vote lead over Trump, 56.4% to 41.8%. Uh, let's walk over, as we like to do John King at the Magic Wall. We're watching these states. You're looking at counties over there, and you see what's going on. This but but to go ahead, tell us what's on your I was just doing some matching up to try to see where the president's overperforming, where he's underperforming, looking at different places. It's early Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, but just trying to get deep in to study a little bit. That's what I do when I get a little chance to study, go into some states and take a look around and study. So where are we right now? Uh, if you look right here, so you get you got Illinois. You're adding, as I said, you know, it's a reliably Democratic state, has been for a long time. But when you're doing your building blocks, you like the big ones, right? So you like to take those out. New York, Illinois, in the Joe Biden's column gets him up to 118. The president's at 105. Uh, but just, you know, in the, in the idea of just, you think about the bigs, right? We're not here. We have not called these states. But I just want to say, you know, early on in the night, you know, the Democrats are thinking, can we get Florida? Can we Giant part of the responsibility of losing. Now, now that the landslide's What a the weird table, angle. The Democrats you hear that? definitely mm -hmm. screwed up. What I will Barack tell you, Obama's having an election fault. this close If you're not being insane. eloquent, like... <laughs> You won't insane. very often hear us tell you. All right. Um, uh, hang on. I've, no, I've, how do I do yeah, this stupid thing? All right. It's you intuitive. Get it. We're all this together. It's not See intuitive. That that's it's where we celebrate you guys. The Twitch uh, not what members, a the YouTube means. members. Yes, it is. We try to put your Maybe names it in is, as much as possible. But I was counting on you not knowing, and now I look stupid, <laughs> and that's okay because I wasn't on camera saying it, so uh, they can't use it against me. Um, Ryan, if you could switch to me, please. Thanks so much. Same with Ohio. Um, still you won't hear me say this very Way to go, Barack Obama. You won't hear us say this very often um, as the uh, star and owner of Censor.tv, um, but we won't blame you if you have a second tab open tonight. And that second tab should be uh, to uh, the Young Turks feed, where I understand that even the super chats, even the people who are paying them money to read out the comments are roasting them to fuck this evening um, based on how sweaty and panicky Jank or whatever the hell his name is Uyghur, this is um, a great is, is getting so we we don't blame you if you wish to have us open with the audio hold up but we'll see him right, you yeah. get surprised yeah. this is a great segue. So right now on the map you're we'll looking at this would be the only corner. flip right now that's the only flip we see for joe biden because to get him up but you know let me it's easier well, to do like it to more quickly if you switch over here to the president's map and so the flip we know so we think so far we're not done is this we believe so far the president's holding down here which gets you back again Arizona would get Joe Biden, plus the Clinton states, Arizona gets Joe Biden to 243. Well, then how do you get to 270, right? Uh, you know, could get one here if you carry Maine, but then you need more. So if that gets you to 244, let's just say for the sake of argument, you get one of these. We're still waiting on two of those districts there. Let's just say you get one of them, right? So then you're looking here at 245. So what do you need, right? Do the math. You need 25. 
that would get you knocking on the door because that's 20, right? This is the state of all these three states in the blue wall. That's the one the Trump campaign feels more confident about. That would be enough. Michigan and Wisconsin would get Joe Biden to 271 if he got these two congressional districts plus Arizona. The math gets interesting if the president can hold. Bring it out here. Sorry, you know, I got to fill them all in, but that's okay. Just fill them all in and come back. The president does that. Do you think one congressional district could decide an American presidential election? Doesn't happen that often, but it is possible. This is where. Hit Kamala in a basement. Oh, for God's sake, man. Are you ever going to stand up for yourself? Now, here's another fact that uh, makes my point. Right now, the lead is up to eight in Ohio. Uh, and, I'm sorry, seven in Ohio. And according to exit polling, Trump won union voters in Ohio 56 to 42. 56 to 42, he won union voters in Ohio. If you're the Democratic Party and you can't win union voters in Ohio, you suck at your job. I mean, not by a little, but by a lot. You get you get an F minus for how you do politics. Uh, but no, don't say, hey, on TV, no, 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 no. Democrats are geniuses. My ass they are. Anna. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what to say. I mean, when you really look at, in retrospect, the way Biden campaigned, I mean, it, uh, avoiding appealing to Latino voters, they didn't think it was. Who are these Democratic strategists and why do they have jobs? Like, Democratic strategists give the worst advice. So, no, 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 we, we're going to completely ignore the Latino vote. We don't think it's going to be an important part of our campaign strategy. Okay, fine. I mean, it's not working out so well for you tonight. Um, but look, aside from, Ida and I were talking about this during the break. So I want to make this point now before my part of the show is over. Look, there's one issue that unites everyone in this country or the vast majority of people in this country, and it is the bread and butter issues. Higher wages, job security, just bread and butter. People wanna be able to pay their bills comfortably, they wanna have good jobs, they wanna be able to provide for their families. Going after Trump on moral things, right? And that's all corporate Democrats do these days is it going to fire people up and get them to the polls, right? Now, yes, more people voted this time compared to 2016, um, but it's still, Biden wasn't an exciting candidate. I mean, I think we can all agree on that. But everyone was sold on this idea that Biden was the most electable. Most electable based on what? Like, where was the data? Where was the polling? Where was the indication that Biden was more electable than a giant list of other Democrats who ran against him during the primary. I just feel like the corporate media, along with corporate Democrats, just kept repeating that message until people believed it. And I do understand that there was a degree of nostalgia um, associated with Biden because of the Obama era, but I don't know. It's just, it's not looking good. And just like take a second to think about how disastrous Trump has been for people's financial situation, for their health during this pandemic. People are getting evicted from their homes. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. This should have been a blowout, and it it isn't. Uh, so, Ida, um, I, I want to keep raging uh, about uh, how uh, stupid and irrational the corporate media is, where they say, no, you should not have a fighter on your side. Only the Republicans should have fighters. But Democratic fighters are bad guys, and they're on civil, and they, sh they should all shut up and bow their heads to Republicans. Corporate media screwed us. They screwed us so, so hard. All right, but back to uh, something you mentioned earlier that's so important. You, you said something along the lines of sexism is worse than racism in terms of its effect in these elections. And as I see, look, I don't know if that union vote is indicative in Ohio or not, uh, but I saw it in, in, in a lot of, in almost every demographic, white, Latino, black, et cetera. Trump appealed to the macho in them, and this, since the Democrats are so weak, they, it's us appealing to the macho in men seems inconceivable. Um, and, and there's a way to do that, not in a bad way, but in a way where we say, hey, you know what, you got pride, you got pride in your job, you, and we're gonna bring you pride by getting you higher wages so you can provide for your family, et cetera. So uh, you tell me, what, what, what? can you believe 
the chink is melting down and bashing the shit out of his own party. That he said, look at Anna Kasparian. She is fraught with worry. That poor thing. I wish no harm on Anna Kasparian. But she's an ideologue. Possessed. Okay, so back to low-key panic. All of a sudden, a big dump of votes come in, but we're going to keep watching that because it's interesting. Just want to check down here in North Carolina again. 50 to 49 when you round up, 94% in, 69,000 votes. Again, Republicans feel good about this, but we'll keep counting and see what happens in North Carolina. One more time, just want to look at the normally the closest of all battlegrounds, 94% in Florida, 51-47 there in Florida. Again, you're looking at the map. There's a lot of red, including in places that the Biden campaign was hopeful it could turn blue. You see Iowa's blue right now. We're not sure if that will last. It's competitive, though. It's a fun one to watch as we go through the night. Still a lot of math to do, Wolf. A lot of anxiety. And the press is here online. Yeah, I think you're right. And uh, also, uh, so are uh, legacy pollsters. They should be done. Totally. They should absolutely be done. Think about this before tonight. They were mocking, ha, 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 traffic guy has a, has a Donald Trump ahead in uh, Florida. Ha, 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 Okay, uh, Quinnipiac, Monmouth, you're fired forever. You had him up <laughs> plus eight, dummies. All right, Megan <laughs> Kelly, we must go. It's the Megan Kelly Show. I will be on there this week, and uh, I will let people know to tune in. Thank you so much. We appreciate Thank it. You me. look lovely. We must go. Thank you. Good to see you. Bye, Thank guys. You. Good to see you. We are back with any updates that I made. I will say today, I for the first time, I did a little talking points memo at the top of the show. Okay. It's already our most downloaded show. Mm. It really, oh, wow. I, I just had a lot to say, Stephen, over what's been going on these past few years with the Trump shaming, the shaming of the Trump voters. I'm really kind of sick of it. And uh, it, it occurred to me last week when I was sitting with my girlfriends in New York having dinner, and they were all like, Biden, 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 yay, 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 register everything, everything. And, uh, you know, I was like, mm, what do you think? I mean, like probing. And my one friend said, nothing. And then when everybody dispersed, she was like, I'm voting for Trump. Ooh, she's afraid. Yeah, These are good yeah. friends. She doesn't want to tell. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to get out there. I just sort of listed the reasons. And I under, I acknowledge and understand Trump's flaws and foibles. Trust me, I do. Um, <laughs> but there are a lot, a lot of good reasons to back the guy. If he's your guy, you shouldn't be shamed for it. I'm sick of people being shamed for being Trump voters. It's BS. I'm on the Upper West Side. And you can't even, you, God forbid you wear a MAGA hat up here. Can you imagine what would happen? Yeah. Anyway, well, I think if they would lift it and be like, is there is there a kippa underneath it? There's none. She's not one of us. I knew it by the eyes and hair color. They'd be like, she must be working for the Post. Those are <laughs> the only people up here who wear those things. I thought maybe that she wasn't because she was out of synagogue, but Cuomo has made none of us allowed in synagogue. We don't know well, anymore. Can I tell you one thing? You mentioned synagogue. So I live in a building that's mostly Orthodox. And they lean more conservative. Yeah, and so do. it's almost like finding a little oasis in the midst of this sort of crazy liberal stew out there, because these are not normal progressives for the most part. No, this no. Upper West Side is official leftist territory. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, when I, when we first got here, I was walking down the street saying to my husband, Doug, like, do you think it's you think it's as liberal as they say it is? And at that moment, somebody walked by wearing a T-shirt that read, kill Cheney first. I'm like, oh, so, so yes. Well, Got that's it. also really dated. Like that'd be like the same. Like that guy well, probably I has a that guy a probably time. has a whole closet full of what's up shirts as well. <laughs> <laughs> I moved here a long time ago. Now you walk down the street, and then you know these basically just causes. Like, want to sign up for Planned Parenthood? How about Greenpeace? What about this? The Green New Deal? AOC? And you're like, oh, do you know me at all? <laughs> yeah. You know what I usually do is I ask the people for Planned Parenthood. I'll say, hey, would you walk with me for a second? And I walk them over to Greenpeace and I ask them if they will help me abort a baby whale. And then for some reason they find it distasteful. <laughs> and you know what? Listen, I'm just trying to bring us all together and find some common ground. Uh, Megan Kelly. This is interesting, though, because you mentioned, listen, people obviously know that you and Donald Trump have had your differences. But I saw you two go back and forth on Twitter where you, you, you kind of gave him some props. And he said, thank you, Megan. Have you yeah. two talked at all beyond that one meeting um, that? took place years ago like have you two communicated we did so yeah when uh we sort of put it wasn't a feud it was sort of a one-way anger from him to me for nine months and uh, i went and saw him at trump tower he put it to bed and then i called him before the inauguration just to congratulate him make sure we were good and we are good and um since then it's been fine it's been fine he hasn't come after me you know i hit him sometimes i support him some other times in terms of whatever he does i mean i cover him like a regular journalist right like more people should do and the reason he thanked me is because I said uh, in a tweet that he won the third debate. To me, it was very clear. Yeah. That's, I mean, people are like, F you, Trump. So, and you know what you get a lot? 
How could you support him after what he did to you? Now, number one, I never said I was supporting him. But number two, that's you needing to get over your own shit. Like that's, right. I don't, I'm not gonna hold anything against any politician. It's part of the game. I'm not saying it was pleasant, but you put yourself out there as a public figure, as a, as an, a, a reporter in the public square. Yeah. You gotta be able to take a punch. Well, I have a question about that. And guys, just let me know if any states come in. Uh, Megan Kelly, they, they might interrupt us here as states get called because we have some information coming through. Yeah. Um, but uh, let me ask you this. Did it kind of help after you saw that he just, he's, the kind of things that he said about you or said toward you, he says about everybody, including friends? <laughs> Well, th that's actually true. He does. He is an equal opportunity offender. Um, but I don't. I mean, listen. The problem with what he did to me was it was sustained, and it and it was like it was hundreds of tweets, and I was the right. first, right. so it was unusual. And I was kind of alone, so it right. wasn't like right. he was attacking everybody. And that's what I think led to the increase in security threats in my life, and so on. I, I right. think now it's very right. different. Um, and listen, it wasn't pleasant. I wasn't like, yay, Trump, during the time. Right. But every night before I went on the air, I would make sure to check that, you know, to remember it was not about me. It was about the viewers and giving him a fair shake, as well as Hillary back then. And it took a lot, but I, I did well, it. don't I give Hillary a shake. She'll go into another seizure. It's like no. shaking a baby. What? Say it again? I said, don't give Hillary a shake. She'll go into another seizure. It's like shaking oh. a baby. You don't shake a Clinton. She was fun to cover, though. Come on. It, it yeah. was fun. Cover in an epilepsy blanket because she couldn't <laughs> see the sun rays for crying out loud. Is. Here's my fa here's my favorite moment of the 2016 race when she was like, you know, I didn't have a I didn't have a second server and, and I didn't destroy emails. I don't, I don't, none of this is true. And while she was saying it, she was wearing a black and white horizontal striped shirt. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. right. So either like she really wants some hamburgers <laughs> or <laughs> she's a thief, by the way, from another era. Like, she's a 1940s thief. Like she just transported from the Valentine's Day massacre. They'll never catch me. She. <laughs> but that's a little different she from. She just got back from Paris. Right. Yeah. It's a little different from Joe Biden, who I think summarized his campaign well with the Shurkavaga Turbinin. And I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Megan, your thoughts. <laughs> Have you tried to watch an actual Biden rally? Because people watch the route, the clips that people show. I go, no, 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 not the highlights. Have you actually yeah. tried to watch a full Biden rally? <laughs> the man makes no sense. I think you're using the term rally very generously, I have to say. <laughs> yeah, that's like, true. When I saw him with like he, he walking down the stairs, there were like nine people there, and there was like a smattering of applause. I was like, you know what? I misjudged his basement strategy. He should go back. Yes. He was on to something. Just <laughs> right. stay down there until November 3rd. You're good. It was a good call. Let me ask you, uh, who do you think wins tonight? So I kind of went through my whole strategy this evening, which seems to be seems to have been borne out thus far with Georgia, uh, North Carolina, with Florida, with the early voting. Arizona may be an outlier. Who do you think ultimately, if you have a, you know, if you have a firearm to your head, that's not a threat. You have to bet. Who do you think wins? If I have to put money on it, have to, I, I, I would put it on Trump. Yeah. But it, it, I don't know, you know, I don't, cause he's got to hold everything. He, he doesn't look great in Michigan and Wisconsin, at least going into tonight. And so far the, the votes very early. Um, but if he loses one of those two States, like if he loses both of both of those states, he has to hold on to every single state that went for him last time around. So he can't. No, lose. no, I disagree with you. He, Pennsylvania, he can't lose any of them. No, I dis. I will say this. I disagree with you. Here's why. We went through the numbers here today, earlier today. If Donald Trump holds on to North Carolina, I, I said right off the bat, I said I'm very confident with Ohio and Florida. I said those aren't swing states. I'd be yep. more surprised if Ohio went blue than Texas. Okay, yep. so I put those in there in yep. Iowa, and then I said I'm pretty confident that we have Georgia, North Carolina likely Arizona. That's the one thing I could be wrong about. But mm -hmm. if he has North Carolina, Georgia, Florida, and New York Times is saying that he'll get North Carolina, uh, uh, Georgia, uh, and of course, Florida and Iowa. Guess what? If that happens, Biden has to run the entire blue wall. He can't have one of them. So in other words, if Donald Trump wins those. He cannot afford to lose Michigan and Wisconsin. Yeah, he can. He can. Here's the thing. No, he only needs one. And one other state. That's my point. So if he loses Michigan or Wisconsin, he's got to hold on to Pennsylvania. He won last time around with 306. That included Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, that blue wall. If he loses the two, he's got to hold no, on to Pennsylvania. But, 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 yes. all three. No, but if he, no, he only needs Michigan or Pennsylvania. So in other words, if he just keeps yeah. North Carolina and Georgia, yeah. whereas yeah. if this same scenario, Donald Trump has Georgia, uh, North Carolina, uh, Florida, right? The same scenario, Iowa, Ohio. 
Okay, he just needs Michigan or Pennsylvania, period. He yes, wins. I agree with that. But agree with that. Biden, okay, give him Minnesota. It's not enough. Give him Wisconsin. It's not enough. Give him Michigan. It's not enough. Give him Pennsylvania. He needs all of those to win. Trump just needs either Michigan or Pennsylvania or a yeah. combination of Wisconsin, Minnesota, which is far less likely. So I, I think when people say Donald Trump needs an inside straight, I go, actually, Joe Biden's the one who really needs the inside straight because he needs to carry all of them unless he steals another state. And even if he steals Arizona, he's still going to have to pull three of those states. Uh, I haven't crunched those numbers. So, no, I, I, I think the sentiment Can is I right. Can I ask you, when you say inside straight, what does it mean? Honestly, I don't know like, either. See, everyone, I thought it was a poker term. Inside straight, what did you get? What did you do at the poker table? What is it, it there, You're Gerald? drawing to an inside straight. You need one card. Right, and it's not like an oh, open-ended so straight. You, you need get, one each end. You have you have the dealt, least like amount of outs, basically. Exactly. So it's the hardest thing to do to get a straight, right? Uh, what I was okay. saying is this: when I, I learned everything, I learned about poker. Straight. I learned from like '90s sitcoms, so like Fresh Prince or Family Matters, and they would say, "Let's play." And then someone would put down. All, this is all I know. All I know is full house. And then usually when someone puts it down, they do this. They go, "Ha ha, full house," and they go like this with the pile. And then someone goes, "Ah." ah, ah straight flush and then they do this oh. and so i always wanted to do this i knew this meant winning the game and i knew that if ever someone was doing this provided that it had not already been preceded by a, 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 it was a switch you because there's love, always the first love megan no. kelly wow to your earlier point though now it makes more sense i understand it's difficult to get i do play poker actually my, we got a seven-year-old boy you sit down with him he's like all right listen any up, we're playing up and down the middle. Low spade and the whole splits a pot. Ah. Like, well, I'm well, sorry. I think your son might be a future criminal, but continue. <laughs> <laughs> At his anyway, age, I was playing I pogs. I think he's been, troll he's been polling better than the pollsters have been put putting him all along. I do believe in the shy Trump vote. And really, the only meaningful question going into tonight was how strong would it be? We're seeing some other interesting storylines emerge, right? Like Trump's support with Hispanics, with minority groups who were told are supposed to hate him. Um, as it turns out, maybe not. And he's sort of recreating the, the look of the Republican Party in a really interesting way. And already you're seeing some of these Democrats online melt down about how, well, Cubans aren't really Hispanic. They're really, they're white. You know, they're, they're white. So that's not, and like, yeah. the racial attacks are already ratcheting up as the Republican Party seems to embra be embracing more of these minority groups, in particular the Hispanics. Yeah, and I think they've looked at Hispanics as a monolith. We taught, we had Jorge Masvidal, who's, you know, the, the, the bad mother effer, a belt winner in the UFC. He's Cuban-American. And uh, they don't like just being lumped. And not only that, Mexican immigrants don't like being lumped in with illegal Mexican residents. That's also something people need to understand. Cuban-Americans, very different from Venezuelan-Americans, very different from Argentinian-Americans, very different from uh, Honduran. But really, there's a difference between, and this is one thing I was talking about, about with Jorge Masvidal, Cubans are so anti-socialist. They're so pro-America because they were arrested, right? People ask, why don't we have asylum for people from Mexico? as opposed to Cuba, because in Cuba you were arrested, you were effectively Clintoned, right? You were ghosted if you spoke yeah. out against the government. That's not really the case in Mexico. They just have a crappy economy. It's not yeah. the same as a, being persecuted by a government. And so they come here for more economic opportunity, but not necessarily to contrast the kind of culture of oppressive government that you see in Cuba. And uh, I tell you what, the Cubans are sick of it and their women are fertile. Let me ask you this. We do have to get going. You, uh, I'll be on your show, from what I understand, this coming week, correct? I'm looking forward. I'm getting my cross-examination ready. We're going to start there. back in It's the same 16th story birth. over in Allegheny County. Uh, that, of course, is, is another big county there that has Pittsburgh, the home of Pittsburgh. They also have 350,000 mail-in ballots to get through. Um, and in the Philadelphia suburbs alone, you have more than a half a million mail-in ballots to get to. So um, I, I think, you know, as, as we're looking at this, as we're looking at the numbers slowly coming in there in Pennsylvania, uh, it is keeping us on the edge of our seats, especially in Philadelphia, that Democratic stronghold, John King, where we had 350,000 mail-in ballots they're going through. Right now, though, like I said, they've only gone through. Here we go. This is uh, Cenk Uger at the TYT, and he um, is a sweaty bag of shit. Look, I, I know you, and I know that, you know, you've given uh, four long, hard years to this and fought with every fiber of your being. Okay, wait. Why does she have a mask? You're doing a Zoom interview. You're alone in the room, and your forehead is as glossy is chinks's wow you're causing 
a glare. Wow. I don't know what's up with these freaks. Why? What? To, to push us over the edge. Why the mask? Right, Cara, uh, I know we got to let you go. Uh, we appreciate you joining us. And I got to tell you, uh, I remember that nail biter in 2018 in the primary where you came from behind and won at very late hour, uh, just as we're about to sign off. So ain't nobody going anywhere, okay? We're gonna count all those votes no. in Nebraska too. And it's, it's gonna make, it might make all of the difference. And thank you for fighting so hard for not just progressives, but in this case, for all Democrats. Uh, they might uh, rely on you to, to carry the day. So, and all oh, that four years of hard work might dis, uh, decide everything at the end. So uh, thank you for joining us and thank you for putting that hard work in, Cara. Thank you. It's an honor. It's an honor to be here with you tonight. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Um, okay. Uh, fuck, he's Alonzo, tortured. Uh, first time I'm talking to you guys tonight. Um, Alonzo, let me start with you. Uh, we were here four years ago. Here we are again. Uh, what's your take on how things are going so far? Okay, let me say, first of all, I didn't want to be here, Jank. I feel like it was jinxed <laughs> and I shouldn't have come back that we... <laughs> We had to change everything. I didn't want to do this. You it's know, like an it's, episode of Black Mirror, right? <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You know, you said it. It's close, and, and there's no explanation for that. It's how do you logically explain these things? The one that's blowing my mind is Michigan. I'm, I'm it's not close. It's a Trump landslide. <laughs> Four guys are melting more down. More than one million. Let's Again, watch more than one million down. have not been counted. So uh, this is real, but it's just now. Again, you're, if it's a baseball game, we're in the second or the third inning at best. Right? If it's a football game, we're in an early quarter. Pick your sport. We're early in the game. You always want to build a lead. You'd rather be leading than behind. But it's just, it's not contextual. I keep wanting to say it's not real. It is real. These are real votes. They're actual votes. Uh, so if I say that, I don't mean it that way. I mean, these are real, but they're not, we just don't have the full picture. Again, I just want to show you these counties. This is every, look. Think about the places where we are close to the finish line. In every one of those states, we're showing you turnout is higher now than it was four years ago. Turnout is higher now than it was four years ago. Well, look at this: 25,000 votes, 167,000 votes to win the county four years ago, and it was higher turnout now. So you're at 25,000 votes. We're nowhere near done. We're just getting started. Move over here to Montgomery County. Four years ago, this is Joe Biden right now at 110. Four years ago, 256,000 to win the county, and we know turnout is up now. So 256,000 then, 110,000 now. We have a long way to go. We're in the early count here in Montgomery County. We have Chester a lot of county. black uh, Americans who work on those assembly lines, the auto manufacturing, who are in that rust belt. Um, and, of course, you have a lot of black Americans there who frankly to support Donald Trump up they have a 40 he had a 46 percent job approval rating yeah um so I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised to see that happen do we yeah, have any idea to which pull up uh the sort of spread there from Politico okay and uh I will also say that the um New Hampshire was called for Biden that was well, another yeah, thing that happened we, but that's yeah, not that. a surprise uh so if you can see there, there was a possibility. In, uh, that and let me know, guys, if uh, Don Jr. tries to call in or when. Let's make sure we have the, looks, anyone else. will just shut him out for Don Jr. Sorry, Kumi and Landau. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Yeah, it looks like we're still l l lacking some results from Lansing there. Well, Lansing, um, Lansing is definitely left, but Lansing is not as populated. Not as can big, we? Can yeah. you zoom in for that for me? Is there any way to zoom in at all? Um, do we know if that is, if we can go to the map, if that is Detroit? So are, is most of the vote coming in from Detroit already in Wayne County? Let's see if we can get a... Yeah. We, uh, it, his Michigan. overall lead, by the way, in Michigan, 239,000. That's stout. Yeah, yeah. That's I was looking stout, at that on, but yeah. if, if they if haven't brought yeah. in the vote from Detroit... And right. look, by the way, it's all red up in the north except for Leelanau County, just around Traverse, because it's oh, a little San Francisco with... <laughs> it's just nothing but hipsters and sodomites. So Lansing is in, and is that typically red, or is that... No, Lansing is far is left. Lansing okay. is a state capital. So it yeah. looks like that's, yeah, it looks like that is an in. Yeah, that is an in, but Lansing, Lansing is more of a college town, so Lansing doesn't yeah. have nearly the same amount of votes okay. as, say, uh, okay. Grand Rapids. And, and by the way, Lansing, the second you get out directly from Lansing, yeah. it goes back to red. Back to red. So ah. we did that. Remember how, well, remember when we were in Lansing? Yeah, yeah. Remember yeah. all the Trump signs well, you saw? So uh, yeah. Biden's lead is almost 40,000 over Trump, 50.9% to 47 Point three percent, six electoral votes in Iowa right now. Let's go back to John King uh, as we're watching this. So the, the count continues, 192 uh, 
uh, we're watching this race between Trump and Biden, uh, 192 to 114. Right, 192 to 114. And again, right now, there's nothing on this map that tells it's a flip, nothing on the map that would be a wow. And yet, we do know, let's go back, I just want to go back to the Trump map, it's just to take us where we are, in the sense that we have nothing yet that we flip. But we do believe, we do believe at least Joe Biden is leading there. That's a potential, right? So you keep looking at this map, that will get Donald Trump from his 2016 map down to 295. So then you go from there. I think we're, we're in a world right now, Wolf, where I'm just going to take these away, right? Because we're in such an early state in all of them, we just take these away. And so if nothing else changed, right, if the president holds Florida, we haven't called that yet, it's close, but he's ahead. If the president holds North Carolina, same deal. We haven't called it yet, the president's ahead. If the president holds Ohio. Uh, Iowa, let me pull out here and look at the map. I just want to take a peek. Iowa is still blue, but I just want to go over and take a look at it uh, here. Um, 59 percent. We'll see. We'll see what happens there. That would be interesting if that one switched. But at the moment, we'll just leave it here until we know otherwise we'll leave it here. So here's where you get. Again, we have the congressional district here and the congressional district here that could change the map a little, math a little bit. But if you take these off the board and if Joe Biden can't win Ohio, we haven't called it yet. We have to wait. We're waiting on votes and everything. Alike. You're just looking for flips. So what happens if we're waiting on these states because they're having normal delays plus additional delays counting their votes? Uh, we could get to a point in a few hours when we start to fill in some of the ones that are left. We're somewhere in this ballpark, and we're fighting it out over these states. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's going to be amazing to watch. Right. Everybody's got to be patient, though, right. and let everyone count the votes as they should. That's what's critically important. It is critical, and so we're going to get to a point. I'm going to shift maps again. We're going to get to a point again. So we're looking at 1120. We knew this was going to take time. The Secretary of State in all three of these states have told us, the chief election official here, Secretary of State here and here, have told us, this is going to take time. Please be patient because of the difference between mail-in voting, in-person early voting, and then the Election Day surge. The priority on Election Day is to deal with the people in the line, to deal with the coronavirus safety concerns, for example, to deal with ballot integrity and ballot security when you have moving parts. Then you have to count all those mail-in votes. And so you see red, again, if you're a Republican and you're looking at this map, um, this is a handstand map, but we're just not there yet. Um, again, these are real leads, but we're just nowhere near done. And I'm going to keep going through them just to see if the numbers change at all. Delaware County, 16 percent. Philadelphia County, up to 33 percent. We're at 22 percent more. And you see the math starting to go up there, but still 33 percent. And you see 209,000. You know, so you've got at least 300,000 plus. If it's a higher turnout election, maybe 400,000 more, more votes to win. So we're going to have to watch as this one plays out here. And again, you come into the counties around it. In Bucks, in Bucks County, that's 2016. Let me come back here to 2020. Still at 12 percent. Again, you know, it's frustrating to people who want to know, especially when you get to this point where if you're a Republican, you think the president's going to hold Florida, hold North Carolina. So? I am doing well. I tell you what, uh, I don't. I should be employed as a, some kind of a, a, of a of an oracle because this is what I called going down based on the early voting that no one was paying attention to. Are you guys feeling good? You guys are really feeling like you're going to win this. Listen, you know, I'm cautiously optimistic. I don't ever count my chickens before they're hatched, you know. But uh, you know, a lot of the trends that we're seeing look pretty good. So. Uh, you know, we just want to keep it going. Uh, you, you see the, the Vegas odds makers, you know, they flipped to like, you know, 68 percent to us. Uh, you know, that, that tends to be a pretty good sign. So, you know, again, we're just here hanging out at the White House, uh, you know, with my father, the vice president, some of the family. Uh, it, it's just been pretty good. Well, I would imagine that you're pretty fun to have a party with. Pence, not so much. Nice guy. But like, <laughs> do you have to like send him to bed early with a glass of milk? <laughs> No, he's not, you know, honestly, he's, he's, he's just a great American. He's one, truly one of the nicest guys. Like, it's sort of interesting with him. You know, anything that's ever happened to us in our lives that, you know, has been, you know, good or bad, he's there to congratulate you or just to make sure you're okay. He's the guy that picks up the phone himself and does it. It's right. not like, you know, this is the White House operator. It's, you pick up the phone, it's like, you know, Don, it's Mike Pence. Well, I'm not uh, saying that he's not I, a great American. I'm just saying that sooner yeah. or later I want a lampshade on someone's head if you're having a, a victory party. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I, I imagine I'm probably a little bit rowdier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there it is. Um, I think you know we can we can fact check through that one. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. We'll give it uh, we'll give it half a Pinocchio. Uh, <laughs> let me ask you this: 
Were you surprised at all by Florida and um, what we're seeing now with North Carolina and Georgia? Or had you been, because a lot of people don't give you credit, Don Jr., for um, the ground game that you guys have had, you know, because Donald Trump is this sort of seen as sort of a celebrity candidate. But compared to Biden, you guys were knocking on doors. You were on the ground. And oh, I've yeah. got to imagine you were paying attention, uh, attention to that early voting, which I was, and 100%. no one in the media was talking about it. Well, you know, we're, we're up 14% with Cubans down there. And we had, you know, we had 2.5 million trained volunteers. I mean, we, we did everything with ground game. In the last month, I did 107 rallies myself. Uh, so I did a bunch wow. of those in Florida. I mean, I, I did one in Vero Beach uh, last week for my last one in Florida. 3,000 people showed up for me. Like, right. So I, I saw the energy. I saw the intensity. But we spent the time. I mean, I did a bus tour uh, with Jorge Masvidal, the great UFC fighter. He was just on the you show know, 20 minutes against, ago. Oh, great. Like, yeah, we're doing Fighters Against Socialism, and he has this incredible story. And he's just a super cool guy. And when I was like, hey, you want to do a four-stop bus stop, like one grueling, you know, 18-hour day? And he was like, I'm in. Uh, you know, and his speech is really good. I don't know if he sort of gave you the, yes. uh, the, the stuff with it. But, you know, whether it's the story of his family or, or really when he's like, listen, right now we got a Super Bowl winning coach. You don't replace a Super Bowl winning coach because you don't like the attitude, and you certainly don't replace him for someone who hasn't won a fucking game in 47 years. <laughs> His words, not mine. I'm like, you know what? I, I, you know, I understand. I mean, it, so he, he's been he's been great, and I, you know, I, I think down in Florida, you saw, you know, they still haven't called it yet. Meaning, you know, we won it by a margin about three times the size of what we did last time, but they haven't called it yet because I guess they're trying to build the ratings. Right. Um, <laughs> it, it's. I think they haven't, emotion they haven't emotionally prepared themselves no. yet to accept it. Let me ask you this. Is, is there one, st right now, based on what we're seeing, is there one state that you're most worried about and one you're most confident about? Um, and I know you have to be careful because you don't want to yeah, discourage anyone. I, I'm, actually, I'm just superstitious, so it's, it's not about, you know, there, there's things that, you know, I see some trends that are pretty good. I mean, I feel pretty good about North Carolina. I feel really good about Georgia, you know. Sure. But, you know, Arizona, Michigan coming in. Some of the rural numbers I'm seeing in Pennsylvania look pretty good, but who knows what they're going to do when they start cheating in Philadelphia. Uh, you know, so th th there's a lot still out there that, I, that I'm not sure of yet. Uh, you know, but like I said, I I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. And, you know, you're starting to see the, the, the looks and the frowns on the uh, – uh, you know, MSDNC type networks, and you know th th these people are not exactly thrilled. I don't think right now, but again, there's there's still a lot of race left. And do you remember uh, Donald Trump Jr.? There's still a lot of race left, but when you guys win, who told you that he believed it all along? This guy. It was you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Steve. How how are we going to do in Michigan? Uh, what do you so think? You know what? I will tell you, I was totally wrong in 2016. I said, like, there's no way he wins Michigan. And that's been me tonight with Minnesota. But that's more so because Minnesota voted in Jesse Ventura. So I just feel like, you know, you can't quantify that. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I will tell you I, this. I, you, I think you guys, okay, if I had to bet, and I was saying this, without voter fraud, Pennsylvania would be the closest thing to a surefire thing in that uh, belt. Yes, I, uh, I agree 100%. Yeah, that's but, what I can't account for. But yeah. you have an AG who literally said they will not allow you to win Pennsylvania. Michigan? Uh, I said this a long D Donald Trump. I, I said this a long time ago, and people may remember this. I said, "Listen, when people we have these sort of racist identitarians on the right, right, who hate people like you and me and Ben Shapiro more than anybody else." And I always said, "You don't need to win, for example, the black vote. You just need to mitigate your losses. Where let's say you get to the point of thirty percent, thirty-five percent, or even twenty percent. And when you look in Detroit, when you look in Michigan, you look at Wayne County, you look at a lot of Black Americans in Michigan. Here's the thing: not only are more Black Americans going for Trump than any other Republican in modern history." History. Hispanics, there aren't as many in Michigan because, you know, it's cold. But yeah. with black Americans, you also have black Americans who are on the assembly lines, who've benefited directly yeah. from the trade agreements that Donald Trump. So there's even more reason for black Americans to support Donald Trump. So I think it comes down to this question. Do people think it is more likely that a Democrat, a registered Democrat votes for Donald Trump or that a registered Republican in Michigan votes for Joe Biden? And I think if you look at the margin, very th as thin as it may be, that you won last go in Michigan, there had to have been at least like 10% of registered Democrats voting for Donald Trump. And that gap with the early voting is within four points. So yeah. if I had to bet right now, I would probably bet on you guys winning Michigan. But I certainly think that either Michigan or Pennsylvania, barring some kind of voter fraud, and then that's the whole game. You guys win. This is the one thing I've been talking about, Don. Don no one else has been talking about this. They say, oh, you guys need to play. You guys need to run the board. No, no. Listen, if you just hang on to North, if you yeah. just hang on to North Carolina, Georgia, Biden needs to win Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. If you guys hold on to your states, 
You just need Michigan or Pennsylvania and its curtains. So I yeah. actually think that you have far more paths to victory, barring a huge upset from Biden in one of your states. Arizona might be one to watch because it's a little unpredictable, yeah. but even then, that doesn't give Biden enough. He still needs to win three of the four. So I think you're looking pretty good. I would bet right now you guys win Michigan. I would have bet before the election Pennsylvania, but I think it looks good for you. Yeah, listen, and like I said, I, I've been on the ground more than probably any human being alive. And, you know, it, it, that energy has always been there. So if those rural guys turn up uh, the way it looks like they will, I mean, again, it feels pretty good. It's a question of, you're, you're right, Pennsylvania, how badly will they be able to cheat? Uh, yeah. you know, if we win by one point, we lose. Well, if we win by, you know, if we win by 50,000, it may be harder for them to make up that difference cheating. So, uh, you know, we, we just got to see where that ends up. But, uh, you know, again, cautiously optimistic. Cautiously optimistic. I will tell you this, though, the level of love that you guys, I think, is unparalleled in any other state. My father-in-law, who, by the way, was not a Trump fan in 2016 in the primaries, and neither, neither was I. He was a Ted Cruz guy. Um, yes. He owns a factory that's relatively close to the Grand Rapids Airport. And by relatively close, I mean two and a half miles. He parked his car at his factory. He's 65, 67 years old, and he walked to your rally last night and sent me a video at, that, uh, of course, which com uh, was awesome. completely inaudible. I couldn't see it. I couldn't hear yeah, it because yeah, he nothing, is 67. Yeah. He's using, like, an old brick phone. But the, the, yeah. the spirit remains. The love that people have for Trump in Michigan is unparalleled, I would say, in any other state. And you know what? That can change some minds. So um, I don't know, yep. but I know you're tired. I know you've got a bunch to do, uh, Donald Trump. Thank you so yeah, much I'm, for being I'm on one hour of sleep and uh, 30 interviews uh, today. Uh, so yeah, I'm uh, gonna get back at the game. But appreciate all you guys are doing, and I uh, look forward to talking soon, buddy. Just borrow a rock from Hunter. We will see you later. <laughs> that always gets me right <laughs> back in the mood. <laughs> You can let him go. That's always nice yeah. when Donald Trump. He never shares. Is, though, he real. never shares. Um, do we need to push Dave and Anthony Kami a little bit? Uh, what yes, do you guys? I believe do you guys think have. we should probably move we'll, it a little bit? Yes, we'll let you know when uh, the new spot is if we if we need it. Okay, okay. when the new yeah. spot is. Yeah. Sorry, guys, we definitely want to have you on. Is there any new update since Don Trump Jr.? So we've got a little bit of news. I okay. think Reg has got some as well, but I think Dan Crenshaw is being reported as the victor in his race, tighter than one Very would have nice. expected. Uh, but given the kind of the changes in the demographic there. Uh, some of the other races in Texas, as we talked about earlier, are uh, kind of those down ballot races are tending to still go more, more than Democrat half the than folks have expected to be historically. Still getting some wins. Morgan Meyer here, uh, you know, kind of local in the Dallas area, and some other uh, races that are kind of going the other way, going blue, but still, still some lead here in Texas. Reg, what's the details on uh, the Texas vote right now? So in Texas, well, I'll, I'll just say that. Um, We've got Washington and Oregon and New Mexico for Biden. Okay. Uh, which are not really surprises, but it's interesting to me that, you know. Essentially, we need to stay patient. You also need to be prepared for these vote totals to kind of come through overnight in fits and starts, right? They've been reporting day of totals. Then they've been going through, opening more ballots, removing those from the inner envelope, putting them through the scanner, and then uploading bunches at a time. So just as you pointed out, this is going to come in in fits and starts throughout the night. We may know by tomorrow morning a little bit something more. It may take a while. You know, the Secretary of State was saying these counties are working as fast as they can and as hard as they can. We know, like I said, a lot of these places are working overnight. It is just going to take a while, and it is the first time that Pennsylvania has had mail and ballots to this capacity. And remember, they couldn't start opening them until 7 a.m. this morning. All right, Sarah Murray in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Let's go to Bill Weir, uh, one of Wisconsin's favorite sons, uh, who is in Madison. Bill, tell us about turnout in Wisconsin. We're, we're waiting. That it's, <laughs> none of it is humorous. Okay, uh, okay. True, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, in Texas, we have 84% reporting, and Trump is up, you know, pretty oh, conclusively wow. here, right, with 51.7%. Oh, yeah. See, so, when I was yeah, saying you guys were all being yeah. doomsday. No, 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 no I was, not, I was you, not being doomsday. You control your blame. It goes to him. I, was I just, do control my blame, and I'm us. going... <laughs> well, you'd be wrong. Tractor beam sucked you right You'd in. be wrong. Hey, can I just, can I just, make, can I just make a, quick, a real quick point? What? You so haunty? Yes. <laughs> I, I want to say that that's obvious. <laughs> but it isn't 400 a parody, so horny. <laughs> of course. Be so horny. See, that's a very that's a good mix. Yeah. I like that. Right. You got the serious lawyer, you got the horny Asian. I like it. Yeah, no, but 400 <laughs> 490,000 people have nothing better to do than watch you and They're Don still watching. Yeah. They're still watching. Hey, by the way, guys, listen, I appreciate the half a million, which by the way translates to a rolling average of 
more than CNN. Uh, <laughs> but as please do consider me, joining up. I know we talk about this all the time. Here in Madison expect to deliver all their ballots here to the, the election supervisor here. So it's going to be a long night uh, in America's Dairyland, Jake. All right, Bill Weir, thank you so much. We'll check in with you in a little bit. And let's talk about this. I do feel like we've been saying for a long time that, A, this anything could happen. This mm -hmm. is a very competitive race. Uh, and, and, B, uh, that it's really good. The cars, the big black things you get when you do the nice Uber. What do you get? You're suburban. Ah. There's a suburban waiting outside. But you're going to ruin With the seats. With tarpaulins down on the seats. Ah. And I am shaking in the back, covered not in a space blanket that one of the Marine uh, security guards brought, plus a bunch of other blankets. And I am whisked back. What's that hotel that's on the park that's a bit dated, kind of like trading on past glories, old-fashioned style? And it's on the park. Wasn't that like your favorite South one end. for a while? No. Um, the thing to no, keep no. in mind is, and some of our reporters mentioned this, is that what we're seeing now um, is not including the early vote. And the early vote is the one that Democrats feel the most confident about because they encourage their voters to go and vote early. Uh, and so that is the missing piece of these um, vote totals that we just haven't seen yet, which is a really, really key piece because it could change the dynamic abruptly. And, and this is, and I'm talking about early vote in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. Those three blue states. We just states. can't draw any conclusions right now about what's going on up there. And 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 even uh, Arizona is still unknown. But even if we did know Arizona, we would still need to wait on the, those states to count all of their votes to really get a clear sense of what is going on. So, yeah, we're asking for patience, but. Uh, I also think that it's important for people to recognize that this is kind of the opposite of what we were seeing earlier in the night, mm -hmm. when we were getting a lot of mail votes from states like Florida, and it was looking okay for Biden. Now we're getting a lot of, of Election Day votes uh, from those states, and those are going to benefit Trump. Uh, we just have to wait and see. We, I, we can't even say, really, w what is happening in some of these counties, because... Uh, the, the percentage of the vote is so low, mm -hmm. you can't draw any real conclusions. And just to underscore what, what we're all saying is the early votes in... All right, so here we are. Uh, Crowder has a half million live viewers, 10 times what he normally gets, like 10 times what a good broadcast of his gets. Unbelievable. TYT, 100,000. Now, we don't have live chat here for whatever reason i'm not sure why crowder turns off his live chat but tyt has the live chat and you can see that people are paying money to chirp chink <laughs> um i don't know if you can see that great but it's going so quickly and a lot of it is chirping chink trump 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 Time to go to Canada. These guys are doing, uh, I would say, these guys are on the electoral vote. On low is at stake. 57% of the estimated vote is. Uh... These guys are on low key panic here. And these guys are on full on panic vote. I haven't seen Chink on here for a while, so let's see what he these guys got. Not to, you know, knocks down pre existing conditions. It, I don't know if it's weakness or you're trying, you're aiming too high.
you're aiming too high. Simplify. Make people understand it. A simple statement is easier to get behind. Yeah, but I, th I think, Alonzo, th that actually suits Cenk's argument. Like, stop with your nonsense of, uh, of, you know, we're trying to bring dignity back and reaching across the aisle. Take a stand on something that people want, and we know that polls show that Democrat, the Democratic positions on almost every important issue is either solidly supported to overwhelmingly supported. So support those issues, run on those issues. And then, at least for the presidency, uh, and I'm telling you for a lot of these Senate seats too, um, you look at the Democratic candidates who seem strong. We have 31,000 vote lead for Trump over Biden, 50.3% to 47.8%. Let's go back to John King at the magic wall. So close in some of these states, with still a lot of outstanding votes to be counted. Yeah, and we're going to wait late into the night for some of them, we're told. And again, some grace to the lo local election officials because they have to deal with this wild and different 2020 mail-in voting, in-person early voting, election day voting. However, uh, in some of these states, as you go through them, number one, again, Pennsylvania, we're still waiting, 50% estimate. We're going to be waiting on that one for a while. Michigan, we pull it out, Trump lead right now. But again, it's, it's just not contextual in the sense that you come down here, Wayne County, 147,000 votes right now. That's Detroit and the suburbs around it. Hillary Clinton was at 520,000, 519,000 four years ago. So it's just a reminder to our viewers uh, that these states are counting more slowly because of the complexities of the 2020 election. And it's going to take time. It may well take into the morning. Uh, if that's the case, uh, we'll keep counting and we'll stay up all night and watch it play out. Wisconsin, the same thing. So again, if, you're, if you lived through 2016 and you're a Republican, you're looking at this map and you're saying that looks great, it does look great. It's just not complete. And it's nowhere near complete. Nowhere near complete. So we just need to see. We need to keep counting votes. So then the other anomaly on the map, if you will, there are two things that look different compared to 2016. One of them is the Commonwealth of Virginia. And I'm going to zoom in again on uh, Fairfax County right here. Uh, this has been this way for some time. This has been this way for some time. Stuck at 28% for the largest county in the state. Um, you would think, I know it's a difficult year, you would think the largest county in the Commonwealth of Virginia could do a better job than that, 28%. At this point of the night. Hold on that, one moment, John. Sure. Pamela Brown's got some reporting on right. what's going on in Virginia. Yeah, exactly. We're finding out in Fairfax, Virginia, it hit a slow going, finding out the results there. In fact, um, we're finding out that they will have their roughly 400,000 absentee ballots results in the next couple of hours, likely before 1 a.m. So far, only around 28 percent is reported there in Fairfax County in Virginia, and a very small portion of that is Democratic. So we have that going on there. And then you look over in Georgia. It is slow going, John. If you go over to Georgia and some of these counties there, you have Gwinnett County only 29 percent in. DeKalb, um, we have only 24 percent in. And then Fulton has also been slow going. They were delayed because of a, uh, a pipe that burst earlier. And so uh, they still have 48,000 absentee ballots to go through. They had two weeks to process these ballots, but it is slow going there in Georgia. And then we also know, of course, uh, John and Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, more than one million outstanding absentee ballots for officials to go through in the Democratic areas there of Pennsylvania. I'm, I'm talking about Philadelphia. I'm talking about the suburbs of Philadelphia and Allegheny. Uh, and that's not counting these nine counties, the smaller counties that are waiting until right. tomorrow to start counting those absentee ballots. So as we as this picture comes together of what's happening, we really are in suspense there in Pennsylvania. That's a lot. It's again, again, you just look at the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, big state, 20 electoral votes, 2 million to 1.5 million. And you think that's a lot of votes. Just go back in time to Pam's point about how many votes still need to be counted. You know, 2.9, 2.9. And we expect higher turnout this time. She, Pam mentioned the nine counties, at least six of those, I think maybe all nine, but at least six or seven uh, won by Trump. They've just, they've just decided they knew they were going to be overwhelmed today. They're not going to count those votes until tomorrow. So you look at that there. I want to pop back to what Pam said in Georgia, because, again, if you're in the Biden campaign right now, you're looking at this map and you're thinking all of the opportunities we thought we had might be slipping away, meaning states that we could flip, like Florida, like North Carolina, like Georgia. There are two Senate races in Georgia as well. So I just want to go to the point Pam was making and just see what are we looking at, right? So let's come back out first. You look at statewide, a 211,141 vote lead. So you come into the highest population center and you say, okay, well, they're missing a lot of ballots here. Not missing, but they haven't counted a lot of ballots here. So you look at Fulton County, 297,000 there. Let's just see where we are, 196. So Joe Biden is 100,000 votes behind where Hillary Clinton was there. It's supposed to be a more high turnout election. So maybe, maybe there's more votes there. That's about 100,000 there. Pam mentioned Gwinnett County, come over here. 
You see 174,000 for Biden now. You go back 176. So he's ahead of Hillary Clinton already there with still some votes to be counted. The question you're asking, this is the reason I'm going through this, is, is, it, is it at all possible? When you look at the Donald Trump lead right now, when you go through these areas and you move over here, we had that, we come here again, 81,000 votes. There's a lot of votes to be done here. 81,000 is where Joe Biden is now. You go back in time, 251,000. So you are looking at giant chunks of votes in those counties. You come back out, you see the president's lead is 211,000. When you have that many votes missing from DeKalb, Gwinnett, and Fulton, um, there's no reason at all uh, for Democrats to give up. There's votes to be counted. Uh, the question is, can you win, you know, as those votes are counted, what's your margin? What is your margin? So, again, you keep it on the board. If you look at it right now, if a Democrat, you're disappointed. But when you do the math and figure out what's out there, this is why patience is going to be so important. And, again, it's the very same situation. Uh, Pam mentioned more than a million votes here. They're just nowhere near. They're, this is 2016. You come back up to 2020. They're just nowhere near the same numbers, right? You just saw the 2016 numbers. And so patience is what's required here. And, again, uh, we heard the president repeatedly at the end of the campaign saying we should be able to count the votes on election night. You know, that's it. I'm done. It's just not the way it works, which is why uh, Sarah Murray, in the report saying the Secretary of State in Pennsylvania just came out, explained the process. That's really the challenge now. For the, the election officials in these states where you have the slow count, we just got the Fairfax information. In Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin, transparency is going to be key in the hours ahead because this is where, in this age of social media and everything else, this is where things... Uh, the other one, what the, the ah, Philadelphia. Philadelphia, there we go. Sorry, I was losing yeah, my mind there. And uh, those are what we're looking for. We're trying to figure out if all of this vote is coming in from the rural areas or if the cities have ca have put a lot of those. So votes in based on what so we have right now, Donald Trump needs to win uh, any two, uh, Michigan or Pennsylvania. He needs to win one of those and then any of the other two states in the Midwest. That could be Wisconsin, that could be Minnesota, that could be Michigan, yeah. that could be Pennsylvania. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what the vetting odds uh, are in Vegas now that uh, Biden won Arizona. But it seems like that's been pretty close, though, too. Well, really? 53-45? I don't believe that. With 25% remaining, too. So it just depends on, again, where that's coming from. That seems like it might be a premature call. But right now we do have uh, Dave Landau and Anthony Cumia, of course, uh, from Compound Media on Wednesday. With us, Dave and yes. Anthony, how are you, gentlemen? 70 on that map. Yes, we are. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, Stephen, this is insane. Uh, we're we're watching uh, for every every second that goes by. My opinion changes, but I have great <laughs> faith. Uh, I, the, the news is so terrible. They're running this on purpose like some kind of neck and neck horse race. They will not call states for Trump. They call instantly for Biden yeah. just to just to keep this illusion that they've had going for four years uh, alive a little longer. I absolutely have faith that Trump is going to win this. Well, uh, did, did you see that uh, they called Arizona for Biden? Yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was getting me a little upset. Yeah, that was depressing. Uh, uh, last uh, election, of course, he did take Arizona. It's the only state so far that uh, has been flipped. Right, uh, and it, it's looking I mean, pretty good for Georgia and North Carolina. So, yes. um, really, it comes down to can Donald Trump win either Michigan or Pennsylvania, and then one other state in the Midwest. And if he does, he wins. I think absolutely he can do that. I I I, I don't I don't think that's. Um, out of reach I think I think it will happen as a matter of fact what else does Biden have going for him that gives him uh the win yeah. well, really voter fraud in Pennsylvania so right voter fraud <laughs> yeah, yeah voter, voter fraud, fraud in Pennsylvania but we were You're all so right that that's exactly right but he's up we were saying last we saw he's up 13 percent there's no way as we said he they can shenanigan more than 10 percent oh of, don't of put it past uh, he's not up he's not up 10 percent in Pennsylvania from what I'm seeing he's up uh that's oh no he is last what do you got He's up 10%, yeah, yeah. right? But well, it depends. It de hold on a second. It depends on which counties are coming in, too. Right. And uh, Dave Landau, I'm interested in having, and I know you'll be in, in studio here pretty soon. Dave Landau, you, of course, are from uh, Michigan. You have that great bit about Journey in Detroit. I would encourage people to Google it uh, or YouTube it if it'll actually show up. I sound so old. Google it. Sorry. <laughs> the YouTube it? I would encourage you all to <laughs> web crawler it, okay? Piss off, everybody. <laughs> Save, do you think Michigan goes for Trump? I mean, right now he has an 11-point lead. Um, but, of course, that's not all of the vote coming in. Do you think Michigan goes for Trump this go-around? 
There you go. And it's the first time that it's ever even been pushing red like this. So I really do think that there's a very strong chance that Michigan's going to go red. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, what do you, how do you think that people uh, there feel about your fascist, frigid, frigid bitch uh, governor, uh, Whitmer? Because <laughs> they always claim she has like an 80% Whitmer approval rating. And I'm like, really? How does she have an 80% approval rating? Did they compare her to the bride of Chucky? Did they bring him up on the stage at the same time? I, I, that's one of those numbers that I feel is hyperly inflated, and it usually comes from a local press in Michigan, which I don't trust because they claimed we had 200 people in Lansing, whereas our headcount yeah. was 3,500. So um, you think that Donald Trump will win Michigan, Dave? I really do, and I think it is because of Whitmer. I think entirely the reason why they're going red is because of the lovely job that she's been doing here. As we all know, she's uh, completely taken way too much control, uh, abused her power. She's a complete cunt. So, yeah. I well, think hold on a second. Someone else, I hear, I, I hear another voice in the background, Dave, that sounds like Lil Wayne. You guys are all talking over each other. Hey, hey, we're crossing streams, and you're crossing your own stream. Kumia, Kumia, aren't you Italian? Don't you carry? Can't you start? Just, just, just bust a few rounds in that studio. I got. I gotta take some control. I understand. Yes. <laughs> Fucking guinea, disgusting. What? Two years. What? I just said something racist about Italians. What was that? <laughs> it's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny? Italians never care. My boxing coach, Anthony, you could probably, right? My boxing coach, uh, uh, who's Italian, he didn't get offended at anything. Guinea, Wop, Dago, unless you brought up that scene in True Romance about the Sicilians and he'd lose his mind. Oh, they, yeah, yeah. We, we don't like that scene at all. <laughs> it's really, because it's a mother, grandmother kind of uh, insult. Yes, it and is, act. because Italians yeah. are inherently racist. My joke to him was we were holding pads and I said, I said, Dave, uh, and I won't say his last name, but he's Italian. And I said, uh, hey, well, uh, you're Italian, but let's be honest, like Southern Italian. So let's be honest, there's probably a person of color hiding behind your woodshed somewhere down the line. And he threw a left hook to my body that crippled me for a moment in time. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Some oh, people so get very angry. he proved angry. your point. He did. Yeah, know. he proved my point that <laughs> the Moors obviously are in his lineage because they were known as very, uh, very, uh, very, very sturdy people as well. <laughs> what do you uh what do you think uh i i heard georgia had stopped counting ballots is this true also i georgia uh, had some ballots freeze earlier today in, yeah. a, in a county which of course was overwhelmingly uh, trump uh, but even the new last time let's come back here now not not so far anyway not so far this would be again this would be if the president can hold this that's a big deal joe biden went into these communities thinking i can narrow the gap some but again we're in the early chapter of this, and we don't know what we have left to come out. Let's come back over here again in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. This is what matters most in terms of the vote count. Democrats need to run it up big in Philadelphia. Joe Biden at 248,000, so just shy of 250,000 votes. You think that's a big lead. You see 75 percent. But to emphasize the point, we have a long way to go. Hillary Clinton got 584,000 votes in this county four years ago. We got a ton way to go. Wolf, back to you. We'll be patient. We got another projection right now. Take a look at this. CNN projects that uh, Joe Biden is the winner in Virginia. Virginia goes for Biden. Biden beats Trump in the Commonwealth of Virginia. 13 electoral votes uh, go to Biden. Take a look at the electoral uh, college map count. Right now, Biden has crossed 200. He has 205 electoral college votes right now. Trump has 114, 270 needed to win the presidency. Uh, let's take a look at some of the uh, key race alerts right now. Arizona right now, look at this. 76% uh, of the estimated vote in Arizona is in. Biden is ahead in Arizona by more than 207,000 votes. 53.6% to 45% for Trump. Uh, so let's go back to John King right now. Arizona, 200,000 vote lead right now with that number of that percentage of vote in. That's pretty significant, John. It is. It is indeed. And so, again, that's 2016. Let me come back to 2020, come through my time warp here and pull out Arizona. Uh, it is significant. Now, again, it's a flip, right? It would be a flip. It's a traditionally red state, so you're going to always be a little bit more cautious before you call it. Uh, and so we want to wait and see. But you're up to 76 percent. You're up to a 207,000 vote lead, uh, 1.2 to 1. And again, uh, this is the bread and butter of Arizona, 60 percent of the vote, Maricopa County. You see Joe Biden just shy of 800,000 votes right there, 54 percent. Let's just go back and take a look. Uh, Hillary Clinton, 700,000 votes, 702. 702, the Democrat this time 
798. So 96,000 more votes, and we're not quite complete yet here. Again, what does this tell you? Number one, uh, it tells you the Biden campaign did a good job. But number two, it just tells you more about the suburban revolt. And again, we're seeing other places that are closer than they were four years ago. This would be a very important pickup for the Democrats if it continues to trend this way. And again, 54 if you round up to 45, so a nine-point race there. If you go back four years ago, it was close, but it was a four-and-a-half-point race in favor of the Republicans. The demographic shifts in Arizona, the suburban revolt against President Trump, and this could be very, very important on a night where the other opportunities for the Democrats, at least as of now, do not seem to be bearing fruit. Flor fruit. Florida's still red. Georgia's still red. North Carolina's still red. Ohio still red. So if you're the Democrats and you're thinking, how do we take away, and I can walk over here and show you, how do we take away from Donald Trump's math, this is where we are right now with the states that have been projected. So this part is done. Nothing here is a surprise. So the question is, if you're Joe Biden, how do you get to 270? Uh, well, that would help, right? 205 gets you up to 216. That would help. Doesn't get you all the way, uh, but it helps. Not only does it help you go up, it takes it away uh, from Donald Trump's 306. And so then you're looking at this map. If you're a Democrat and you're looking at this map, uh, you assume this one's going to come your way. We're not done there yet, Minnesota. Uh, and you're looking around here, you assume most of Maine is going to come your way. I just, right now, President Trump was leading in that congressional district, so let's just take that away. I'm going to make the second congressional district a toss-up for now. Uh, the president is leading. The Democrats think they're going to get that. But again, they thought they were going to get some other places, too. We'll watch. I'll take it off as a toss-up. So you're at 229, and you're the Democrats. How do you get there if you're Joe Biden, right? Well, you can't count on Texas right now. Are you still leading in Iowa? No, you're not. You're not leading in Iowa anymore. You're going to get Hawaii when we go a little deeper into the night. That gets you up to 233. And so then, again, uh, it sounds redundant, but you come here and here. And even those two, not enough. So you're looking at that. Do you do that there? Or the other Clinton state, Nevada, we haven't done on the West Coast yet. You get that there. So that's 285. You, can you afford to lose that? You come that. You can't afford to lose that. So we're going to walk through the math as we go through this for the rest of the night. Let's take a quick break. Got a lot more coming up. Uh, we're waiting to see what happens in Arizona. Can Joe Biden pull off a win in that state? We'll find out. Election night in America continues in two minutes. Yeah, I guess. Well, you know I mean, what? We shot also, it right in the face. No, because some people give me flack. They're like in Lansing, like, are you wearing a tactical vest? I'm like, no, I'm just wearing a bulletproof vest because people want to kill me. Um, <laughs> That's a good reason. And Spartan Armor, they have some. I'll get some after the next break. I'll get some vests where you can get, can all put them on. Oh, yeah. Oh. They have vests that are like really low Ooh. profile, that almost like Michael Keaton in Batman where he got shot. It's basically like a yeah. gel, and that's 44 Magnum proof, and oh, that wow. right there is totally rifle proof and super light. So really happy to bring them on Spartan oh. Armor. Um, you can go to uh, is it uh, is it SpartanArmor.com? I don't have this right here what's the what's the website is it spartanarmor.com spartanarmorsystems.com systems use the promo code crowder you get 10 percent off all of your items spartanarmorsystems.com and one thing too a lot of other uh, body armors out there they claim that they're nij equivalent but these are actually nij certified so they mm. certify them in a lab in a far more official scenario than nice. with uh, oh. a blow-up doll yeah. uh and uh they actually <laughs> will so. protect your life so you can get some thin ones that are 44 magnum proof or some thicker like actual oh. plate carriers that are full-on rifle proof i had no idea yeah. how is that chelsea handler on cnn i have no idea no but hey we part. did just i just want to let you there was a lot of concern tweets during that little segment making sure yes gerald b not only remains safe and sound but still the number one most preferred gerald b by stephen crowder and a tender yeah. lover uh, Oh my. Most important. I said rugged. Very she, tender. Yeah. Rugged and lover? I don't know about rugged. It, I don't know. I don't rugged. Know. And the, the only yeah the He's only reason the only reason that uh, Gerald B did deflate was because Thomas Finnegan shot Gerald B through the head. 